Valhalla. So I'm just pretty, forget about Valhalla. We're going live anyways. Well, fine, be that way. If you show me yours, I'm like, whoa, this is not that type of stream. <laughs> it just gets longer and longer. Welcome, I love everybody. it. I love I it so crazy. much. Hey, everybody. What's going on? And we have with us Torin. Everyone, welcome Torin. Is it, am I saying it right? Is it Torin? It's Torin 3, right? Yep, Torin 3. Oh. Uh, I got the name because I'm in a historical society, and we picked persona names, and I went with Torin Ironbrow. And that was back in the early 90s, so that kind of became my online everything. Outstanding. Are you, are you a LARPer? Uh, I don't really call it LARP because it's not like there's no like uh, script or theme or scenario you're going with. It's just kind of a open environment. Where's Dave's Flux? Where's Flux? She needs to hear this. Dave's a LARPer. I'm, no, I'm not a LARPer. <laughs> I do. Okay, I do. I used to do Civil War reenacting, and I was called out for LARPing. That's not LARPing. LARP, for those that don't know what we're talking about, is live action role play. It's when uh, you dress up as a character and, you know, you perform battles or cast magic spells. And so not not cosplay or yes cosplay? Um, it's like cosplaying, except you're pretending to battle also. Yeah, my, my, pers my personal definition of uh, LARPing involves uh, essentially a role playing game on top of that where there's like, you know, magic or combat rules or stuff like that like a tabletop rpg yeah exactly exactly okay well cool Happy well November. welcome welcome um uh, what is everybody building today i'm not entirely sure well this is what this is what torrent he's he's so fancy he set up an extra feet and uh this is what he's building um uh, which is is that the uh, imperial palace it's a uh, Himaji Castle, uh, okay. and I'm should be uh, I'm about a few minutes, a few seconds behind with the feed, but uh, I'm opening it up now for the first time. Nice. How many pieces is that? that? Twenty-one twenty-five. Like, oh, I said, have, like I said, I probably made a serious mistake, but uh, this is going to be our second six-hour yeah, stream. There are no mistakes in life. <laughs> if anybody's okay. got the uh, the ability to. You know, be nimble and, and build Lego at a decent speed. I believe it's going to be Torrent. I, I right. do too. I do believe that. I watch his braid streams a lot. Hello, Ben. Quick with his Hello, everybody. Look at that. How thick that book is. I, there it is. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. Well, I have my my printed. Okay, I I tried to do this last time with Rob, and um, I was missing a bunch of pieces, but I found them. Immediately, like after the stream, sitting yeah. in this other Tupperware David. off to the side. David so I'm going to go was, back to this. He realized he was about to get smoked on that stream. And he was like, we'll just hide this little bowl of pizza. I was, I was reconstructing this piece out of individual bricks, sir. I didn't know where this was. Tori, can you um, address the, the bag crumpling sounds for a minute, please? Yeah, let me mute that. I'm sorry. All good, buddy. All good. Gets my gotcha. gets my spider tingly going. Yeah. Spider senses tingling. Whew. All I'm gonna um, do is just. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two smaller sets that I think I'm gonna build. Okay, this one here, which is a cutie little little, I don't know, Easter springtime set, right? Mrs. Valhalla nice. picked it out. She liked it. She wanted me to build it for her. And then I've got this set, which I think is pretty awesome. Beautiful, love it. So we're going to build those, too. Mrs. Valhalla, Mrs. Valhalla is making out like a bandit tonight, y'all. Yeah, she is. That's why she brought you dinner. <laughs> and for those of you who are new and don't, don't know what Wendy does, I don't do anything. I just sit here and make fun of the guys while they build Lego. That's, that's about it. That is not uh, true. Wendy H. is the the backbone of this entire operation hmm. so David, Torin, what i said i heard your hmm yeah dave doesn't do <laughs> anything he's the least productive out of the three of us for sure but, yeah probably i may have already done i've retired piece. from youtube so um for anyone who who doesn't know torn three his uh channel is linked in the description below 
But I want to show you uh, a clip of what's well, time lapse. So on his channel, he puts the, he he live streams some of his. I'm going to call it artwork because I can't remember the freaking name. And Kumi I'm going to go to the Kumihimo. 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 Kumi. Anyways, it's a really cool braid. He's got a time lapse video that he does or that he has done. I don't know if he's, he's done them all. Um, but this one is the one that I pulled up because I want to see if Wendy notices anything. But the, okay. see, see the braiding and he goes back to his computer screen. Um, and Gordon, you're going to have to, I have so many questions about how this works, but, um, uh, it's, it's so meditative to watch. Oh, there you go. Wendy, you notice? Oh, go back. Or that can you? She didn't notice. She didn't notice. She wasn't paying attention. I she said, wasn't. Wendy, I'm going to show you something. And she was like, oh, what? <laughs> you Squirrel, did, but where? that was like two minutes ago. Yeah, you got to watch. You just saw it a second ago, but it was brief. Was it Runkle? I saw Runkle. Yeah. Yeah, Runkle. Yeah. Our buddy what Runkle. Runkle doing on your channel, Torn? <laughs> um, he just I've popped made, in? I've made braids. for. Yeah, Runkle did pop in for that one. I've made braids for Nick, Ian, or Nick, uh, Nick Ricada, Ian Runkle. Uh, Rob that you had on last week, uh, Jeff Legal Vices, and Danny on Direct. Nice. nice. Um, so I'm oh, expecting mine in the mail. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm still about four out, and they take a couple of months minimum to make, and I'm currently doing one that's just kind of for myself. Um, that's that, um, that's really... that cool sort of like organic looking design, right? Yeah, the blue and yeah. white one. Yeah. Is that um, your own design? Yep. I uh, designed it when I was at um, uh, MarsCon in uh, West Virginia while I was waiting for uh, between the panels I wanted to go to. Oh, okay. Very cool. Uh, before we get uh, too into this, a couple housekeeping matters to attend to. Um, Dave's new and improved Lego channel is pinned in my chat. Y'all go over there, hit the subscribe, and actually do me a favor. Go view on his channel tonight. Let's get him this this watch hour thing out knocked out quick good so idea. you can get monetized. My how the rules have reversed. Don't Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? <laughs> it's good, fact, I'm going to do that right now. Good idea. Yes. Um, so, yeah, go over there. Uh, mods. If, do I have any mods here? Okay. I'll throw, I'll throw the link in chat, I guess. Thanks, Valhalla. Good idea. You have no and mods. I have my MLS sweatshirt <laughs> on tonight. Sweet. There's my little Lego guy. You know you're watching my Lego channel when you see this little guy in the He's corner. He's so cute. Paste. That's AI generated Lego law. But welcome Is that everybody. You, to Mr. Michael. Dave. There you go. Oh, she's talking about Dave Umberger. Sorry. Did you see Dave changed to J Dave Umberger is no longer just Dave um He's Dave Umberger. Hamburger. Yeah. Hamburger? Dave Burger. Dave Burger. <laughs> I had cheeseburgers last night and today for lunch. I'm a fatty. I always think of the Pink Panther movie with um, with uh, Steve Martin trying okay. to say hamburger. I know you watched it. No. no. So he's 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 French and they're trying to get him to speak fluent English without any accent or something. And he, they're trying to get him to pronounce. I would like to have a hamburger. <laughs> and he was like, um, burger, deep burger. I don't know. That's what I think. Of. Oops. Um, so Torum, why did you start? Well, first of all, so you, we, we know you did some, uh, or you are doing or have done in the past some LARPing or, uh, no, not LARPing. <laughs> uh, what do we call it? Historical uh, recreationism. There, there you go. go. Yeah. It's like reenacting, but for further behind, <laughs> for, further back in history. Okay. So how did you get into, um, the, Thanks, Keto. Thank you, Cindy. Keto. Um, Kumihimo. Oh, it's it's a, Kumihimo. It's in that. private chat, man. Like you I can know, just read I it. Know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so how'd you get into that? Okay. Uh, it's actually part of the historical thing. Um, I'm a member of a uh, household that kind of focuses on um, the history of the Mongol Empire. Oh, and cool. um, there's a big event 
just outside of Pittsburgh that takes place every year. They get about 10 to 12,000 attendees. And the first year I went there, I got to meet some people that were in the group that I'd never like met in person because uh, like she lived in Texas. I was living in Idaho at the time. And uh, so I'm there. It's kind of like a little overwhelming. So I'm sitting there relaxing in a chair. And she comes up, hands me like a disc about so big, cut out of the side of a 12 pack of Coca-Cola that had some notches in it, handed me some um, skeins of uh cotton embroidery floss and said, here, let me teach you something. I think you'll like it. That was about 25 years ago, and I've pretty much been doing it ever since. That's crazy. Um, well, what, what happened to her? Um, unfortunately, she passed away about a year and a half ago from pancreatic cancer. Oh, but, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, see, happened. now I had to ruin it because I asked one too many questions. One too many, Dave. Always one too many. Um, for those that we should probably show them what it is exactly this braiding thing, because without really seeing it, it's it's kind of hard to understand what he's doing. So let me pull up. Let me go back to a different video. I'll go to one of his lives. And uh, I've been on uh, a string before. Yep. Have you know? I have. I don't recall when, but. Like three, four months ago, I think. A couple months back. I'm going to close down the rumble because we don't need that. Okay. Hey, 2.0. So, How are you doing? Hello. Okay. So this is the design you're working with currently, right? Yep. Okay. And this is the and, computer program that he uses to keep track of where he's at. So yes. Crazy. And so he's got these. So, so this is what he's currently working on. I don't know how, it, when this video is particularly, I don't know if this is your most recent one or not, but I, it's, uh, yeah, I switched to that camera setup in the last two streams. So it's one of the last two streams I've did. Okay. And then you can see him working through on his. That's a good question. Half Irish. Is it like a loom? Kind of. Um, it's, uh, I've heard it referred to as uh, this style as braiding on the bias, uh, mm -hmm. as in the uh, angle. And the reason it's not really a loom, uh, which is for weaving as opposed to uh, a braiding stand, is in weaving, your warp and your weft um, are always separate from each other. So um, I guess we all know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I only know what that means because I sew. That's the only reason I know what that means. Word yeah, so that. I don't know what that word means, but okay. When you're weaving, like this, uh, this is the warp, this is the weft, and they're always separate. So you only have the the going like right and left as uh, one set of threads, and going up and down as the other set. But in braiding, they change places. So uh, that's what I understand is the technical definition between the two. Okay. And essentially, what what you're doing here is you're creating an image by overlapping the threads in a specific way. And so on the opposite side, it would be reversed, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's actually like two single color uh, braids, one on top, one on the bottom, and you get the design by swapping them from top to bottom to change the color. I imagine these things are pretty durable. Um, if I make them large enough, you could probably use them as a toe strap. Yeah, um, it's, it's something like a cargo web, right? Yeah. yeah. That's There's awesome. uh, like uh, Jeff had me count the actual individual silk threads in it, and it's about 1200 for a braid this size. Jeez, Holy crap! Oh. It's uh, such a cool, kind of it's such a cool form of of art or braid or whatever you want to call it. It's neat beyond Thank belief. You. And if you guys watch this, just listen to the. I haven't turned any of the volume up, but turn up. Let me let me actually slow it down because I just put it at 0 0.2 or double speed. But it's so meditative to listen. It to. is. So I just turn it on. It's just listening in the background. I don't know why. This might be my new nighttime video. Seven. It's eight, very. It's nine, very. 10, 11, 12, rhythmic and, and and meditative. It's very cool to to just have on in the background and check in with chat. It's very good. Thirteen, fourteen. The clacking of your your weights on the ends of your strings. I it does it. I know. I just sit there and listen to it. I have so many questions. BB does too about the actual. And 17. Grade. Well, that's why we're here, y'all. I love this. How long does it take? How much do you spend on silk? 
And what the what? And sheds three, four, and eight are reversed. So one and two on the bottom. So it's kind of you just you kind of walk your way through it, right, Torrance? Or you yeah, kind of walk I, us through it. Yep, I count out loud. I figured it would be nice if like down the road somebody wanted to make the same thing, they could actually follow the videos and do it themselves. Oh, that's nice. so that's, cool. And it also helps keep me where I am in place so I don't like lose track. I'll still lose track occasionally. Uh, but I've been doing it long enough. I can kind of catch myself as like, this does not look right. <laughs> I if feel like I made a see, mistake. If you guys want to see more, you need to go back or you need to go over to Corin's uh, channel yeah. and check it out. I just wanted to show you an idea of what he was doing over there. That's awesome. It's very cool. I am going to put Torin's link. In a lot of people were asking during that, that short right there. Um, how expensive is the, are the materials? Um, a skein of uh, silk runs me about 25 bucks, and I order them directly from Japan. You could, like, buy spools of board. Uh, no, for it's, it's 25 bucks for two and a half uh, thousand meters. Oh. So, like, close to 3,000 yards. Actually, oh. just a second, I'll grab one and show you. Thanks, Torin. There's Torin's link in chat, y'all. Go, uh, go sub him up, check him out. We'll get isn't, into, it in your, isn't it in your uh, description as well? I think, Probably. yeah, I think, no, I think Valhalla has your new link in his, his pin. Maybe in I'm his, gonna, yeah. I'm going to turn off my background for a second here. Um, yeah, me too, Evie. I'm the same way. I want the best of all the things. I'm a VIP gal. I tried to, and then I ended up making fence out of old pallets. So that's, that's, that's kind of cool, though. <laughs> All right, so it's sorry, oh, it's wow. a little bright here, oh, but God, it's gorgeous. Oh wow, that's Is that so real dark. silk. Heck from yeah, Japan? Man. yep. Uh, it's so cool. And one of those spools is a skein, yeah. Wow, or a cone. Uh, a cone. There we go, a little better on the lighting there, there. Jeez Louise, it looks um, luxurious. And I get 12 of these for each color I'm going to use. Wow, for one braid. Wow. But I can, but I can make like um, probably fifteen braids uh, per uh, per comb. That's right. Oh, okay. I, use, I have a what I call a, a warping frame, where I put like twelve cones of each color on a rack, and I have a bunch of holes where they'll pass through, and I can pull them all together in a single thing, where That's there's cool. like twelve of them in there, and then I wrap it around the weights. Very cool. So there's each one of those strands is several strands in one. Uh, yeah, each each of the the when you see it on the the Takadai, each of those lines has twelve individual mm -hmm. silk threads in it, about the regular sewing weight. That's pretty awesome, actually. Hey, Valstrom. Hey, Val. How you so, doing, hey, Valstrom. Is uh, so is this your uh, your job or your pastime? Uh, it's a pastime that I'm kind of trying to make into a job. Um, it's something I really enjoy doing. I've been doing it for, like, like I said, about 25 years. And since I apparently probably have uh, a uh, attention deficit of some kind, I tend to, like, pick something up, focus on it for a year or so or six months, and then it, like, goes by the wayside. This is one of the things that have stayed. Um, and one of the other things is the only other U.S. maker for a lot of this equipment is in his 80s is currently having health issues. So I figured it would be nice if I could, like, uh, start making it for people who are interested in it, because I'd like to keep this art from uh, fading out. No, that's very cool. I love that. So the oh, so the only guy in, like, the U.S. that's making this? Um, I I've made I've made several talkative eyes, uh, probably I think about eight now. Um, oh, that's neat. And I'm trying to like, you know, turn it into a side business. I I registered an LLC uh, for this, and I'm gonna try and start having equipment for sale online pretty soon. Um, but the uh, um, uh, I figure the the current manufacturers uh, and the company's called Braiders Hand. They're out of Washington State. They're really nice people, but like I said, they're getting older, and admittedly, I'm 55. So, but I figured it'd be something that'd be nice to like kind of transition to a retirement income. Uh, that would be cool. Great idea. Yeah. Excited Utterance asks, "Do you get a bad back from doing this?" 
No, actually, I don't. It's um, the chair I'm in is uh, I don't really lean back against it. So I'm kind of sitting upright and I've tried to work for good ergonomics. Good. So, you know, what I've noticed about these older sets. What's they that? don't tell you what parts you're going to use. I literally go from. Oh, so yeah. Here's step seven. So here's step seven. Okay. Yeah. Now you got to turn to step eight. What's different? <laughs> and so you have to figure out what's different and oh, that then add it. For me. So you're like going back and forth, and it's like, you know, one of these is, it's, you know, you know, like when you have to compare the pictures, like what's different between this picture and this picture? Like the bar game with the little, the, the television set on the bar where you pick the difference in the pictures? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's what this is. And then I was looking there, and I'm like, okay, well, I, okay, oh, I don't have that piece. I gotta have that. This is old school Lego. That is old school Lego. That was the stuff we were building when we were kids. Yep. So, Torin, you play with Lego often? Exciting. Actually, this is, I think, the first time in probably over 30 years. Really? Yep. You are not You're our first guest to say that. I love that. Um, it's definitely. Was... Go ahead. I was having a little bit of a heart attack moment when I was I opened up the first bag and it's like, I'm not seeing the pieces I need in here. And then I realized there are actually two bags labeled number one. Mm. Well, at least you There's have the bags bag. labeled one because this set doesn't come with that either. <laughs> it did at one point. No, I don't think it ever did. Not until like uh, maybe a couple of years ago when I was, I, I said, I'm going to get a couple of Star Wars Legos and I opened them up and I'm like, oh, the bags are numbered now. Hmm. That was the first time. Uh, they never used to come numbered. It was just individual maybe right. bags. You opened them all up. Wasn't there like usually a way to, to kind of identify it though? Like they'd be, you could generally pick the right bag. No, no, I don't, I don't remember it being that way ever. I don't think I understand Cindy Luke. Lou Woot's question. Where, Where did, did you get, get your David? David at the Goodwill? I'm not sure what she means. Where did I get my David? Your Maybe set? she means your set. I think no, it's his think, set no. from his childhood, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is my set from my childhood. And I found most of the instructions, and then I was able to download a parts list off of uh, a cool little Lego fan site. And then I made sure I had all the pieces, and I thought I did last week until I realized I was missing this bucket. Well, technically, and, yeah, yeah. And so, like, it's got all the parts list, and now I'm rebuilding it. But I have most of the pieces here originally from my childhood. They're all dirty and covered in dirt. You didn't have to buy too many, right? You had almost all of them. Yeah. So I was missing what, this little like specialty okay. stair set. It's like a set of stairs. This I couldn't find. And then some train wheels. It's the only thing I really ordered. Not too bad. Mm -mm. Not too bad. Torin uh, has led a, a what I would deem a fairly interesting life as well. He's had some really um, unique job sets. Is that a way? Is that a fair way of, of phrasing it? Probably. Okay. Okay. Do tell. Well, so you don't. So you don't do this for your for for a career. What do you do? Currently, I am a CNC machinist and programmer at a company that makes a lot of plastic parts. Um, okay. Uh, like, we like do things Lego like. Block. <laughs> no, you can't tell us, or he'll have to us. <laughs> Actually, these are probably, as I understand it, a lot more precise than we would likely uh, be making. A lot of stuff we do is like um, ducting for like PVC ducting. We also do um, like sorting discs for like, you know, bottling plants where they got this big spinning disc that all these bottles run across. The material I'm actually um, making this on top of is a sheet of phenolic resin. It's a cutoff that was going to get tossed in the recycle bin. Um, nice. Well, not recycle bin. We don't. We can't really recycle it. But it's the type of material that they make, um, uh, like you chemically say, did resistant. Did you borrow it without permission? Nope. Um, I actually make sure I clear that everything I take out of there, they know and they're happy with. Um, Smart way of doing it. Yep. Uh, I do not want to lose a job because I ticked somebody off by doing something that they didn't want me to do. Right. Smart cookie. Especially if it's a good job. Yep. 
It sounds like one of those good union jobs. Um, it's not a union job, but they did poach me away from my previous employer, which was a metal machining shop, um, where I was not getting along as well with the people there and my career pretty much, uh, stalled there. I was, you know, hired there as an off the street hire, was learning how to do stuff. Um, their IT guy needed help. Um, so I was doing like IT for several years Then the recession hit. So they had me go back to doing the machining stuff. And then the IT guy died and I kind of took over in a lurch. Um, and uh, then after a few years, they hired on somebody else as uh, a consultant. And then they asked if I was OK if he came on permanently. The only thing they, is they didn't tell me they were going to hire him on as my boss and until like six months after that happened. And he was like a really bad micromanager. Um, I mean, every 15 minutes he'd be asking about something and it, the way my brain works, that kind of derails me. So I was going slower and slower. I That's finally what Dave asked, does to me all the time. He's always asking me about all these minutia questions. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Yeah. I, I, I finally asked if he could like, you know, please just, you know, let me, uh, email him every time that I've got to an update point. So he would be able to know he wouldn't have to ask and I could like build it into my uh, procedures. They said, sure. And I noticed that for every email I was sending him, I was getting about three back. And it's like, at that point, it's like, okay, I'm going to go back to the, just the machining. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, after that, it was like, okay, obviously my career here is pretty much done. So when the other company said, Hey, uh, you've uh, taught yourself how to do this programming. Your current employer is not wanting you to do it. Uh, if you come for us, we'll let you do that. And it's like, and we'll give you an extra four bucks an hour. Ooh. So I was like, yeah, I think I can do that. Heck yes. So, so Me prior too. to that, were you a, were you a constable? Is that what I understand? Actually, I am currently a constable. Um, currently a constable. Yeah. In Pennsylvania, constables are an elected position. They serve for six years. Um, we kind of do like what the uh, sheriffs do for the common pleas courts um we're essentially they, they consider us independent contractors but um we're all pretty much fee for service for what we do our rates are set in statute um and so for like the 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 courts i work out of are called magisterial district courts uh, they're like small claims courts uh also all landlord tenant actions originate there so I do a lot of uh, service for that type of stuff. I also do evictions. Um, and like if uh, somebody loses a judgment and they don't pay it, uh, when somebody requests an order of uh, execution to execute on the judgment, uh, I'll do like a, a levy and then a constable sale for that, kind of like a sheriff sale. Um, okay. And uh, uh, there's other I, stuff. I have to pull this up. Jung says... And you have great curls. You really do. Of your hair. Thank you. <laughs> but so, uh, constable gotta... acts acts like a, like a, essentially like a sheriff or, or court officer. Yeah, um, okay. we only get paid fee for service. There's no salary. There's no stipend, um, and uh, we have to pay for all of our equipment. We used to get our training covered um, by a, a fee on the dockets that we handled, but. Uh, the last time they set the fee was like 40 years ago. So uh, currently uh, they've run out of money and new consoles have to pay for their initial training. But the uh, annual updates like the uh, CLE classes are free um, to the constable. So are you um, so do you have uh, like arrest authority or anything like that? Um, I can uh, arrest for on view felonies and breaches of the peace. Uh, and that, and if I have a warrant and, um, uh, regular citizens can do for on view felonies only. So I do have a little bit more arrest authority than a, a regular person. Um, okay. but, uh, that's um, kind of crazy. I didn't realize yep. that, I guess. Um, don't go to Pennsylvania. He's going to arrest you. Right. <laughs> Not unless I see you committing a crime and, um, depending on where you are in Pennsylvania, a lot of the prisons don't want to deal with um, arrests by constables unless oh, sure. you have a warrant in hand. 
Um, depending on where you are in the state, the police either are okay with you or really don't like you, uh, just kind of as a general concept. Um, so, so you got those are your options. They don't yeah. like you or they're just like, eh, all right, whatever. Whatever. Um, well, like constables can do prisoner transports. And in my county, because there was an idiot constable about 40 years ago, the county decided, nope, we're not going to use constables for any prisoner transports. But the next county over uh, decided they were going to use constables for all their prisoner transports and say <laughs> that uh, um, that they save a couple million dollars a year doing that over having um, other law enforcement officers do the transports. Mm, so, that's why they don't like you. Take it American, American politics at work, y'all. That, that's what that job. is. <laughs> so, this is super important because, you know, chat asked what color are my lips today i put on this i don't know it looks like a fuchsia or something like purpley fuchsia color i'm trying to see if it says what color it is sephora flash mob crayon i don't know what color and then it was too dark so i mellowed it out with this color whatever this is so i heard you said earlier that you had made um your art because i'm not gonna remember the name of it Kumi uh, Himo. Kumi Himo for, for Jeff from Legal Vices from Rob Law and Lumber, Runkle. <laughs> um, how would you so how did you get involved in, in LawTube or, or not that you are, but um, how'd you get involved with those guys? I consider myself uh LawTube adjacent. Um, okay. <laughs> same. But um, so originally I was uh, following kind of interested in the Rittenhouse trial. And so I started following Nick's streams, and then I started watching his night shows. And uh, that's actually Those are kind of dangerous got... places, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of um, uh, this is actually kind of how I started streaming. Even though my channel is like 15 years old, I didn't like live stream until just over a year ago. Um, but uh, I was listening to Nick give advice for somebody getting started. He said the hardest part in streaming is getting your first hundred subs. And I went and looked at my channel and I had like 260 at that point. Uh, it just oh, kind of gradually creeped up over time. I had a couple of videos on there. I had a uh, pneumatic power hammer I built uh, and I did some video of that. And uh, um, it, I also did like a little bit of soldering at one point using a, a close up uh, webcam microscope. And uh, oh, that'd be cool, I bet. Yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, it that's the the soldering stuff is actually where I still get a lot of people coming to my channel from. But he said if you can do that, then you are. Um, I was. Uh, if it's a how to, if it's a how to solder, then I, I might have seen those already. Yeah, um, I saw. But uh, so if that if I'd already done the hardest part, I figured, hey, you know, it's something that I could do and the braiding stuff is something where I essentially always have content available where I'm not having to like do tons of research or spend a whole lot of time coming up with new stuff every single time, which I know leads to a lot of burnout with a lot of new streamers. So oh, yeah, um, I figured I could go ahead and uh, start with that. And uh, it's actually it seems to have worked out pretty good. Um, so, but after that, um, once I got started, I or figured I would get started. I got a hold of Nick um, through his locals and said, "Hey, I'd like to make a braid for you. Can I do that?" And he said, uh, "Like, I have no idea what that is, but sure, why not?" <laughs> so, <laughs> let me get that more under the camera. I'm Ooh, almost done with the, the base. Um, so yeah, I've been. Uh, um, let's see. David, uh, do you want to switch my face with Torrance face so that? When I pull up chats, people could see our actual guest. Thank you. You could do that too. Oh, I sure can. But I yep. like asking you because I'm a helpless girl. <laughs> Solomon Anderson asks, Torn, what did you think of Wisconsin versus Zachary Anderson? I have not watched it at all, but I've heard enough um, of the uh, YouTube law tubers talking about it that it does sound like it's uh, a pretty um, sad miscarriage of justice. And so I'm hoping that. Uh, uh, they'll be able to do something with that to either rehear the case or uh, find some relief there. Because um, if you if the courts are not willing to um, do things properly when people are guilty, they're definitely not going to do things properly when people are innocent. 
Right. You're not so, wrong. Nope. Uh, and you can watch if you want to watch, rewatch it. Um, it's streaming on my channel, uh, my other channel, not my Lego channel, every uh, morning, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And then Solomon and I are doing a little bit of a breakdown video called Barely Interesting every night at 10 p.m. Eastern. So you can get caught okay. up that way. A I little bit, to... unless you get snippets. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm going to be hopefully appearing on soon, I think, right? Yes. You better be. I think. Tuesday? That's I what think. we, I think that's what we decided. Cause yeah, you got to ask Solomon do. because he, he's, he's running the show. I'm just here for the, I'm just here for the eye candy, you know? Okay. Well, as you should be, right? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a story says, unbeknownst to Nick, in some far flung corner of the world, that braid means Torn and Nick are married. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, th I think Lady Rackets would be very disappointed with that. Speaking uh, of which, she is, an absolute, she is an absolutely wonderful person. I had a chance to meet her oh, when uh, he came yeah. to the Philadelphia show that he did with, um, uh, I'm lousy with names, but uh, uh, so much. The Dick Show uh, guy, the Dick, show. Dick Masterson. Dick Masterson, that's right. Um, <laughs> the Dick Show. I like that Dick works. shows. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so it's got a. Uh, let's see. I have nameplate options here. Let's see. Get those in Japanese oh. or English of the yep, Himiji Castle. I like it. Oh, Japanese. I'm a, Japanese, definitely. I would have oh. gone English. Oh, okay. no. It's a conversation starter if it's in Japanese. Then people, then then they'll look at it and they'll be like, "Oh, what does that say?" And you can have a whole conversation about it. Junk you need conversation wants. starters in your in your house, there, Bahala. Oh, see, I, I go the opposite way. Yeah, I want if Bahala, people to you would need company to, as little to have possible. a conversation. Exactly. Bahala doesn't want people in his house. Y'all just Junk, leave Junk me alone. Junk asks Torin, since you enjoy Asian culture, what are your thoughts on BTS? Uh, on BTS, I'm not. It's with that K-pop. Oh, it's K-pop. It's K-pop. You just say you love them, and she'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't she's actually also, listen. Don't forget, she loved your curly hair. So be nice. Thank to you. Them. Um, I don't actually <laughs> listen to a lot of uh, K-pop or J-pop, but it doesn't bother me. I listen. I'll pretty much listen to anything except country western music, um, and I tend to go in like uh, uh, jags of different uh, types of music. Um, my latest kind of uh, guilty pleasure music is the uh, Russian group Little Big. Um, they've got a uh, concert coming up here in May that I'm going to in Philadelphia. You mean I to feel tell like me I've heard of that group? You would rather listen to K-pop than country music? Yep. Look at Bahala. Wait, are we talking, wait, are we talking I, I, I like know. Willie I'm Nelson country? Part. We talking nineties country or current country that you don't like? I haven't listened to country in the last like ten years or so, unless accidentally. So I couldn't say about current, but <laughs> anything up to like you know twenty tens, it wasn't really anything that I would listen to. It wasn't necessarily I'd go and turn it off because I couldn't stand it. But uh, so like I I, I, I I played some nineties country the other day for my wife because just because she said she didn't like it. And it was like, it was like flashback, but I knew all the lyrics. I knew all, you know, I could just sing right along with every song. 90s country is great. Modern country, it's, you might as well just listen to Taylor Swift. Oh, burn. Ouch. Uh, you, I don't know if I've told you about this. The, um, so Steve Gosney, one time I was trying to uh, sell him on this new country music artist, Morgan Wallen, right? Morgan Wallen's a, a he's from Tennessee. He plays out in Nashville. He hangs out in Nashville. The other night, he threw a chair off the roof at a cop. Oh, I saw that on TV. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> and it, oh, it, it hit close to one of the cops. <laughs> he almost he almost squashed a cop. So Maroon, he went to jail the other day. Maroon. <laughs> Seems like a good guy. I was, I was like, oh my apparently god. It's, apparently, he's got a little libation problem. Speaking of libation, 
It made me happy. We have a question for our esteemed panel. <laughs> 20th Century Fox wants to know, what are y'all's libations? I want to say coconut tequila influenced me to chat too much. Ooh. Ooh. Let it influence you, girl. Right? Girl. Little Make yangling. Little nice. God and bless I'm drinking iced tea as per my usual tea totaling self. Since there's no label on it, I got a soda stream a couple of days ago, and I'm trying to gradually transition from diet uh, caffeinated sodas to flavored seltzers. How do you like so, the uh, oh. soda stream? I it's been working that. out pretty good so far. Their um, the Mountain Dew syrup is branded Mountain Dew, uh, so it's reasonably close. The water, it, our tap water, is a little minerally, so I might wind, wind up using it like a filter pitcher for it, but uh, it's acceptable. Wait, what are you talking about? Soda stream? Soda stream. You make your own pop. Oh, you don't know oh, oh, okay. I do, no. I do. I do. I do. You know, um, we were going to do a thing. Uh, I showed Valhalla a couple times. Um, some, like, illegal builds. You know, whether or not it's an illegal builder. But look at Valhalla. I wanted to show you this. Like, so this right here, this build, this is two different what, right angle pieces. Yep. And then you put them on here. And so they're they're actually like spanning a space. I think this is an illegal build. Yes, this is part of an official set from the 90s. Because like, they don't connect? That makes yeah, they don't connect. Illegal? There's no support under here. Now, I'm supposed to put a four piece across, but I think this is technically an illegal build within an official legal set. Hmm. I That's think all we, I should, to show you. we should contact them and ask them about that. I don't think we should do that. We don't want to draw attention to Lego of our uh, use of their products and our racy jokes. I think. I think they would love us and I think they will sponsor us. Apparently they told the cops to stop um, using their, their Lego heads and mug shots. So, Corin, oh. did you see that? <laughs> the the cops uh, not wanting them to... Oh, no Dollywood for Torn. Sorry, yep. Oh, uh, Torin, you're missing out. Yo, come on. Um, yeah, I'm having uh, trouble uh, traveling as of late, other than um, the thing I go to in like late July, early August in Western Pennsylvania. Um, that takes me, my wife and I work at the, uh, the event staff. So we're there for like three weeks and that burns up pretty much all of my uh, uh, time. So if I have to do something else, it's unpaid uh, time off, which is kind of rough for me at the moment. Well, back to the popo using the Lego images. Did you did you see that story? No, I did not. So oh, the, I'll have there's, to look a, that. there's a police department, and so California passed a law that said the police are not allowed to publicize photographs, um, either in any way, shape, or form, of suspects or defendants in a nonviolent crime. So they started publishing their photographs, but using Lego heads over top of their faces. And there was like Legos crying and stuff like that. And so Lego sent them a a, 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 a letter that said, could you please stop using our Lego heads to cover your criminals? <laughs> uh, I think they did, but I thought it was funny. It, it was great. They, they should have kept doing it. It's absolutely hilarious. I wish I could find one. Oh, yeah. Torn can arrest David for his illegal actions. <laughs> My illegal, I, I'll legal give you a skills. warrant. Since you need a warrant, I'll give you one. It's part of the directions. It's not illegal if it's authorized. Authorized. But I feel like today's world, under today's legal building rules, the set wouldn't even have been approved with that sort of chicanery in it. Legal building rules. Speaking God. of uh, me being a constable, the story of how I became one is actually, I think, kind of amusing. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's every six years, uh, and I first got elected eight years oh, ago. Oh, this is a good story, actually. This is good. Uh, I um, So I was at the polling place, and I noticed that uh, the position for constable had nobody listed on the ballot. And a friend of mine had uh, written himself in for a position like about five years earlier. And I had, I had heard enough about constables. I knew what the minimums were, which is essentially you guard the polls on election day. Um, and I knew I could do that. So I figured, hey, what the heck? And I wrote my name in and I won with 100% of the vote. <laughs> <All won. laughs> That's so awesome. American politics, hard at work right there. Oh, that makes uh, me happy. I wrote my name in um, for, uh, did I write it in for prosecutor or governor? I can't remember what I did. I wrote my name in though one time. All the things. And uh, 
And I just so I could get like a count, like my name was on there as a write-in candidate, and I got like I officially won vote. Uh, so that's all. Thankfully, I didn't win. That would have been horrible. I think I'm going to start writing Dave's name for all elected positions that I don't care about. <laughs> David Helm. Yeah. I'm, going to start, who... I'm going to write Lego God or Law God. Or something. <laughs> there you go. Torn, is that your real first name? If not, what does it mean? Um, no, it's not my real first name. My real first name is Todd. And my um, uh, the reason I picked the name is I ran across it uh, for the historical stuff. Uh, it's a variant spelling of uh, Thorin or son of Thor. Um, and so I went with that. Um, and admittedly, I was like 22 or 20 at the time, somewhere around there. So uh, I'm good with son of Thor. That's very cool. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. When I um when I was doing Civil War reenacting, we had a roster of the company that I was portraying, uh, and so we would like pick a name of someone who really served on there. And I'm not going to say what my name is because I want to see what everyone can guess in the chat. But by the end of the stream, I'll tell you what my name was. You guys will love it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get any hints? Uh, okay. Uh, pie company. Pie company. Yeah. Okay. That's your hint. Okay. But no, it was. Uh, I, I like picking out those names, and I picked out the the you know the interesting one. Uh, so, Corin, is it like a is it a proper name or is it a surname or? Uh, it would be a first name or a use name. Um, the the full name I go by in the the medieval group is Torin Ironbrow. Um, and that's what I've got on my Twitter. Uh, the uh, username is at Torin1066, but uh, it's got the name of Torin Ironbrow. Oh, okay. I see John Hooker in the chat. John Hooker. <laughs> Did I miss John? No, no, no. No, it was a name. guess for his name. Yeah. On the, uh, oh. In his LARPing. In his LARPing. Not LARPing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody in the chat, some people in the chat were saying it's not LARPing. What David does is not LARPing. It's LARPing, y'all. <laughs> what what Torrent does Are you is sure not he's LARPing. Not a furry? I think David might be no. a furry. Whoa. No, LARPing. What? What? Okay. Okay. Furry. Here we go. <laughs> Wendy, you're not supposed to talk about that. You promised. Oh, sorry, I forgot we were live. <gasps> My bad. You know what? I, I don't hate it, man. Do your thing. Do your right? Thing. Hi, the White Rabbit. Hi, White Rabbit. How you doing? We love the White Everyone go, subs go subscribe to the White Rabbit. Please. She's awesome. Please. She's yeah, Bahala, what are you rebuilding tonight? That's a good question. This is a brand new set. I've never built oh, this one before. We are building at the moment this guy. Mm -hmm. Mama Holla. Sorry. A little flower pot. A little flower it's pot. It's so cute. It's a good one. It's a good one. And then I've got another set that um, I'll probably build after that because it's a small set. That's really pretty. Rose okay. Really cute. Love, love, love. So Mrs. Valhalla is getting all kinds of uh, Lego crafts built for her this evening, it appears. What? You know, it's been a while since you built her a Lego. So I think that's great. It has been actually. It really has. I've been selfish building lately. Well, a man's got to do what a man's got to do, and sometimes a man needs a helmet. <laughs> man always needs a helmet. Always. Uh, be safe. So, Torin, do you still do the um, reenacting? I'm going to call it reenacting because I forget what you call it. Close. It's close enough. Um, yeah, um, I don't get to as many events as I'd like to since COVID hit, but. Um, like I said, I'm on the event staff for that big one in August that has like about 10,000 people there. Um, so I at least attend one major event a year. 10,000 people. That's crazy. Yep. Hi, expert. That's awesome. He is not rebuilding. What's up, expert? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> so what do you, what do you portray? Uh, what kind of person? Like, are you a shopkeeper or what do you portray? Um, the, the way I originally started out, the, the philosophy behind it is try not to look like an explosion in a time machine. So my clothes tend to mostly be uh, uh, Norse, uh, European uh, time frame, like, you know, 1100s to 1300s. And I also do kind of a 
Mongolian um, uh, dress as well. I just try not to combine them both at the same time. That's pretty cool. Thank you. A lot of people into... don't realize the Mongols we were in video. Europe at that time frame. Yep. Um, they invaded all the way to Poland in the 1300s. Yeah. Holy crap, they made it all the way to Poland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody realizes this, that they made it all the way in there. They were threatening Rome, or not, not the 1300s, but they were threatening uh, 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 the Eastern Roman Empire, which was uh, Byzantia or whatever. Yeah, uh, they, they also hit like, the edge of Persia. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I know that uh, the Mongols like altered the the human genome, right? Like they they something like three percent of the world's population has Genghis Khan in it. Something crazy like that. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like a huge chunk of of Asia and, and Eurasia has uh, Genghis Khan's blood traces in it. Maybe that's the Asian in me. Hello. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe David David claims all the good parts are all the strong male parts of all the nationalities. It's like, yes, I'm a Viking. I'm Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I'm related to Alexander the Great somewhere in there. Right. That's a, I love I've how got... nobody's ever like, I was a peasant. I had the bubonic <laughs> plague. My one percent Middle Eastern is the Jesus in me. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, when I was all. when I was really young, I tended to hang around with a kind of a fringe crowd in Idaho, and there was a lot of the you know New Agey stuff, and you know of course everybody's like a reincarnation of like uh, Cleopatra or yeah. uh, Alexander oh, the yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, the point which is like, okay, I can't take this seriously anymore. When somebody told me I was the reincar reincarnation of Merlin, it's like, okay, so I'm the reincarnation <laughs> of a fictional character. <laughs> Wouldn't you just be the carnation then? Yeah, the right. yeah. Good one, Valhalla. I imagine you like in a South Park episode of the, you know, with the goth kids, you know, that sort of thing. They're just no. making stuff up because it sounds cool. Oh. Yeah. D. Robertson, or oh, who was it? Where in it Idaho, Noah? please? Um, I grew up in Boise. Uh, my uh, parents still live there. Uh, I try and get back there if I can, like about every other year. Um, and uh, I, uh, let's see, I was born in Boise, lived in uh, Billings, Montana for a few years when I was a kid. We moved back to Boise, then lived in uh, California for a few years. And then back to Idaho again. And then about 24 years ago, I moved out here to try and do a blacksmithing apprenticeship that uh, never worked out. But a couple of years after I came out here, I met my wife. Uh, incidentally enough, I was teaching her how to braid and we kind of started dating after that. And we've been married for about, this will be, this August, it'll be 20 years for us. Aww. She saw how good you were with your hands and she was like, oh, I'm marrying this dude immediately. <laughs> She's like, she has long hair. She's not dumb. Since you're interested in the Asian culture and all that stuff, or at least to some extent, have you seen the uh, Japanese garden in Idaho Falls? I have not. I will have to check that out. Uh, again, I haven't been in Idaho Falls for like, you know, close to 25 years, but I did get there semi-regularly. So I have... Um, Stayed overnight there twice, both by, well, when the first time was just like, oh, let's just stop. But the first time was an accident. We had like a vehicle breakdown. And then I went out to Butte, Montana in December of 2020, just to, you know, go someplace that wasn't under lockdown. And mm -hmm. uh, and then we decided to stop over in uh, Idaho Falls as well. It's a, I just like that garden, that little, that's like all that was there that I really saw, but it was very cool. Like you're in this busy street, you got cars rushing by, and it's like a divided highway sort of thing, and there's crossroads, and then you step down into this Japanese garden, and all the sound goes away. Where is it? It's calm and peaceful. It's Idaho Falls, Idaho. It's really Robert, weird. Like you step Dan, down you into are it. In for a surprise in Idaho Falls. In for I think a surprise. It's beautiful. I, I like it. Yeah, we have a vacation home in Tamarack, and I spend a lot of time in Boise. In Boise. And most of all my um, work stuff, if you will, is in Nampa. So I spend you have quite a, a time time there in 
in uh, Des Moines as well? No. No. Making sure. I don't know that. Time. We don't own timeshares. Timeshares are. Oh, I can't. Uh, not an investment. Yeah. So, so no, my stepdad actually, who's a super, like he's a real estate mogul. Um, somebody was somebody, uh, Andre Agassiz, <laughs> graph, bought into this development in Tamarack, Idaho, which is was supposed to be the next. Um, Vail or the next, uh, you know, those famous ski resort places, right? And my stepdad's like, yeah, I don't go for those scams. I'm not into it or whatever. And then my stepsister, I think, bought something there. And he's like, he fell in love with it. So he bought something there. And the development did go kaputs, but we still kept the house. So we go there. I, we spend a lot of time there. Are these the pictures of it? Yeah, these are the Japanese gardens. Yeah, the cool. Japanese gardens in Idaho Falls. Uh, okay. Yes, Wendy, it really was a vehicle breakdown. Uh, the truck started, we were hauling a camper trailer and the truck started spraying oil like all along the side of the camper trailer. And we're like, hmm, something's not right. So we got a new truck out of, out of Hope Falls. I do not. No. I do not. I do not rent timeshares. Speaking of Idaho Falls, uh, between there and um, Montana, right at the edge of the uh, Yellowstone Park. There's a small town called West Yellowstone. Um, oh yeah, it's really it's really fun to drive through there in like June, and you can. It looks nice. Uh, pretty much everything is green except at the edge of all the little uh, houses along there. There's like snowdrifts that are still like almost up to the roof of those houses. Very cool. Uh, so you're in Pennsylvania now, you said. Yep, uh, been here for about 24 years. Okay. I like Pennsylvania. You north south. You near. I'm far eastern. I'm about half an hour between um, Philadelphia and um, Allentown. Oh, okay, I went to Philadelphia the first time uh, a couple years ago. Not last. Not last. Uh, actually, a year ago now. About. On purpose. Yeah, I go to Philly on purpose. For some historical. Probably. Thing. Yeah. His LARPing. David was LARPing. <laughs> I went and saw the Liberty Bell. Uh, saw Franklin, the where Liberty Franklin's Bell. home was. Did you lick it? Ran you? up the steps. Ran yeah, up the steps to the Rocky thing. Yeah, yeah. Did you lick the Liberty Bell? No, you you're can't get that, that close to I it. I think you're supposed to lick it. I think they frown on that now. I would lick it. I would lick it for sure. Went to the first uh, Senate House, where, where the first uh, where George Washington stood, and all the founders for the first uh, Congress. That would be pretty cool, I guess. I'll give you that. Cool. Fine. David, I feel like you would, or maybe we talked about this before. I think you would love Colonial Fredericksburg. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to Fredericksburg. Oh my god! I've been they, to Gettysburg. No. Je Anytime. No, Colonial Williamsburg, they are all in character. The whole town, the whole, it's the, the, the original colonies and everyone's in character and they have literally all the crafts that they did and all of the careers or whatever, like, and build, like the blacksmith is right here and, and the baker's here and they don't use electricity. They, it's amazing. And your favorite part, which I know you would love, Jefferson is there giving his, having a talk with people and these nerds, Sit in the audience and try to argue with him, and he doesn't There's, break. He, you know, you know, your people. Your people. Try to argue people with him. People. Yeah. I don't argue with him. I would, I would gladly shake his hand and agree with him. I know. I think, <laughs> I think he would love it. Thorne, are you allowed to break character when you're when you're in your? Uh, yeah, abs yeah. There's, uh, it's not a show put on the pub for the public. That's another thing. Oh. Is it's um, pretty much an environment for the participants. Wow. Um, the event I go to, you have to, um, you have to essentially either be a member or pay to get in. And it's not as a show done for the public. Um, there's some YouTube videos about the event. It's called Penzik War. Um, and, I'm going to be uh, honest. It sounds a lot like LARPing, man. <laughs> so it sounds an awful lot like LARPing. Oh, uh, it's not LARPing, yes, Bob. It truly is. <laughs> yeah, they have real teepees. They have real, like, it's so cool there. Colonial Williamsburg. I think the, David would love it there. I for really the do. record, I would totally go LARPing one time. I would totally do it. Yeah, but what kind of LARPing? You want like a broadsword and a kilt? Or? He wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. I, what I want to see that. 
<laughs> I want video of that. <laughs> Corey, can we make this happen in a location where I can film it? <laughs> do it. Do it. Well, if you can make it up uh, here, I mean, I'm uh, okay. I probably. <laughs> Dave, he's got the plane tickets already bought. He's on his way. Tanks filled up. Filled up? Filled up? Filled up. <laughs> All right. We got to make our way up to Philly. Um, or not Philly, but near Philly. Then then uh, we can make this a whole like excursion because Bahala can lick the Liberty Bell. He can get dressed into a kilt and play with the broadsword. I think somebody. Happen. I think I remember somebody got arrested for licking the Liberty Bell a couple of years back. Um, they got arrested for hitting it with a hammer. Um, mm, don't do that. Were they yeah, trying the to see a, if it was really like broken? It's, or? The guy was mentally disturbed. Uh, apparently, if I remember, he was actually from Idaho. But uh, uh, the, I've been his there. name was Torin, aka Torin. He had beautiful he curly Idaho. hair. <laughs> Torin, are you into plants? Um, not really. Um, I've planted a couple of hickory trees in my backyard because I want to harvest the hickory nuts. So I only have like another five to seven years before I can get that. But that's just around it. the corner. <laughs> yep. Well, as they say, I the know uh, where I'll be that long from now. They say the absolute best time to plant a, a tree is 10 years ago. And the second best time to plant it is now. <laughs> that's good. I like right. that actually. I'll go plant one. D. Robertson says MLS might like the mountain man days that they have in Rexburg, Idaho. I like all that stuff. And I, I, I try to experience you know all of it. It's, it's it doesn't even have to have a particular time period. Like I'll go to Europe and tour castles and uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that was, that's that's very cool. I got it. Yeah, like there's just honest, like man. There's like this rundown castle over in like southern Sweden. Not rundown, but it's like unoccupied, really. And uh, like this is where the king's uh, the king's uh, brother and like nephews and stuff would just party. They'd bring their ladies back to you and all this stuff. And it's just like ruins now, and it's sitting on this lake. And there's like a there's a, a truck stop next, you know, like across this across from it now and you go and you can have your coffee and donuts and eat your candy and shit and look Next over this at this castle yeah it's just they're scattered everywhere there That's uh, it's kind of cool but you go you walk over and it's got this historical markers about what it is and everything. can people a lot of people just popped in can we please show what we're building gentlemen absolutely right. thank you so much i well Torin, or i guess i'm going first all right so I am building a Wild West set from the 90s. This is actually my childhood set. This is how much I've got so far going on it. Um, so that's what I got going on. Love that's it. That's cool. I used to have something Sorry. along those lines. I'm doing uh, Himji Castle. It's a medieval uh, Japanese castle. Yes. It's a super nice. awesome castle. And so far, oops, my bad, go ahead. Sorry. So far, that's what he's got. Yep. Uh, it's a little out of focus, sorry. Uh, and it'll take a couple okay. seconds, but I'm on the second bag of uh, uh, bricks out of I'm like 16 it. bags. Excellent. Amazing. I've never oh, seen that set before. Thought, babe. Cool. I am working on the water can flower pot first. It's so cute. Torrin shows up with 4,000 piece set. <laughs> I was like, yeah, my chance. Listen, y'all. <laughs> Listen, y'all. It's um, we're getting Oops, there. Sorry. It's getting pretty close. <gasps> wow! Oh my god, it's so cute. It's pretty cute. Oh, I'm obsessed. It's, it's pretty cute. Well, Hala's gonna start taking apart a couple more helmets. Be like, I still got more to build. <laughs> Take apart my big castle. <laughs> I do have another set, but the pickings were slim, y'all. I went to three different places looking for Lego. Yeah, yeah. Have... The problem is, is when you start. Buying so many of them. That's why I had the idea of rebuilding some of these old ones because I have the old book. I, wish I thought I, I had most of the pieces and I did. Yeah. I wish there, I had some so of the many old sets from when I was a kid. Um, Torin Jung says she has a recommendation. Look up an asparagus fern. It's not a fern, it looks like a bonsai. I have two. Think you'd love it. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to check it out. Well, I'm going to check that out for myself too because I need to do some landscaping out front. My wife does a lot of gardening, so if it's usually nice. plant related, I talk to her about it. She might like that. Yep. Oh, we also have seven cats, so we have to have most of the plants oh, outside. Okay. 
Tug Raiders sent themselves. They weren't given a link. Well, we're so happy you're here. Hi, Deborah. I like you, Tug Raiders. Tug tried to raid? Or did you guys just come over? Either way, thank you for being here. Yeah, a bunch of them. Thank you very much. Were, yeah, thank That's you. Awesome. We appreciate you so much. Uh, oh, yeah. Megan and Tug were streaming in there, weren't they? They were. Tug just, hi, Shenny. Oh, yeah, she said Tug just finished. Great. Well, thanks for coming over. Welcome aboard, y'all. As welcome, you can see, welcome. we have our amazing guest, Torin, here. Who's link? Wait. I'm going to say the word. Link is in the description on both of our Kumihimo. Kumihimo. This, yep. stuff. this is what he does. And it's in chat right now. It's amazing artwork. It's amazing braiding. And I'm going to speed this up just a touch. Oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. And he wanted to try to do one of these braids during the Lego stream. We said, no, you need to build Lego. You got to build Lego. got to build yeah. Lego. Somebody asked me if they could paint the other day, and I was like, hey, we can do that stream anytime you want. But not but, on Lego. But not on Lego. <laughs> not on Lego. Yeah. We're sticklers, y'all. Really cool. we, actually, we actually really like it when our guests build Lego. We appreciate that. Uh, but this is uh, silk, right? It's uh, silk braided? Yeah. Yep. It's gorgeous. It's okay, so, cool. so what's, the, what's the tensile strength of these uh, belts when you're done with them? Even though it's I just, would... I would have to calculate it out, but I'm pretty it's sure you, be several, you gotta hold several people with it because oh, there's yeah. a lot of silk. And silk is very, very strong. It's not That's quite uh, spider web strength, but it's pretty close. Oh yeah, you could definitely probably pull a car out of a ditch with that stuff. Maybe yeah. two strands. Of I it. think so. You know, I, I I'm you know, I live near the country and we have a lot of four we do a lot of four wheeling where I live. You could pull yourself out of that jam. I recommend maybe not trying to if you got a better option, but in a bunch. I was going to say, it seems like a, a really bad use of that. <laughs> nice it would be a really brain. expensive use of that tool. All right? this beautiful silk that's been know, right? hours and hours. But I am creating. bougie, so I could see myself using that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. With uh, uh, Rob on last week, uh, he was talking about how I asked if he wanted it as a belt. And he says he can't wear it, and it's like, uh, I, it's perfectly fine. Entirely too fancy. I I would definitely wear it as a belt. You would. I could see that. There's okay. So there is this uh, opposing counsel that I saw once, and he, um, we were at we were at the court of appeals. So we were doing oral arguments, and he was my opposition. But he had this pair of shoes that I kind of I, I kind of dug. I liked the style of them. So I looked them. I asked him what they were. We're like we're sitting waiting for the court of appeals. So I'm pulling it up on Amazon. I'm looking at them. And they had this one, which was a black shoe with a white sole and a red stripe that went around and red laces. And I was like, I'm getting that, damn it. <laughs> and I ordered those and I wore those things every day to court for like the next year until I wore a hole through them. Uh, that's my style. I like things that stand out of touch. I uh, couldn't imagine you being slightly flashy. <laughs> couldn't imagine it at all. They were the coolest freaking shoes. And... Uh, uh, Did I they go to, with your pink tie, though? They went with everything. Nice. And it didn't matter. They went with everything. No, I, I do like the pink tie. I have a bright yellow tie. Anything that stands out. So I like your yellow um, and pink ties. Those are my favorite. Yeah. I have a Jody Arias tie. Oh, Lord. Of course you do. <laughs> Torin, we have a lot of people in chat that are saying, Christine, Deborah, they're all saying they sub to your channel. So Thank you very much. It is much appreciated. We and I will really say this too. If you watch his streams, he does these live, right? I've got it a little bit sped up. He'll show you the diagram, the computer model that he's working off of. But you just, you kind of sit with it in the background and it's just very meditative. Uh, and it's a great way to just relax and, and watch the stream. You can chit chat a bit in chat if you want. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very meditative. Torin does a great job too of uh, the way he handles chat. I admire it. It works well for your for your art form, right? So you can do yeah. a, a layer or two of braids, do a step or two, and then check back in with chat and make sure that you know everything's really good. Cool. And, and it, it's very, it's very, very um meditative. It really is. It I just kind of puts me at ease. I love That's it. That's really cool. The other I, day uh, I was in there, I was chatting, and I said, sorry, because this was originally scheduled for the 20th and we had to move it up. 
And so I chatted and then he doesn't get to it right away. So then I'm just sort of like, I'm doing something else. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, Torrin's responding. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause I, I have to look at what I'm doing. Um, and I figure the best way I can do it is, is I'll do a move then I'll catch up with chat. That way I'm not like rushing or I'm misreading what people say. And uh, I, I do try and emphasize that I'm trying to be an educational channel. So I'm more than happy to answer questions regardless of how many times I've answered them before. Um, we love that. So, yeah, I, 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 I've run across too many people who have tried to learn something and then somebody gets frustrated or yells at them or it's like, you're not doing it right. Well, I'm just starting out. And if you don't have the patience for people, people are not want to, not want to, not going to want to learn what you want to teach them. So, awesome. Um, but that's kind Paul, of my philosophy behind that. Torn Paul Carpenter asked if that's a homemade loom for the silk or can you just buy it? Yes. And yes. Uh, I, I, I built my own, uh, about 20 years ago, I think. Um, and I have made like another six or seven to sell in the last two years. Wow. And I'm hoping to have, uh, several made this summer. I've got at least two of them that I've committed to build and I want to have several others and kind of set up a kind of a, a production line in my shop to do that. I'm getting it things organized for that so it's not like stressful or a lot of you know oh no it's down to the deadline and i'm rushing to catch up i'm trying to get it to be a nice consistent production line well this so cool. this is a good segue to, to john's next question and i'm curious too do you sell your work yes and um the braids themselves uh would retail for about three thousand dollars for the amount of time that, and materials that go into them um, but I also want to sell the equipment so people can do it themselves and I can teach them how to do it. I love that. That's so cool. That's beautiful. I love that so much. How many hours does a typical braid take you? 60 to 80. And we're talking how many feet of, of braid? Between like uh, five and seven feet. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. So, I mean, I can do them shorter. It's just I figure that um, since I'm doing designs for people, I want to have enough that they can like show it on their uh, channel if they'd like, or in like in the case of um, Danny, she actually wear, will wear hers as a belt. Uh, Jeff Danny. hangs his in his background. Uh, I have a question. Um, I have a couple hey, of Libby. knitted ties and it would be really cool to have one of those as a tie. I wonder how you long they'd have to be. Ooh, yeah. I know um, that. Where do we find your work to purchase, Torin? I I have just set up an LLC so I can like collect sales tax and like that. Uh, I'm I'm going to set up a website to be able to do it. It's not in place yet. I'm hoping to have it in the next couple of months, but it will be Kitsune Kumihimo. And let me go ahead and type that into private chat because <laughs> that was a word. <laughs> it's it's two words. Uh, a Kitsune is a Japanese fox spirit that can have anywhere between like three and nine tails. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, I know what those are. I know what those are. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jung, Jung talks about those all the time. I almost got one tattooed on me, actually. Almost. You can you can tattoo it on Torin. Torin doesn't want that. I promise. Oh. You. No, I'm not. I'm not a tattoo person. Sorry. I'm not uh, a tattoo artist, so it works out fine. <laughs> uh, Ooh, a headband. I like that idea. All right. Um, I I did the proper spelling, and I have registered the domain, so I uh, will not have to worry about it being uh, sniped out from under me. So when I get a chance, that's the domain name I'm going to be using. Uh, nice. I'm putting com. it in, in the chat for y'all. Hold on just a sec. Shoot. I was putting it in a banner and then I messed up. <laughs> well, if I ever uh, get to make the, the braid list, goat. Awesome. Jasper, the goat. <laughs> Jasper, the goat. All over it. Possibly, but like Ooh. I said, I've got um, the, ones. That's cute. the ones I've said that i'm actually going to make uh i'm going to do one for aussie overlord uh oh, uncivil yeah. law uncivil is next uh then aussie overlord uh and i'm probably going to the next one after that is probably going to be uh potentially criminal um and i also said i want to do one for robert barnes but um 
I going to have to either a lot of research uh, or have a chance to actually talk to him. And that's probably not going to happen anytime in the near future. Well, uh, never say just, never, my man. Yeah. It's amazing uh, what this YouTube thing will do. Yep. I don't know that link. That was maybe not a great link. I don't know what I did. Um, it has StreamYard in the link. So I'm, I don't think that's his site. I don't know what I did wrong. Sorry, oh, kids. Delete that. Delete that. Yo, delete, delete that. that. Delete that. Did I just, did I just put the. Yeah, you oh, did. yes. You did bad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want Torn to be my teacher, not you. You're me. <laughs> Where did it go? I deleted I, I it already, out of mine. Oh, okay. It. <laughs> you know, you know, even if twenty people click on that link, they can't get in until I let them in. You're not, you're not wrong, dear. It's I'm not a, a terrible quit. mistake to make. I'm we a have gate. five people in the background right now. <laughs> well, they're just gonna have to wait. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I'm glad I looked up what I did. That's for sure. <laughs> what did uh, Jojo ask? What did Riketa think after he figured out what you were making for him? Uh, he was very impressed with it, though. I think his wife likes it a lot more than uh, he does. But uh, he he did uh, do a thank you and showed it on stream. And uh, uh, Lady Rackets definitely uh, was very happy that I'd made it when I got a chance to talk to her in Philly. Um, um, Lady Rack really enjoyed showing us his piece that you made for him last week in the Lego stream. Yeah, I, I did watch. <laughs> I did watch on. last week's stream. You come on up, Levy. You come on. <laughs> I've streamed with Levy before. Really? I have. Lucky. And just He's on. Nice. I've also met them both in person before. Hey, like that. Oh, apple I bet. Stream. Oh, are they going to go? Are they going to be at um, Dollywood? Hopefully, last I heard is they're trying. They've got a big trip coming up this summer in um, Europe, so they weren't sure if they're going to make it. But hopefully, yeah. hopefully, my mother-in-law is coming in from Sweden, and she's expecting to see Dollywood. So. She's coming yeah. in from Sweden. I didn't even that never even clicked. Your yeah, mother in law click when my wife from Sweden's mother is coming. Yeah, to that Dollywood didn't, that didn't click at all, man. I'm an idiot. <laughs> awesome. I, I said she's to more excited to meet Baker than anything else. <laughs> Yamaha's naked backstage dancing. <laughs> oh, you think I can't see you? <laughs> yeah, we can see you, Yamaha. We can see you. He thinks because he has that really cool voice that we can't see. We can only hear him, but we can see you. Oh. Well, I'm uh -oh. currently on move 29 out of 299. You're on. Wait, you're on. Step 29 of 299. Yeah, that's that is on, awesome. That is on schedule to be a 10 hour stream, my man. Well, I think I'm I'm actually picking up speed as I'm going along. <laughs> I'm just going. We might uh we we might have we to we might have to do a two two day stream. <laughs> we might have to revisit good. our finishing all the projects yeah. on one stream uh philosophy am, we've had so far. Part, uh, hi Nick. I am hurrying my Nick. absolute best. Hey, Nick. You're no, good, you're buddy. fine. You're it's good. not a race. It's not it's, a race. And I will say that you, if you, I, if you bit off more than you can chew, I did that once too. When I was, we streamed. Yeah, what did. is it? Episode three, I think. Was it two or three? I can't um, it was remember. the one when you were in Sweden. I don't know if it was three or four. Because the I first two, well, but maybe I it was bought, two. I bought I Avery, think it was I two. bought the I think it was. Super Mario Brother mystery or uh, uh, question mark box thing. And uh, that was an absolute fail. I could not finish that one in one stream. No, I was he, nowhere was near being done. And it was like five hours in. The sun was rising. <laughs> it's like 5 a.m. in Sweden. Torin, George Cunningham wants to know what you're making. Um, I am making Himji Castle, uh, which is a um, medieval Japanese castle. It's so cool. It's a 2125 piece kit. Right. Gorgeous. So, so what do you prefer, uh, uh, Idaho or Pennsylvania? I like them both. Um, it one of the. Uh, 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 I'm assuming we're okay swearing, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the interesting differences, uh, despite the fact they're pretty close to the same latitude. Um, is that uh, um, the humidity difference. Um, my wife, uh, who is a Pennsylvania native, uh, has gone out with me to Idaho a few times, but it's usually been in like the winter 
where uh, weather is a bit drier, but not too bad. And um, she, uh, a couple years ago, we went out there in um, late July, early August. And while it gets occasionally up to about 100 here, the humidity is also really high. Uh, when we got out there, it was like 108. We land at the airport, which is air conditioned. We get out, we get to the rental car, and we're not even out of the parking lot. And my uh, wife says, oh, my God, my contacts are fucking popping out of my eyes. <laughs> it's so dry. It's so terribly dry. Yeah. That's awesome. I so like this talking Idaho. dog says, Torn is a serious guest. I love that. Thank you. He's legit. Yeah. He's legit. And if you guys are late to, uh, for the late arrivals, he's also a constable, which I find awesome and fascinating at the same time. And, okay, so so you write your – so you walk in and you randomly write your name down as a writing candidate for constable you win with 100 percent of the votes now what like what, what, what um happened? all right so um the uh okay sorry i just was looking at what i'm doing here okay so um what um uh that's a weird part of the castle. Anyway, um, so I got elected um, and I uh, talked to my, you know, I read up a little bit more on what was involved when I realized that I had actually really won uh, and I got the election certificate. I explained to my wife what was involved, asked if she was okay if I uh, um, do that. Oops. And she goes, yeah, it's okay. You know, you can do it. I'm happy to support you in this for what you need. And it's like, late at night we're talking and at the end of it i say and it comes with a badge <laughs> and she says what are you five <laughs> that's the best part i feel like i would have been excited about the badge me too yeah i, I had been excited it. for you i, I would have been on obviously. all the social media posting my badge but uh she uh um she said oh, afterwards sorry. that she was just tired but uh it's a, it's a cute story and um, so I, I, I get a hold of the, um, the county government to figure out what I have to do to register with the county and uh, figure out what I have to do to get tr uh, certified. Because you could be elected constable, and if you're not certified, the courts won't work with you. And there's the only thing that you can do at that point is to essentially um, guard the court or guard the polls on election day. Which incidentally is a misdemeanor if you do not do that. Um, so yeah, I got to be at the polls. You could actually um, be charged really? with a crime for not doing a job that you you wrote your name in. <laughs> yep, so, that's awesome. Well, you have to it's arrest like, yourself. That's like the dumb, like like you see those shows like dumbest way to get yeah. arrested, right? Because yeah. like, you well, wrote, I wrote my name, name in. in. Don't want to see you on that show, Torn. <laughs> Although I do keep no uh, money for myself, so I have some in my safe. If you ever need it. Speaking awesome. of which, for Dollywood, say get, get have have double bail money, okay? We got, got it, babe. You got it. I got you. You know I got you. <laughs> but, uh, just, just give Mrs. Uh, Valhalla your phone so she can text me. If, if, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, the uh, um, uh, so anyway, after that, apparently to be certified to work with the courts, you have to go through 80 hours of constable training. And if you're going to carry a firearm, it's 40 hours of uh, firearms training. Um, and at the time I got elected, both of those were free. Um, though if you failed the class and you had to take it in, you would have to pay for it. Um, so I went through that. Um, it was an interesting class. They had it on the weekends. And, uh, after that, I found my, uh, where my local magisterial district court was though. A constable can work anywhere in Pennsylvania, uh, as long as, you know, the local courts willing to work with them. Um, found the local judge, introduced myself, uh, and, uh, I'd say probably about four or five months after I did that, they started having, uh, or actually it was more like three months. They started having a little bit of work for me. Uh, I joined the, uh, uh, one of the three state, uh, constable associations and, uh, got an idea what was going on got a little bit of help when I first started out and I've been doing it since then. It's about between like, um, three and five hours a week on average. Um, Ooh, that's nice. It's coming along. Oh, it's coming oh, along. Very cool. A little barrel fell down. 
There we go. It's getting there. Oh, it's getting there. So I'm having childhood memories. <laughs> I love the barrel. I love that. It's really cute. So wait, this actually is a set that you've built before, huh? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is, this is, Ten. <laughs> when I was like 12. <laughs> uh, this is where I'm at still. Nice. nice. Love it. I yeah. saw the uh, the pyramid uh, IRL today. Actually, my uh, my stepson has the pyramid. Uh, and that is a cool build. I got to build that. I saw that one the other day, and I thought about it. Tia Nina, Dave, she says Dave is building his dream treehouse. There actually is a Lego treehouse now that I am going to get. You have. I to saw that. Me. I saw that the other day. That one. Yeah, it's a lot one. of pieces, oh. though. Was it? Yeah. I didn't think it was that much. Wendy Marino. By the way, Wendy, I haven't seen you in the last several Lego streams. It's good to have you back. We we, we met Wendy at, on Steph the Alterner. She she came to us from, from Steph. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Of course, I remember because she has my name. We have the same name. Steph's she wants to know where you all store your Lego builds. Good question. Oh, um, most of I was just mine. having... Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, was, I was just having this like conversation with my wife. Because I'm kind of running out of room for them. There's many that are still in the treehouse. Um, there's some that are on the shelf in the dining room, just randomly. Uh, I took as many as I could, the Star Wars ships, and hung them on the wall to free up space in other spots. I'm kind of like getting to the point where I'm just shoving them into drawers. <laughs> I, don't know where to put them. I actually, the other day, started taking them apart and putting them in my bins. Some of the older, or okay. not older, but some of the Star Wars ones. That I, you know, running out of yeah. room. That was the problem. It's it's a real problem, man. It's a real problem. I obviously have a lot in my background in my studio setup or whatever, right? But, Dave, did you see Salty Dog's question? Uh, I do still have my boat channel, although I haven't done much with it. Uh, I have um, a panel that I just finished doing an epoxy pour on, and I'm going to install it tomorrow, actually film that, and then I'll have my video finished for, for that. And um, if you guys remember over the summer on some of Broken Baker's streams, I was out working on it. I was planning it down and stuff. So that'll all be up there. Nice. Nice. Uh, Very cool. Let's see. Yeah. Dave has fully built Lego swept under his carpet. <laughs> Justin says. Yes, I you do. might. I don't know. I feel uh, like that. I feel like Dave's too uh, organized for that. He, that would probably drive him crazy. Do you see the shelf yeah. behind him in the rest of that workspace? Like, I get it. His tools are all nice and neat, but that's. Oh, you mean? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here. Okay. So let's let's explain is the this. Shelf nice and neat. No. No. It's so not. so so this. Oh, yeah. that's First of all, nice. Okay, that's that's all like the camping stuff, and there's mm -hmm. bins over there. It looks like a mess because mm -hmm. it does. there's a giant bin that needs to go back up there. There's a tent up there. Oh, okay. Uh, we had a squirrel living in all of this over <gasps> the winter, and so oh, it's nice. all been torn out. And I'm cleaning it, and I'm throwing shit out, and I was just throwing stuff back up there temporarily. But yes. Um, generally, that's not the nicest looking shelf. Anymore. Yeah, you're right, Mahali. Yeah, you just made my whole Damn it. Thing. Here we go. Okay. Is that better? Slightly. A little better. That'll work. A little more. Yeah. A little more. This is oh, all organized funny. back here. Yeah. I thought you were going to blame it on your son. You're like, this is my son's part of the garage. Oh, yeah. Take your, like, take your Lego to the office, David. That's a good idea. I could. The turtles things. are active, Valhalla. They look happy. So, Torn, where are you? Where are you putting your Lego when you're done? Um, I'm not sure. It's probably going to be up here next to all my streaming stuff because I figure it's going to be a good uh, prop or uh, accessory for the type of stuff I want to do. Yeah. Absolutely, Steph. I know Steph put hers in the background of her studio. Yeah. Sure Everyone but Still Rob did. has. Everyone but Rob has put theirs, I think, somewhere in their like background. Oh, well, Rob said he's to... giving his to his kid or something. Or oh, yeah, that's kid, right. no, his, his wife, his, his oh, his nephew. Boy. You're right, his nephew. See, why do I have a short David of listens. some weirdo shoving a newt in my face ball? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all go I check out a newt the today. Hall. They're really cute. 
I thought y'all might well, want to appreciate the newt. I loved I, it. I am missing a piece, and I've got four extra pieces so far. <laughs> well, that's, that's very right. typical. Yep, yeah, very typical. Fortunately, the piece that's missing doesn't look like it's going to be a structural one, but this is currently where I'm at. Cool, cool, cool. That's very you, cool. You can see, oops, sorry, wrong side. You can see the uh, missing piece right there. It's supposed to be green. Wait. Oh, I was doing a solo. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see the missing piece. Yeah, just put a brown one in. You'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think he has any extra pieces. Well, later. since you have Tor Torn's green screen, uh, Jung wants to know: Do the green? Does what does Torn do with the green screen behind him? Normally, what I do is I hide the absolute mess this room I'm in is with the <laughs> like secondary <David>. camera. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, most people but, have shame about their messes. I just throw it on display. Yeah, show it for the internet. <laughs> David uh, has it, no shame. It's more to uh, make sure that Mrs. Torrin is not unhappy with me uh, about that. Um, so idea. I'm going to mute real quick while I open the next bag. Of sure. course, yeah. Susan York asks, has anyone seen the Deep Space Nine build? It's to scale no. and intentionally lit with LEDs. Internally. Internally. internally lit. 750,000 pieces to build. Wow. That's no, insane. I've not heard of it. I haven't heard of that either. Uh but it sounds cool. Right, my train a... wheels are not going to work. Salty Dog ke says, keep a receipt. It'll be a write-off for your LLC. Absolutely. Uh, I can write it off two ways. One, because it's advertising for being on this stream. And two, it's for um, accessory uh, decoration for the uh, um, for the channel in general. Oh, yeah. That's not true, Justin. He's not embarrassed. You know, he said the nicest thing on his stream last night. He did. He absolutely I was like, did. I got a little oh, Rob Rob from Lawn Lumber. He said, um, he thanked me. I, I sent him a super chat and he thanked me for it. And he said that he, I think he said something like it was one of the best streams he's ever been a part of. Like he really If I recall it. correctly, he said uh, it was the most fun he's had on the internet, as I believe what he oh, said. That's even sweeter. Like right that. yeah he said he really enjoyed our um the way we you know he enjoyed being interviewed and not having to do all the talking but yet he could you know like he yeah, was speaking he quite it. highly of it i i know Made me feel because happy. it's worth speaking highly of right oh dave yeah i okay, found dave the last piece at, there you go uh, see, it's always in the bag that's oh. the thing I wanted to say is never throw out the bags until the set is completely done. And even then, give it another once over. Because <laughs> I have thrown out bags and then gone through the garbage looking for the bags because I know that freaking piece is in there. <laughs> sure enough, it was. And he's not bitter at all. <laughs> Just look at my little horse carrying a safe. And oh, a, my God. And he's so coat. cute. You know, why do people make horses work so hard? I think that's me. Well, they can handle it, Wendy. That's why. But yeah. have, have we asked Except them? my horse, no. apparently. <laughs> my horse has soggy frogs or something. I don't know. He doesn't like it when I get on him. My wife, well, I, I blame the frogs. My wife that's blames rude. my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe lay off the pasta tonight, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so offended if my horse got mad when I got up on him. <laughs> She'd be like, this got things. me off of me, please. Chat is one of the things I'm kind of worried about if my channel actually does wind up getting large enough because uh, of the way I do it, I wouldn't be able to keep up with. So I'm trying to yeah. cultivate uh, people that are nice and calm to uh, who are willing to be mods. Uh, so far, the only mod I've got is uh, Gwendolyn SS. She's and good, though. She, yeah, oh, she's been here tonight. She's been Ooh. in the chat. Wait, yeah, I have follows and not a mod? Nope. I don't think what? so. What? Yeah. Well, he said calm people. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm not offended. I'm not offended. <laughs> I'm a little sad, but I'm not offended. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm also not a mod is... anywhere. Do you want to? Bahala, you should have an auction or have a contest, and the winner gets a built one. Find at the bottom. <gasps> Ooh, I like that idea. You know, Maybe. you are so smart. 
No, maybe, what? yes. It would be hard to ship, I think. Uh, ship what? It's five Legos. bucks to ship. It, it's five bucks. How are you going to get ship. it there in one piece, Wendy? How's it not going to Oh, you don't get it in one piece. I am, by the way, when I gift you the Lego build that I did of your suite, mm -hmm. Your your room your mm -hmm. you still have studio. It to it's me? all getting broken down. You have to figure out how to put it together. <laughs> That's <laughs> so mean. <laughs> no directions. <laughs> it does seem a little mean, but I'll take it. I'll take it with my free Legos. I figured you could spend uh, spend a, a Lego nice. stream figuring it out. Yeah, it'll be good. Three, four, four. There we go. Yes, your mods, your mods are super important in my in my not so humble opinion because I'm David and Bahala's mom. <laughs> <laughs> they um, the mods can be super they, beneficial. That's for sure. They sure can. Yeah, you just got to be really careful. They can also <coughs> cause problems, but they can not, also because, cause problems. But I mean, you know, it's a human interaction, so things happen. You know, one hundred percent. I blame uh, Jung for all of it. <laughs> I wouldn't have any yeah, mods. Huh? I wouldn't have a Discord. I wouldn't have anything but for Jung. Right? Damn it, Jung. Glue it together. Oh, then I'd have to take it apart and then rebuild it and glue it all together. In the Oh, it'd be horrible. Oh, it'd be horrible. I might be able to do it, but it'd be horrible. Hey, everybody over in my chat. I'm just taking a look. Yeah. Ooh. Actually, this is probably a great time to remind people that um, if you are unaware, Dave's channel is pinned in my description. He's got a brand new fancy pants um, Legos channel, Lego yes, Law. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, make sure you get over there, give him a sub on that channel. And um, if you want to see me fail at building Legos on the Lego stream, if you want to see all kinds of fun Lego clips and things like that, you can see it all on Lego Law. That's what's pinned at the top of the channel. That's pretty good, David. We're excited for that good. new channel. David Nelson says Bahala could build MLS's workshop and just dump a pile for his shelves. That's pretty good. <laughs> By the way, people, I highly recommend USPS, just the normal post office, um, flat rate shipping. They have boxes, and the boxes are free. And they'll even, if you print the, the what's it called, the label at home for yourself, like you don't, it doesn't have to be on a fancy paper, just print it on a piece of paper and tape it. They'll pick it up at your house. You don't even Ooh. have to go to the post office. I'm a huge fan of using them. So, Torn, what is the craziest story you have um, from being a constable? I'm more fascinated. I'm I'm still so fascinated about this whole constable. The constable thing is pretty pretty neat. I gotta say, I've we been for fortunate that I haven't had anything that was like super serious where I was like concerned about safety or anything like that. But the I guess you'd say the craziest story is I was doing an eviction um, and the um, lady was trying to, uh, you know, get the money or whatnot. The, comp the property management company was willing to do that. And I was trying to express to this lady uh, within the limits that I had how she would be able to do that and what she would need to do uh, to do that. And um I don't know if uh, why this happened, but uh, she had like a eight year old daughter, or whatever there. And uh, as this as this was going on, where I'm trying to calmly explain what she needs to do, and the lady is yelling at me, uh, being stressed. Obviously, it's uh, a stressful situation. I try not to make it any worse than it absolutely has to be. Sure. But the the daughter's. Uh, grabs her mom's leg yell, and looks up at me and yells, don't you take my mommy. And it's like, that isn't even on the table. Oh. And that was a big gut punch. I'm sure. What do you think her mom told her? What do you thing? think that that child has seen? Well, that's the that's, thing, yeah. right? When it, That she's some, saying, don't take my mom. The cop shows up and her the, the child's reaction is that her mom's going to get taken away. Yeah, that's a, that's a sad situation. Yes. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I didn't really respond to it. I didn't know if there was anything I could respond. I just kept trying to give the lady the information she needed. And she was able to make arrangements uh, for being able to stay there. Um, 
and uh, it's a it's a complex that I deal with regularly. And apparently, while I was on vacation, like six months later, they did actually wind up getting evicted. But uh, evictions are the most stressful and most dangerous thing for a constable. Um, every constable that's actually died in the line of uh, doing their duties has been doing an eviction at the time. I can imagine that would get could get a little dicey. Good night, buddy. Yeah. We were just got raided by the cutest thing on the planet, yo. Sorry about that. He has to show Oh, he always says uh, to say he loves Disney Lego. Is... People are asking, does he like Lego? He loves Lego. So the um uh, would you in the future do we have uh you know potential live body cam streaming to your channel or anything? Doing your constable work? Probably Ooh, not the uh, the uh, state of Pennsylvania did pass a law about uh, you know, allowing body cams for law enforcement officers. It does not include constables. Um, there are some there are some county DAs here that do not consider constables are allowed to do it. Uh, and in those counties, it's essentially dangerous for a constable to wear a body cam. Um, and the other um, thing. Why would it be is, dangerous? I don't get that. Because the DA will, if they, they get in any trouble, and the uh, which has happened where you know consuls will get arrested, the DA will charge them for violating that statute, and they've issued essentially opinion letters saying that consuls are not allowed to to do that if they you know record somebody, they can be in violation of the wiretapping statutes. Um, oh, are you guys a two party consent state? Yes. Oh, that makes more sense. I was like, why would that be illegal? I couldn't. I was having a. a that sounds Just, horrible. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it does. And the other, the other thing is, is since constables have no agency other than themselves, um, if you we're having body cams that would like need to be used for evidence, we really aren't set up to be able to store the uh, um, uh, the video in a way that would be you know for, for a chain of evidence um, that would be you know more reliable for court uh, use than you know, just standard, you know, person recording. Uh, so, uh, while I had, I did get a body cam at one time until there's like a better solution to come up with. I'm probably not going to have a body cam per se. I do have a dash cam in my car and I try and park where the camera covers, you know, when I'm, uh, approaching a, a house or whatnot. How do you have, so, yeah. a, how do you have a camera in your car in a two party state? Doesn't that, because it, it, it's audio. It's the audio that's the issue. Got it. Okay. But Video. isn't it? Isn't it? Um, I mean, if you're in public, you don't have an expectation of privacy, right? In a two-party yeah. state, in a two-party state, you do, right? You no. You, well, uh, you have. You have. Go ahead. Yeah, two-party state. Is my understanding is is that there has to be no expectation of privacy for it to not apply. So yeah. if you're recording a police officer okay. in the commission of their duties, there's no expectation of privacy. That makes but more sense. I'm a constable who I would come up to like somebody's house and talk to them, and they would have an expectation of privacy in their house. Sure. Uh, so that makes sense. That makes it's sense. one of the things where I try to make sure that I am not at the cutting edge of the law. <laughs> right. While that is the part where things are interesting and happening. I don't really need for my life to be interesting in that way. No, no. It sounds like something else I heard lately. <laughs> uh, can can you all Sorry. excuse me for just a second while I go take a bio break? Of course, my dear. Right. No. Young has a question. Torn, no. Does Torn, Torn enjoy Japanese food? Does he have a restaurant or recipe recommendation? Um, I do like Japanese food. I like sushi. I also like uh, other uh, Japanese foods. There are a couple of uh, restaurants near us that have very decent sushi and hibachi uh, type stuff. And I, we like going to them when we can afford it. Uh, recently, my wife and I discovered a Korean barbecue place not too far away from us. And that's where I'm taking my wife for our anniversary uh, when it comes up in um uh, Actually, I'm taking it for her birthday as well as her anniversary. Her birthday is in about a week and a half. That's awesome. Thanks. Okay, so this oh. is my finished set. It's this really one. cute. Good this job, guy, David. Let's be back here. Oh, and now I'm knocking this guy down. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, uh, he's rolling out with the cannon anyways. Cute. Very, very my, cute. 
gold mine Wild West set with the, uh, of course, the government authorities shutting down a prosperous gold mine for no good reason other than the government wants to steal the gold for themselves. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Sounds familiar in my state. Back to Korea. Oh, yeah, California. Well, you all the gold mines, it's where like the gold rush was. Yes, the 49ers, the great 49ers. That's right. When I was a kid, every all of our um, field trips were surrounded of, around the settlers and the gold mining and Sutter's Fort is right by my house. And um, uh, we used to like go up, I think it's like Jackson or something. So one of those, you know, offshoot towns off some weird highway that you go and you actually mine for gold and. It was fun. Nice. Says, hi, Torin. Hey, Torin. Hey, Ellie Font. Nice to see you. I see oh, you in so chat regularly. Yeah, she's a regular. Yeah, I really like it. I really like sashimi too. You like Sydney? You said sashimi. Oh, sashimi. Oh, me too. I could live people, on it. People say sushi when they tend to mean sashimi for the raw right? fish. Sushi just means with rice. Sashimi is the raw fish. Yes. Love it. Well, I prefer sushi then because I always get like a California roll or something. All cooked. Yeah, I like both. Or lobster or net lobster. Um, You're shrimp making me hungry food. now. I know. Speaking I'm kind of hungry too now, damn it. Speaking of sushi rolls, I do consider the uh, Philly roll to be an abomination. You shouldn't combine cream cheese with fish. I agree. Okay. I mean, I'll eat it if you know. There's nothing else. But. So what are your thoughts on the Philly steak and cheese? Um, I'm not really a big cheesesteak fan. Um, my wife is very insistent that a cheesesteak is steak and cheese. Um, out in Pittsburgh, they put on peppers. And mm -hmm. she considers that not to be a Philly cheesesteak, oh, even though she runs that. into a lot of people that say they like a Philly cheesesteak with peppers. Uh, okay. And uh, I think she calls it a Weber, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate. But that is her opinion as a native of this area. I, you know, speaking of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's a cool town to visit for like a day and a half. Um, I'm going to say there's like not a ton of stuff to do there, but there are some really cool things to see in Pittsburgh. If you guys ever get a chance to go there. Uh, but the, uh, when I was in Philly, I had to get, you know, steak and cheese sandwich, of course. And I was like, oh, okay. So I've had it. That that was that was good. I wasn't like thoroughly impressed by it. Maybe I went to the wrong place. But um, I went to a bar next to the museum after we ran the Rocky Steps. So I'm assuming that was a good place to go. I don't know. Where, where do you normally go to get those things? Um, I I really haven't been to into Pittsburgh proper much. Um, no, 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 Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. I yeah. also tend to avoid Philly when I can. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the only times I've been in Philly in like the last uh, couple of years was to go to uh, when Nick uh, Riccata came out. Uh, okay. Otherwise, I the closest we tend to get is if we're going to the airport to fly out of. But uh, I yeah, I'm from the north or actually central east part of uh, or currently in central east or southeast part of Philly. I'm about half hour north of Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Thanks for the question, Harlan. When I'm in you Philly, I eat the town of Tasty Cakes. Did I just say something inappropriate? And no, Tasty me? Tasty Cake is a brand of stuff oh. like Hostess. They make oh. uh, they make cakes like that. They make uh, pies, um, um. Twinkies. Um, not Twinkies, but they do make a lot of stuff similar to that. Uh, they do donuts, Entenmann, or not not Entenmanns, um, like crimpets, butterscotch crimpets, um, which are kind of like. Uh, zigzag Twinkies with butterscotch icing on top. Um, they're good, but they're bad for my waistline, so I tend to stay away from you them. You can make water. This sounds really good. There's a gas station chain it's out there somewhere that we had to stop by on recommendation of like one of my wife's friends. So like, You have to go by, and you have to get this some sort of dessert at this gas station. I can't. Is this part of sheets? the whole? Is it sheets? Yes. What are those things? Um, there's, 
like the eastern end of the state has wawas and the western end of the state has sheets there's a little bit of overlap sheets. they're both kind of mm -hmm. like a gas station convenience store with a built-in mini deli um, yeah. so you can get like um uh subs and um but they have that uh, dessert that they're like famous for i can't i can't remember what it is it's like some sort of like a donut or something or like some sort of cake thing i don't know it wasn't very good but i had to get it you know i was told i had to get it okay um i he don't know what it is he spent 200 bucks on tasty cakes last time he was there yeah we have a friend of ours that lives in michigan that uh we uh get um uh tasty cakes for her we also and and ship them out we also do uh lebanon mm -hmm. bologna uh so i'm looking well, it up now because i pulled up apparently the there's no preservatives in it that's great okay all right they don't um, have a no. menu at sheets <laughs> i need a menu <laughs> what is this thing called and royal farms i don't know that um, it's another gas station store type oh. place. Uh, there's also um, Turkey Hill, which also is a brand of ice cream. Um, See, now I feel like I need to call my wife and ask her because I need to know the name of this thing. Sarah Green is in Michigan. Hi, Sarah. Hi, David Sarah. lives in Michigan. Do you have Michigan a swamp creature awesome. avatar? Awesome. Is that one of the, the swamp things? Oh. That it's an Megan alligator. Tug have been doing lately? Yeah, it looks like an alligator with sunglasses on. That's awesome. It's from a movie. It's um, Garbage Pail Kids. No, it... one of the best worst movies ever in the world. No, Monsters Inc. Isn't she on? Mon isn't she? No, I'm thinking of no. somebody else. No, think you're so. thinking. No. It kind of looks like her though, a little bit. Right? We'll you know what I mean, right? Well, just because yeah. she's wearing your type of glasses, Wendy, doesn't mean I know, she's right? The you know what? Somebody asked at the beginning of the stream if I was okay because I looked really tired, and I think it's because they're used to seeing me with my glasses on. My eyes, exactly my eyes. <laughs> could be, could be, could be. Also, Fine when lefty. I wear contacts, my eyes it makes my eyes feel heavy. It's really weird. Like my eyes feel tired, even if I'm not tired. Bye, Lefty. Bye, Lefty. So, so have you ever gone up to take a picture, uh, like outside the Dunder Mifflin uh, Scranton, PA headquarters? <laughs> Gwendolyn grew up in Michigan. Nope. Um, I tend to avoid Scranton as well. I don't blame you there. Is it the electric city? <laughs> Mostly coal powered. <laughs> well, I figure anything that uh, I can avoid that's Biden related is probably a good idea for me. All right, I got to call my wife and get the name of these things. I would yeah, call her. Mustang McCracken. I'm going to see Bucky's for the first time when I go to Dollywood. I'm excited. I've not been to a Bucky's. Can you believe that? I don't think that they have those in California. Probably not. Yeah. Right. Not a whole lot of giant truck stops in California, is there? Actually, I-5 has a lot of truck stops on it. We I do know. have, like, legit truck stops. I can but see not, that. like, Bucky's. They're, like, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Pilots, Flying J's, yes. et cetera. Yes, pilots. Yeah. The real question, I think, Torin, is uh, what kind of cheese goes on a Philly? Oh yeah. Uh it's supposed to be cheese whiz. Damn right. Damn what? right. Cheese You're, whiz. No. Nobody yep. knows this, but everybody needs to. It's true. Yep. The original Philly steak sandwich came with cheese whiz. <laughs> Wendy's yep. making all the egg faces. I just got real ugly real fast. It's good. I mean, cheese whiz goes on Ritz crackers, not on a sandwich. You I mean cheese whiz, uh, the stuff in the can? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They come in jars too. Really? Yeah. No. <laughs> I never. Well, I'm, I'm definitely speeding up. I'm just finishing up move 40. Well, we are here for you. Outstanding. Houston, 50 types of oh, I didn't know Bucky's is all the way out. Close. Yeah. All right, I, I need to do a sub assembly, but here's my current status. Oh, yeah. You've come nice. out. Great. It's getting there. It's moving along. Hell yes, yeah. it is. It took a bit to get the uh, to get the base going, and now you're going. Yep. And most of these bags have larger pieces and fewer in them, so I'm hoping that things will speed up. 
Jung has uh, a big BTS song recommendation for Torin. Okay. And Pen Man, Just One Day, Paradise Serendipity, Play for Your Wife. Okay. Cool. All right. Don't do it. It's a trick. So She's going to get, you're going to get, you're going to Google it once and then your entire feed on any social yeah. media or anything is going to be BTS. I always. You tricked me into that once. Them. I, I, as, as an IT person, I do know how to use uh, clean browsers and avoid nice. things related to my normal online account. So his computer and, does not get shut down. And also, um, I have, uh, have indeed, as an IT person, been in a room with one other person, discussed uh, something uh, that I have not ever looked up online and have not discussed in years, and within half an hour, it was showing up on my Facebook feed in the ads. Yep. Oh, I didn't know this either. Lebanon sausage is a cured smoked sausage. I I'm not yes, it is. It is absolutely sausage. delicious. I love sausage. I like. Look, I don't. I don't, you don't, you can save your fancy meat for me. You can keep your filet mignon. You can keep, I want hot dogs. I want sausage. I want bologna. I want the gross stuff, like the stuff that's not good for you. It it says Lebanon bologna, but it is, it does not taste like standard bologna. Okay. It is a very different flavor and it is very good. It's a smoked right. flavor. If you have a chance between regular Lebanon bologna and sweet yeah. Lebanon bologna, go with the regular. Okay. Never heard of it. Bye, Paula. Okay, this is what this thing is. It's called a gob or something like that. Is it sheets? Yeah, it's called gobs. G O B B S or Z rather. And okay. it's this like cream cookie thing. And we had to get it because that's what you get in Pennsylvania at sheets. There hmm. it is. That's what it is. Okay, oh. it's kind of like a moon pie. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like a moon pie. Oh, that, yeah. This, is that marshmallow is in there? Did you no, tell it's us like a, it? no, it's like a cream filling. It's not marshmallow. Oh, like what's inside of a ho ho or a ding dong yeah. or something? Yeah, similar, but they have different flavors, all kinds of flavors. But that's what we had that. to have. I'd take it. No preservatives, I guess. How does Le Lefty said he spent two hundred dollars on those things? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No preservatives it's like a, in it. It's like a whole thing. Yeah, they're expensive. They're not cheap. Which, oh, so maybe he didn't get as money as we're thinking. But Hall and Eric, two hundred dollars worth of ho hos would be. You would have well, to. He have said. He said that it lasted him like three months or something. He said, right? Oh, he did. No, I, they're, I mean, they're not okay. So they're like four dollars each, right? I'll be right and back. We got those and a couple of coffees, and we're like twenty bucks. What is this? Um, but we got some coffee along with it. I'm gonna mute you just in case he's gonna like take a pee or something. Um, but uh, two hundred dollars is a lot to spend on these things. Yeah, that's what they are. That's not the brand that he was talking about, though, is it? No, that's the one I don't your think wife so. wants you to get. Yeah, this is no, this is the one that my wife's friend said that we had. To yeah. Get. Oh, I love coconut and bronze, Laura. Um, lamingtons. Try lamingtons hey, if you like. Take coconut. care, Kay Marshall. She's taken off. She said very. Have good. a good night. Thanks for being here, y'all. Good night, dear. We appreciate y'all. I almost I only eat Amish made whoopie pies. I'm not okay. That's a thing. That's not like a euphemism or a joke. It sounds like a euphemism. I'll tell I you. I don't that. know. I was reading that. I was like, mm, okay. I mean, they probably do make them. Hey, you do you, Ellie. You do you. Um, Jung had some questions for Torrance. I'll wait till he gets back. She she was very she wanted to make sure he knew that her the song recommendations were curated just for him. So <laughs> it um sponge cake. That cookie, this thing, by the way, is like a sponge cake. It's not like a cookie. Um it's just it was like it just threw me off. It had a weird texture. It was it's like a cake, not a cookie. Um, yeah, Mustang. This isn't Baker's Channel. We don't get all cream pie here, but I mean, you know. <laughs> we are tonight, by God. Yeah, you know it. I Everybody's getting a cream pie. pie, and you get a cream pie, and you get a. Cream pie. <laughs> whoopie pies are delicious. I don't know what a whoopie pie is. Oh, look at this! Oh, what do we got? What do we have here? Oh, dang, he's got I'm overdue to send the. Uh, um... Oh. Oh, there we go. Well, that okay. looks like bologna to me. Okay. It looks like salami. It looks like salami. Oh, yeah. salami, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, my mouth. Right, what are these? Tasty mm -hmm. cakes? 
There you go. Oh huh. my rock. Okay, see, now I gotta oh. go get some food. Butterscotch. No, I'm hungry. Stop. That looks to die nice. for. Butterscotch icing. This mm. is a man who likes his sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these, these are for uh, these are for our friend in Michigan. We just have to send it. it out. And I just haven't gotten good. around to preparing the, uh, the ice. I cash. haven't given you my address yet. So <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, my other friend in Michigan. <laughs> um, but yeah, she um, uh, she we we send that as care packages because we bring them out with us when we come because it's like an Eastern Pennsylvania thing. She can kind of occasionally get it in Western Pennsylvania, but not very often. And so we have that ready to ship out. And I figured this would be a great time to grab it and show you what I was talking Outstanding. about. Outstanding. Nice. And you are safe on the audio because my microphone is next to my camera. And uh, okay. uh, the, the earpiece I've got is only receiving. It doesn't pick up anything. Oh, smart. <laughs> well, just, just in case, you know. You never yeah. Know. It's, it's better was safe it, than sorry. <laughs> who was it that went to the bathroom with the mic on? Bronco I, uh, did it once. Was it Bronca? That's what I, I thought. I know Bronca's done it once. I know that. Yeah. That was funny. Okay, so Torrin. I get nervous, like, and I leave my microphone. Gabe does. Today. One time, I one time I left without muting or whatever, and he's like, "I'm going to turn that off in case you have to go to the bathroom." And I'm like, "I'm a girl. We don't go to the bathroom." <laughs> Junk forever says Torrin. You know, and I'm going to say it incorrectly. And pen up and pen man. That's and Japanese. Man. Okay. So and then she says. Hey, these song recommendations were thought out and specific to Torin after reading and talk so far. <laughs> okay, thank you. So thoughtful, John. Good you. job, John. We love Good you. Good job, baby. You got it. You got it. When you got to go, you got to go, Justin says. It's like a human database for BTS. Yeah, you can be it like, that did that. You could say three words and she'll be like, oh, there's this song, this song, this song. Mm -hmm. Junk could write her own. If she wasn't so afraid of musicals, she could write her own BTS musical. She does she'd, not like musicals. I, she'd go watch that musical for sure. I guarantee it. Right? Uh, the uh, okay. So, so your belts. Uh, I keep because I keep forgetting the name. Hang on. Uh, you can just say braids. Your braids. All right, your braids. There we go. Uh, you say that those take. You said sixty hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's from mm -hmm. like pulling it from individual threads to finishing it off. So it's about 40 hours of actual on the, on the frame braiding. Now, do you have to stretch it afterwards or when you're done braiding it, is it done? Is it ready to go? It's done. The, the weights are uh, like a hundred grams each and there's one per th uh, thread. So I've got like probably about, you know, um, like 50, 10 to 15 pounds of overall weights on the frame holding it under tension all the time I'm braiding it. Uh, and I beat the uh, the threads in, so it's it's a nice firm uh, nice firm uh, texture. And when I release it, I you know sew the end up so it doesn't unravel, and like wrap thread around it to give it a nice finish. And it's it's good to go from there. It'll even out a little bit over time, but uh, I try and get the tension decent uh, ahead of time. Okay, very cool. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay, sure. Now the one you're currently working on is that's an original design or is that something you yep. came up with? It, it's it's an original design. I mean, I'm using it. The 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 layers are a one one twill pattern, which basically means they're over under over under uh, per thread, uh, as opposed to like a two two where it goes over two and then under two um, in the weave. But um, that pattern is you know for all pickup braids. Uh, is the technique is called pickup braiding uh that gives you the two colors and the interchange gives you your pattern uh but yeah i did the design for how it would go and the software i use for it plat uh, plots out the moves for me if i didn't have the software what i'd have to do is i'd have to look at a chart and the line of each individual the, on the v and uh you know where each color is different and then look up a essentially a library to, for that specific move and then write that down in a row and it's tedious but oh, not Jesus. overly complex overly complex so the software doing it is great there's a lady in france that came up with this particular one and uh thank uh, god Claire for her Cass huh? yeah 
uh, her, her business is artisan art and the other company that has one that's not easily used online, like a web thing, um, is called uh, uh, Taka Draft, and you can do that as like a standalone, and that's through the Braders Hand Company uh, in uh, Washington. Cool. That's uh, that software. So it's specifically for the type of braiding that you do. Yep. Okay. And she's also done similar ones for uh, other uh, other similar types of braiding, and there's a bunch of people that have done it for the round disc style. Uh, for people, what's the round disc style? Like, it's, called uh, you make like a... it's called a Marodai. Uh, if you uh, look through my channel and search for Marodai, I have a, like probably three or four different braids that are Marodai braids, and they're awesome. They show you how to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I ha if you look through my playlist, there's a couple of the earlier playlists are that type. And that's right. just a different loom setup, for lack of a better yeah. Name. Um, I don't really have a way to easily drag it onto camera, but I've got a couple uh, as well of those style that I use, and they're usually like a a wood a wood disc uh, about twelve inches across with a hole in the center, and they also use the weights and a counterweight to uh, hold stuff under tension. Yeah, that thing. Let's see. He's pulling it up. Okay. Yep, that's a Marodai. Okay, so this is and the same style of, of braid, or it's is this the same, completely it's the, different? It's the same general art form. It's just a different type of stand, but it's still, uh, you know, you're braiding uh, where you're you're warping your weft or trading places. You're using the weights to hold it, and they tend to run from. You can do it as few as four, but that's just a simple braid. Uh, a lot of people learn with eight or 16, but you can go up to about um, 32, some up to about 40, uh, but you really need a, a little wider disc than that to do them easily. But uh, That just looks so random. Are you, are you, I'm assuming, I don't have the volume up. I'm assuming you're counting something. Um, I'm not, sometimes I count, but that's more of a, uh, uh, an easier to understand pattern. So I just have to kind of repeat it. It's usually... Uh, kind of like a, a progression as you're going through it. Uh, this one is an odd numbered uh, number of threads. So it's, I'm doing like over and cross and over and cross and around is the and again, mnemonic it's kind I of use for here is to get the, uh... it's very, it's, it's still just so meditative as well to watch. Abrading. Yep. The um, planking of the I, weights does it for me. Actually, yeah, I, yeah, but it, it's, I own it's, the the molds for those weights, and I get a run of uh, done injection molding every so often. Really? Um, and uh, um, uh, sorry, I get my brain to kick start here. Um, and the funny thing is, is when I I bought the molds from somebody else, and when I started trying to sell them, like you know, fifteen years ago. I had a bunch of pushback people telling me that, oh no, the sound of the plastic compared to the sound of the wood clacking is just so modern and clashing. And it's like, I, it, it kind of runs to the back of my head every time I hear people say, that sounds really nice when you're doing that. That's funny. So, but um, yeah, it is, it is a really meditative art. Before I started doing the streaming, I would do this and like, you know, listen to an audio book or listen to the radio. Uh, and when I'm camping, it's at like a medieval event. I can like sit by the fire and do this and listen to the conversation and provide some ambiance for the background. Like I'm going really to nice. raise the bag up again. How's, uh, how's that going like with the Lego build? Through. The sitting uh, back and having a conversation. <laughs> sorry, I get back to this. No, I was, no, you're fine. I was just wondering. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm doing most, a uh, sub substructure. Oh, nice. nice! Most people find it difficult to uh, build Lego and uh, uh, and chit chat at the same time. I find it easier and easier each time I I do it, but uh, it's still tedious. Yep, um, I've been uh, finding that uh, doing the the streaming with the braids as I go along gets easier over time. So I think I just need to keep practicing and. That's also one of the reasons why I figured it might be a good idea to uh, start trying to, you know, uh, have people on as guests or guests on other streams is kind of build up that uh, 
mental skill set of being able to do that. I like it, man. Um, Don't forget Daniel. the burners. Uh, yeah, burners. Burners is very Michigan. Burners is, is awesome, by the way. What the hell is burners? It's, it's it's a ginger ale, and if you have an upset tummy, uh, you take your ginger ale and uh, you know you drink your burners. It's very okay. good. Okay. It was invented by a dentist. If I remember the story right, during World War One, he like put a bunch of stuff in a barrel and then went away uh, to war and came back, and Burners was created. Oh yikes! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're setting me up for failure right now. Aren't you? <laughs> all right. Oh. So since we have some time, I'm going to start on this project, which I don't feel is any sort of cultural appropriation at all. This is my no, Lego build. This good. is another Lego build from the '90s. That set uh, looks awesome. Yeah, this set is very cool. It's very cool. I Can found I... the TP. Here we go. So I got the TP. <gasps> this is back oh! when Lego actually had material That's so cool. that they would give you. So um, I have the TP cloth, and so I'm going to make this. Some of the flags okay. on my big castle back there are cloth. Some really? Flag, yeah, some of the flags up top. All right, I got to find the base. I got to start with that. Cultural appropriation Lego. No, cultural cultural celebration Lego. That's what it is. Hi, Jennifer. I guess you missed Pop Hi, Jen. Watching the braiding. Love doing that. Oh, shit. Um, for Lego looking. My brain was ready for Lego looking. Yeah. So we're, we're still building Lego, but that braiding is amazing. And you guys got to all go check it out. Um, tour and site and watch his live streams. It's like hypnotizing and meditative. It's very nice and relaxing. It really is. It really, really is. First, 1860. Oh, maybe it was a civil war then. I knew it was a war. He like disappeared for a war and came back. Horrible. Uh, there's a four ninety nine super super chat from Daniel Patrick. FYI, Mike Redbar just aired a report on you with misconduct allegations. Showed sick DM screenshots. Hope it's just a hit piece. Please address ASAP. I have no idea who Mike Redbar is. I promise you, there's no yeah. DM screenshots that are going to get me in any kind of trouble. And uh, thanks for the five bucks. What, so, what sort of misconduct did you get into, uh, well, There's probably some kind of misconduct allegation out there somewhere, I'm sure. I saw that. Corn, what are you like, up to? <laughs> you ain't catching There's me slipping. of his grading being too perfect. None of y'all are catching me slipping, I promise you. Yeah, we don't know. Um, was that the question, Ellie? Ellie is reminding me that there were some questions while I was gone that got missed. Let me make sure I, I got them all. Sorry, kids. My my beautiful mommy is visiting, and I never get to see her. And so, so I had to go say hi. She, she refuses to hang out with her mother and instead uh, builds Lego. I'd much, I'd much rather build Lego. Or not build, <laughs> but watch. Just kidding, Mom. You're just kidding. I love you. All right, is this enough pieces? You know you felt bad about that one as soon as the words came out of your mouth. Not so bad. I'm just kidding. Um, somebody keeps saying, oh, okay, we already talked about that. Address the red bar allegations. Again, Daniel, we don't know who that is. I don't know who but, red bar is. But thank you for the super chat. All super chats are welcome. We, we appreciate them. We appreciate yeah. everybody in chat. Sure do. Um, all least. right, so I don't have a light color. I only have dark brown. So I'm going to have to see if this um, this original piece yeah. is supposed to be like... It looks like it's tan. the same size. It is the same size, but it's supposed to be like a tan color. So oh, I'm going to see if I can yeah. find it in another bin. All right. We'll, go we'll just on. shut down the stream and wait right? for you. David. We'll wait for you, Dave. Jeez, exactly. Louise. No worries. Rude much? Torn streams yeah. are so soothing. Hell yeah. Thank you very what much. AS ASMR people are saying. I, I still joke occasionally about uh, I'm, I'm not going to be licking a microphone honest. I can't oh, okay. Get into Thank the you, ASMR Scott. Stuff, we don't know who that I mean. Oh, shit. Daniel, we have a really super chill and awesome chat in here, and you are welcome to join us. We do not censor people. 
but it would be really cool if um, we could keep things at a, you know, lovely level that we like to have around here. But thank you. Good night, Ben. Yeah, no, Sweet dreams. Ben Fitzler. Good night, buddy. Ben's I will, the David uh, look alike. Is he? Yeah. Does he look like me? Yeah. I showed you guys oh. the photo. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. Is that your uh, your friend? Yes, he's my friend. We've gone on like four days. Oh, he's in the yeah. chat. Well, hello, sir. I know, right? He oh. just I had to come back to that real quick. You got to come back now, Ben. Yeah, definitely. Running a little too fast and had okay, to. Okay, Stray and Ellie, however you guys want to handle that, we can. I got it. I took care of it. All right. Thanks, babe. Yep. Damn it, Bell. Ellie says, damn it, Bell. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just let him sit and time out for 24 hours. Okay. Thank you. That's what we'll do there. It says 86,000 seconds. It's roughly 20. We have hours, no idea, John. Honestly, hi, Wendy Marina with the dollar 99 super chat. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you, you so Wendy. Much. I'm okay. trying to think of where this piece would be. Three pieces left over from this bag, setting them to the side. There you know, are always, always a few odds and end pieces left. Always, yeah. yeah. Every time. So, this is the sub assembly I just finished. Nice. Very See, cool. he's, he's, he's such an engineer. This is the sub-assembly. This is right. the base. We have <laughs> another sub-assembly coming up. Remember what I do for a day job. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, it's oh, funny. so I, cool. You oh, know what? So it's funny cool. that you're an engineer. Wait, what? Because of all the kid was the first Lego lead. Oh, that's really that's cool. Cool. That's awesome. Oh, that's no, super that's cool. cool. Like a STEM kind of deal. Oh. Whoops. Hey, if y'all have questions, can you resubmit them, please? I'm sorry if I missed them. It helps if you put a question mark. Oh, okay. Who is your... Oh! Who is date your date four guy in here? His name is Ben. And I think he left already, you guys. Damn it, Ben. Let me text him and see if he can come back. <sighs> oh, Ellie Fent has a question that I asked earlier, but it would be great for you to repeat uh, it because there weren't as many people in here earlier. But uh, how did you get into braiding? Um, a friend of mine who I knew online through the medieval stuff I was in, but had not met in person at an event that I showed up at that she was at, she came over and completely out of the blue. And I knew nothing about this before handed me a disc cut out from the side of a 12 pack of Coca-Cola, um, and, uh, uh, some DMC braiding floss, or DMC embroidery floss. And handed it to me and said, here, let me teach you this. I think you'll enjoy it. And I kind of took off from there as an obsession and been going with it ever since. It's a it's a really neat um, skill or talent or craft or whatever you want to call it. It's really... Yes, all of those things. <laughs> I'm a thesaurus and today. <laughs> Elephant asks, Torn, what thought you started on braiding and making things? I just asked that. that I, just asked. I asked it for, I saw the question and then I asked. Sorry, it. I'm a jerk. Did you ask the break? Did you ask the knitting question too? Oh, not knitting. Uh, have you ever tried looking at crochet or knitting diagrams? No, I have not. Uh, not that I'm aware of. And I just realized I'm, this is not fitting together the way it's supposed to. So I, give me a second here to Good figure question. out what's going on. But that was my uh, yeah. thing with that big build. Um, I got like halfway through like a major component and I realized I screwed up like 30 moves prior. Well, um, got to fortunately I can flip back into okay. I think I see what happened here. Um, ah, yep, yep. I had a minor screw up. Um, oh. I love how all my mods are like jumping, chopping at the bit, ready to go. Yeah, this this line here and over here is offset. It should be this should be over one, and then this down one. So it's not a major problem. I just yeah, need to that's fix a it real quick. Relatively easy fix. Yeah, you got this, Torin. You got this, buddy. You got this. All right, I found my base piece. Oh, good. Nice. Now I got the base piece and the TP fabric. We're going to go from there. See what else I can find. Make it happen, Captain. 
And if you guys want to know what I'm like sifting through, like, like there's bins. In, <laughs> this is what I'm sifting through to find all of my pieces. If so, your mom is watching this, she just had a flashback and a panic attack all at the same time. She's like, oh my God, they're everywhere. <laughs> I know. At least they're like, as I had to put a tablecloth down. Oh, cool. to oh nice. Fixed it. So, I think Gwendolyn asked, I think Gwendolyn answered one of the questions. Let me go back to the question. It was, I really like this question. How easy is it to cover up mistakes? You have to, it, it, they don't really cover up. There's some minor mistakes you can make that are not that big and don't mess up your overall pattern. And you can ignore those if they're very, very tiny, but anything major, you got to go back and redo it. Otherwise it looks horrible. And only, only because it's like an obvious pattern. If it's yeah. something where it was like kind of just geometric or whatever that may not be visible, uh, I might do that. But yeah, most of the time I'll unbraid and I try and look at them. Uh, yeah, braided uh, friendship bracelets. Um, those are from the Hemo. Yeah. I made a lot of those for my friends. Bahala's going to get one. Right. I just finished move 55. So I am. Okay, here's Ben. Ben's back. He hey, said hi, Ben. Hello. How you doing, buddy? We heard a lot about <laughs> you in the last couple of minutes. You behave I told yourself, them sir. that we've been on some dates, Ben. You behave yourself. You guys, see, he's very Wendy got <laughs> all excited. He cut off Corey, and he was telling you what movie was that. We what? What did we do wrong? Worst he interviewers ever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Corey. My bad, buddy. My bad. <laughs> ben so, had Torrin, to be you were saying. He had to be addressed. To <laughs> he's muted right now. No. He guys, uh, he's David like, fine. Muted. Just turn it David off. My mic. Muted him. <laughs> you guys don't want me to talk. That's fine. I got you, jerks. I'm just trying to be nice to Valhalla and not have too much rattling in the background. I see. Uh, ben, make sure you treat her worry. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, oh, sir. Thank we you. love our Wendy. And I know where to hide the Strings bodies. 15. I remember making those. We made those a lot. That was a huge thing to make. Those friendship you take, Yeah, you take like a, a, a safety pin and you like safety pin the ends on, on your knee, like in your jeans. And then you could pull it down and then you could do all the braiding we right just, there. We just used a piece of tape. I just taped it to the desk. I just safety. Well, you can get more leverage if you safety pinned it to your <laughs> to your blue jeans. Are we arguing about the the, the yes. proper way to create friendship bracelets? <laughs> yes, exactly. You guys are so G H E Y. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Hundred percent. As as gay as it gets. Mm -hmm. Tape. We're gonna no. have a bracelet off in uh, in, in the seat. Well, I grew up poor, Ellie. That's not a that's yeah, not a surprise yeah. to anybody. <laughs> Hi, Sounds Mimsy. Ghetto. Yeah, I think. Mimsy's here. Hi, Party Mimsy. started. Yay! Stray still makes them. Stray, why haven't I received one? Well, you're clearly yeah, not a friend. I want one. Apparently, you're not close enough to the inner circle to get a friendship bracelet, Dave. I do. I thought I was special to you, Stray. So. Poor Ben. He's like, look, I wanted to go to bed. You all asked me to come back and you don't talk. <laughs> we, all right, so we just Boob pick on for a minute. And then <laughs> Boobar is asking, One what second. is the largest piece that you have made, Torrin? Um, I think I made about 11 feet of a laurel leaf pattern in red and black silk for a friend of mine. Uh, she was receiving a, a high award in the SCA. Uh, called the Order of the Laurel, and I did that out of silk. I uh, did it kind of in plain sight, but didn't let it know, let her know it was for her because it was before she got the award, and uh, that was a really nice one to do. That took me about um, half an hour per inch to make that braid, and like I said, it was about eleven feet long. Well, what um, are you able to like? How wide can you make it? It depends on how many uh, strands I have and how thick the fibers are. The fibers kind of make everything grow up uniformly, but if I use more, uh, 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 the increase the, the, the strand count, uh, that'll make it wider. Um, 
and a combination of two can be pretty impressive. Uh, I know a guy that uh, uses his Takadai to braid scarves using like knitting yarn. Um, and I have seen patterns that use up to 288 Tama. Um, and I, most I've done so far has been about 100 uh, Tama because the, the stand I've got needs to be modified to hold more if I do more than that. And what does that make it? A wider braid? Yeah. Uh, because the more you do, the wider it is. Right. You can kind of stack it high. You can stack it higher uh, and do like three and four layer braids, but then you have to add extra rails on the side. Uh, well, hang on. There was a chat about. Hang on, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, you can send me an email, and I will get you the address to send them to. Yeah. And then, if you want to get one to Valhalla, you've got to you've got to hire this this uh donkey farmer just... he gets on and rides it up the hills in tennessee but you can send me a couple of them and i'll get it to him in may maybe the there whitakers can take it and deliver it to him the whitakers and speaking of that if the person who was here last week with mm -hmm. rob that sent me the email is listening now i apologize i was a little distracted i'm going to reply to your email right now oh i can't believe i did that what did you <sighs> Letting everybody Torn, down, Dave. Torn, do you play flat braids or mostly just round? Um, I I do flat braids. Um, yeah, I can grab this. The circle thing is going to produce the round braids, right? Whereas your loom or what I can't remember what it's called, but the the stand that you generally use when you stream that'll create a flat braid. This is this is the round one here, and it's producing a flat braid. Oh, really? Okay. This is so cool. Oh. That's awesome. I like that. Wow. And these awesome. are the individual weights. They're made out of injection molded acrylic. Acrylic? I went to ask I was that earlier when we talking about it. I was like, those must be made out of injected molded <laughs> Very smooth. Like a dolphin. <laughs> Oh, expert. Is he back? Oh, back in. He does. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Dave wants a tie to wear to court. <laughs> I do. Um, I haven't really considered doing anything that wide as of yet, but I have considered maybe trying to do a wide enough one to make a guitar strap. David, can you tell everyone your email or post it, please? Oh, it's uh, Michigan Law Now. I'll put it uh, at Gmail. I'll put it in the chat. It's Jennifer, you're the um, best. John, are you in my brain? Get out of my brain tonight. Are you? Can you braid hair, Torin? This is an honest question. I have done hair braiding. I'm not that great at it. Plus, I like to joke that uh, people really don't want to stick their uh, hair up through the the wood <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. I love it. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, that's pretty All right, good. There we go. I put it in the chat. Good night, Wendy. Good night, Wendy. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming back. We missed you, girl. Come back again. Southeast Tennessee transplant, huh? <laughs> Below ties. I can I, you know what? Do. Okay. I bet my Dave grandfather. Do. My grandfather would polish stones in. I have so many bolo ties. I'm going to wear a bolo tie on stream for you guys one day. You should. I could probably relatively easy make a bolo tie with a uh, round mm -hmm. braid on a Mara die. It's much faster to make them on a Mara die. Yes. Is that like the same sort of um, idea behind like the sock weaving machine or is it completely different? And am I just saying because it's a circle, it's the same? The sock they, weaving machine? They are a circle Please. thing. And my understanding is that's more of a knitting uh procedure than a braiding okay yeah you never seen the sock knitting machine maybe it maybe. like it, it well you know socks are made in a circle so that they can slip on your legs yeah, yeah it's, generally it's, it's like braids them in a circle it's really cool that no, is kind I of I think can, I've half Irish says can torn braid Valhalla's beard. My beard? That would be a great stream. We don't want the beard braided, y'all. We don't want the beard yeah, braided. The rest of it's braided. Why not the beard? 
Mrs. Oh, it's dude. not braided. Oh, he's saying goodnight to Wendy. It has been braided before, though. Does Mrs. Valhalla lay in bed at night and braid her beard? Mrs. Valhalla has braided my dreads before. I've done like two plates down mm -hmm. the side. Nice. I've done that. Mrs. Valhalla's mom has even done that for me once. Oh, Fubar says, Torin, I have made braids. You should make dog collars, leads to sell. That'd be pretty good. Cool. Those would be some very expensive dog yeah, leads. Yeah, they would. Yeah. But, but you know, there's a market for that, especially Wendy'd in buy my it. state. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, buy it. I'd buy it. <laughs> oh, I'd buy dog collars. Yeah, yeah, that would easily sell Thanks, well. Mimsy. Go to some farmer's markets and people, rich white women would be buying that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Or the gay community, I would imagine. There's a gourmet oh, dog food rich white shop. Women, rich Mexicans, rich gays, they're all... They're in, the, all in the town where my office is, uh, in Plymouth, uh, which is right next door to Northville, which is where Hogue Law is. But um, so there's a gourmet dog food, dog treat, all natural, uh, organic ingredients. They Actually, it's a bakery. It's a dog bakery. They bake everything there. And one treat is like $15. I'm not spending $15 on one treat for my dog. Nah. Ooh, that it's been in business for years, though, so it's doing it's doing good. I'm not um, hating, but what's everybody making? It. We've had some people come in. We had the thank you winning reality raiders came in. Hey, winning. Hey, Angel winning. Buddy. I am making this cultural celebration Lego from the 1990s. Cultural uh, celebration for, Lego. Yes, that's what it is. I, oh, Jesus. Well, sorry guys, here you go. There we go. I built this little guy, Cute. little watering can with some flowers and butterflies on it. Cute little spring deal there. Mrs. Valhalla gets that one. And now I'm building roses. Nice. Okay, Beautiful. Roses. Beautiful. How many frogs per rose? No frogs so far. I've got four roses done. I'm working on the next four. And our I'm, special guest star, Torin. I'm doing a Japanese medieval castle, and this is how far I've come on it. Gorgeous. Awesome. Gorgeous. So, if Torin, you have a one. lot. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to actually ask our guest a question. Yeah, that's a no, good you, idea. That's uh, why I said you should go ahead. That's <laughs> why I stopped talking. <laughs> you, you, you have a lot of braiding stuff on your channel. What is yeah. sort of like your plan for the future of the channel? Is it more braiding stuff or are you going to branch out? Um, what, are you, what are you thinking about? I, I'm i hoping once I get my garage set up a bit more, I'm also going to be doing shop streams where I'm making braiding equipment, I'm doing 3D printing, and I'm doing CNC machining on it as well. Okay. Uh, I want it to be kind of like an educational art channel surrounding braiding, braiding equipment, and other type of stuff. Uh, my philosophy, my theory here is is that I'm 55. I'm probably about less than around 10 years away from retirement, and unfortunately, I have not been all that great with uh, income over the course of my life. So I'd like to have maybe a, a retirement income that I could transition into with like making stuff and with hopefully a decent success on the channel where I might get a little bit of retirement income that way in addition to everything That's else. Awesome. I bet you. I bet you're going to do well. Yeah, who who hasn't been um, uh, completely uh, frugal with their money, right? Or I, I'm this is so originally YouTube was uh, the idea of retirement for me, but I have a better idea now since uh, YouTube seems to be a uh, pain in my ass. A but uh, fickle beast. <laughs> yes. As Megan says, it YouTube is asshole. YouTube is asshole. YouTube is my friend. YouTube is nothing wrong. <laughs> See, <laughs> the problem is I stopped saying that. Like That's like three months point. ago, I stopped saying that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, we have we have seven cats. Well, uh, yes, most, cats. You, yes, I, than I do. We've we've had the crazy cat lady starter kit. We had a feral <laughs> cat um, in our in our neighborhood backyard had uh kittens and so we caught them and uh either kept them as pets uh or were able to rehome them with other people but she had four litters of kittens a total of 19 in about two years until we were finally able to get her trapped and fixed okay. and Yikes. we had to set up 
a remote controlled car to trigger the trap because she would go into have a heart trap, eat the food and get back out. And even when I like kind of sprung up behind around the corner to like startle her to trip the trap, she got out and didn't do it. So we were able to finally get her fixed. And uh, she, I think she probably passed away this last year because we don't see her coming around anymore, but we would like, you know, uh, have food for her. She'd keep the squirrel population down and she looked to be a lot better healthier after that was done um, nice oh i'm sure i love the crazy cat lady starter kit reference. yeah i love that it's awesome so. that's we how i ended up with uh, gwendolyn says so many cats as well we got one barn cat brought it home by the time we could get it fixed she had a litter of kittens I'm like oh okay that's awesome so now we have six I am on step four so nice. far of my, in my town, celebration. We, oh, our animal control, our animal shelter will, if you report like you see feral cats somewhere, they'll come and, and, and trap them and fix them and then put them back where they were. And, they'll, and then if they have Well, babies, let's hope they were feral. Not like <laughs> well, if not, somebody cat. got a free snake spay or neuter of their cat. Um, They're award-winning, prize-winning yeah, cat that went exactly. for six hundred dollars for a knockup. Purebred Himalayan breeder cat. Well, and then they take if they have Welcome to kitten, California. they'll take those and adopt those out. <laughs> yeah, I have all of my cats, or my current two cats, came from uh, random strays that got knocked up, and uh, that's where I got my cat from. Justin, what kind of cat do you have? He said she's a rare breed. wasn't cheap. Well, hope it, hopefully no one accidentally neuters your cat. No kidding. Or bays her since it sounds like a girl. I'd be mad. Oops, uh, one piece, and I don't want to dump this bag up, but then I got to put it all back in. And I just Maybe finished move 61. Car. What was that torn? Sorry, I cut you off. One of 200 and what? 99. Woohoo! 300, 300. 69, 60, what? Oh my God. 61. 61 of 300 moves. <laughs> of 299, sir. Yeah, I was rounding up to make it easier for myself. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Dev. Heel versus baby a face. A I don't know what that means. Uh, as a kid. Okay, I know who As is, but uh, I don't know what that is. Heels versus um, he's he's, he's on Friday Night Tights. He's yeah. a streamer out of uh, England. Uh, nice. He talks about like um, uh, modern media, gaming, uh, movies, and science fiction, Doctor Who stuff like that. He's on a lot, uh, also with um, Nerdrotic. Uh, he uh, one of the shows that he does is the Real BBC. Um, the real BBC? Yeah. Because the BBC is just fake propaganda. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh. It's almost as bad as CNN. Mm -hmm. oh, well, Hala, okay. How far are you from Win Winchester, Kentucky? No idea. I have no know. idea where Winchester, Kentucky is. Well, you got to uh, Google so it, sir. I think I'm about an hour away from Kentucky's border, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not sure where. Oh, he has Batwoman stuff. Mustin McCracken says. Batwoman? Mm hmm. Oh, yes. He reviewed the Batwoman TV show um, and really uh, highlighted the dumpster fire that was. They're all. Didn't they cancel it now. before it even started? Um, no, they they actually they actually um, uh, ran the show oh, nice. and it had like absolutely terrible ratings to begin with and just went downhill from there. I like that policy, Fubar. I'm just saying. Seems consistent with anything that's DC related. It's just a disaster, right? The only thing that was halfway decent was the Snyder Cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, that's the thing is with having to sit through this, this is old school Lego build. You got to like count the pieces. You got to make sure it fits. And you still have to match up like which one is different. Like what's different between this image and this image. 
this image and this image. What's different? Don't miss it because it'll screw up your build 20 moves from now. Bahala, did you see half Irish's comment to you? I don't know what that means. I did see that. I did see that Chrissy Mayer had her baby. Um, Woohoo! Congratulations, Chrissy, and uh, congratulations, husband, man. I don't, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I was hoping that she was gonna get stuck until May, being pregnant that long. But I was, I it didn't work. I was hoping she was gonna have to carry it for another two weeks or so. But congratulations, Chrissy. Good job. Wait, 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 wait to be. Such way a to thing? Be. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping that she was gonna be pregnant for like an astronomical long time, like ten and a half months or something ridiculous. That's what I was hoping for. You know, you know, generally, it's not even nine months. Yeah. Well, people think you're it's pregnant 10. for nine months. It's actually ten. It's, it's actually 10. yeah. It's yeah. 10. The first week or so, they can't really tell. So they're just like, eh, it's not like that. I have not pre-sorted any of these pieces. This is one hundred percent of me fumbling around trying to find the pieces for this build. I don't even know if I have them all, but so far. So good. Rare Aussie. Oh, that's cool, David. Rare Aussie's got a really cool. I've been a custom fishing rod builder for over 40 years. If you see some of the custom but wraps, it is very similar to braids. It's taken me up to 36 hours just to do a name with a single strand of cotton. That's really cool. I can believe that. That's crazy. The uh, lady um, who kind of uh created the western uh resurgence for kumihimo in like the 80s is named makito tada she is a professor at the kyoto institute of technology and um she designed a carbon fiber braiding machine using kumihimo techniques and they make structural uh, carbon fiber braids with it for like golf clubs and you can kind of like modularly put it together to come up with if you want like square L, H, different types of uh, shapes like that. That's cool. I've seen some of that carbon fiber stuff in the sailing industry um, where they're doing a lot of braiding. And there's a particular type of synthetic um, carbon. It's not carbon fiber. There's a synthetic uh, uh, line that you use on the boat that's braided really weird. And I'm wondering if it's the same sort of type of braid because once it's braided, you don't need to stretch it at all. It's already stretched. And that's the okay. beauty of it, especially using sailing line, is that the braiding process stretches it to the point. And that's I was wondering if it was something similar to this. Because you said that you stretch it as you go. You don't need to stretch it when you're done. Yeah. Um, do not know, but that would be interesting to look into. Um, I'm not sure what Pam's talking about, Val, but she's wondering. There's a lady that has some baby goats she may need to get rid of. Oh. Well, is the collector of random goats. You're the second person in literally 24 hours, I think, that's asked me about a, about taking a goat now. Um, and the, the unfortunate reality is that I am a goat farm, right? So it's I might be able to take goats, but it would have to be kind of the right goat. And most of the time, if I if I'm gonna like rescue a goat, it's just gonna get sold right away. Right. That's what it, that's the the realistic part of being a goat farmer. Yeah, they're um, not going to be coming. They're not going to be able to come to your farm and visit. Well, it's not goat. a sanctuary; no, it's no, a farm, right. right? Exactly. It's not. They're, they're livestock, not pets. Exactly. So it, it's got to be useful, and it's got to you know yeah. fit my needs as well. David, do you have some of that kind of the one from the boat that you could hold up? No, I don't. The sailing rope. It's super expensive. Um, and I'm going to be getting some, but I don't have any right now. I've been just researching different lines for the boat, and that one came up. And I can't remember the name of it, the brand name off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to send uh, Torin a link as soon as I do figure it out. Okay. Speaking of which, um, I am going to, after the stream's done, I'll go through and I'm going to uh, try and read through the chat log just to, so I can catch up with everything. I'm also going to kind of make a, I'll make a community post where people who 
had questions that my, I didn't see or didn't answer or want more detail, they can ask them there and I'll do my best to. You are them so as... sweet. Thank you for doing Please that. Please don't do that because you're going to set an expectation that we're not going to be able to meet. <laughs> hey, there's lautism and there's braidism. I'm a braid. I love it. I'm on your side, Corin. You do. I love Although, it. Although, I mean, and by the way, chat, if I've missed a question, please repost it. I mean, we, we don't get offended. I mean, post it yeah. until you get your question answered. It's all good here. We appreciate you asking. Questions. I would say uh, we'll go through the super chats at the end of the stream, but I'm not getting any right now. That's because you can't. I know. Because you're not Ooh. monetized yet. Everyone Corey. needs to go over to my channel and give me some watch hours. I've got subs. Well, actually, Absolutely. no, I need more subs, too. You've got um, enough to get super chats, though. You've got 500 already, right? No, not not on this channel. Not, not on, on this Lego one. Channel. Oh, you you need uh, was it a thousand watch hours before you can get it at the the uh, super uh, chats? Yeah, because, I need three thousand uh, watch hours. Three thousand watch hours. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually had enough subs that uh, well, when I was trying to get monetized, I didn't realize that I needed to give like a, a physical location. Uh, until when I was able to do it, they said, "Okay, well, you've uh, you don't you didn't do it in time for the expanded program." And by the time they actually opened up for the expanded program, I'd already gotten enough watch hours and subs to. So it didn't get matter full, anyway. Yeah, it was a little frustrating because I I think I qualified for one like a week before the other. Well, um, YouTube is asshole, as we said. Yep. Julia, my so, my username, sorry, is Wendy H. Wendy Space H. And Jennifer so asked, what is everybody's names? She doesn't see everyone's name up here. Oh, that's because you have the super chat up. Yeah. Or the chat up. Take oh. the chat down. There Sorry. There's our name. Hi, I'm MLS. I am Valhalla Awaits. <sighs> I'm Torin 3 or Torin, and uh, I've been referred to as the Bob Ross of braiding. That's yes. good. That's, that's, good. that's, that's good. a good one. That's like really that. good. We need to make a Chia pet of you. It, it's like Bob Ross like his streams are Bob Ross like yes. you're, just, you're happy to it be a part sense. of it, it you're just sense. relaxed it's just it's a wonderful Saturday morning thank you for um, the super chat Ellie sitting and watching them thank you so when much when do you Ellie. stream Torin yeah when do you normally um, stream? I try and normally do a Tuesday night and a Thursday night stream uh, for at least an hour preferably two hours and I try and do a weekend stream that's two hours or more uh, I haven't done as much lately because I've been not doing well. Uh, I managed uh, like three weeks back to trip and face plant full length and okay. bruise my ribs. But I am feeling a lot better and I'm trying to get some more exercise, lose weight, that type of stuff. So I'm hoping to get back on a regular streaming schedule. Look at that horse. It's all painted horse. That's really cute. Oh, that's awesome. I love that horse. He's cute. Oh, yes, that's right. David does have a cash app. It's um, dollar sign MLS Law Show. You can donate there if you'd like to donate to MLS. And all donations are never expected, but highly appreciated. We love you all so much. And don't forget to make some donations to Valhalla when you have a chance. We appreciate that, too. And please go subscribe to Torrance channel. He's our new friend. Hey, and we're so great to have him. Great I'm going to grift the heck out of this. Let me tell you something. I love it. Look, we need some money, y'all. Just saying. Anyway, we need um, go, some money, y'all. Please, seriously, go subscribe to, to Torrent. And, and it's really important. I'm sure you're all YouTube, like, uh, way more good at YouTube than me. But if you don't click those notifications, like, if you, when you subscribe, it usually defaults to a personal status instead of all when you, for notifications. Which go I up don't to understand the, what the hell that is. It's so weird. I don't understand so either. Stupid. There's nowhere to personalize your feed. I don't get it. Anyway, it drives me nuts. just click all. That way you'll get notified when Torrent is going to come up. And while you're subscribing, please subscribe to David's two new channels, Lego Law and also um, God of Law. MLS and God of Law. MLS God of Law. He's also humble, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a difference between being cocky and being confident. David's confident. That's funny. Wendy, Wendy's got it. She knows what's up. She's doing it. She 
just doing the damn thing. We've got to. We've got to get our numbers back up. So David's um, previous channel is oh, going to be. Somebody, somebody. Uh, by the way, if you guys don't know me, I love the trolls. Oh yeah. Somebody, somebody responded to my post about uh, the Jody area stream earlier. Is oh, that you got it wrong? It's it's uh, Michigan law devil or something like that. <laughs> That's, not, that's, not a <laughs> that's a pretty good one. I always I like the like troll's that. comments because like, I'm like, I want to, yeah. I want to kind of adopt that one. That's I good. like it. I think you should. Um, are we people? Uh, SF. It's not the first person that's asked. I didn't know if you wanted to address it. People want to know what happened to your channel. Uh, well, I guess. I mean, I'll just mention it real quick. Uh, there was a, there's a, another channel out there. Uh, with the Hales that felt that I was copywriting their material. I was not. At the most, I edited some of their stuff. Uh, one For one um, video, I took a clip from theirs and edited it. I believe it's under fair use. But the other two, uh, out of the three, were clearly not their content. And they had no copyright claim to it. But they made copyright claims anyways. YouTube has a three strikes in your out policy. And I got my third strikes and it was taken. Uh, the channel will go down tomorrow or the 15th, I guess. I don't know what time. But uh, yeah, and I can't post anything live to it. I can't upload any videos to it or anything like that. So that's what happened. Yeah. Good time. It is what it is. It's a good thing I retired from YouTube before it happened. though. It right. sure is. Mimsy, thank you for the $5 super sticker. You're such thank a Thank you so heart. much, Mimsy. I see someone saying Zach. Is Zach here? Oh, there's Zach. Yeah, oh, Zach's Zach. somewhere. I guess he's over he's here. He's saying hi to all the girls, of course. Of course he is. Oh, yeah. <sighs> um, Ted MLS have to be in parentheses. I know 20th Century Fox. Everyone's been commenting. I will fix that. I will it's really it stupid trying to tag you on in the description and stuff. You got to like get it perfect before it pops up. Did anyone think that it was intentional? Why would you intentionally make your name hard to, to, to search? I don't know. That, no, I'll take it off. <laughs> no, the channel is just God of God of Law. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. It's just God of Law. All right, I'll fix it right now. Ted Skovernak. I hope I said that right. You want to pull that up? There you go. Oh, why goats? I'm sorry, I didn't see that earlier, Ted. Sorry. I got you. Thank you for the two dollars. Why goats? Do you mean why I farm goats? Like why did I choose goats to to try to? We chose breed? him. To. They kind of did, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I don't really have an answer. I just always thought they were cool animals, and so I got into them. And <laughs> do you still think they're, they're cool animals? Turns out they're a giant pain in the ass. Is what <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are pretty cool though. Mrs. Valhalla actually posted a, a video today. I think. Oh, she did. I didn't oh, see it yet. She might have. I don't know if she posted it. Now that I say that out loud, I know she recorded one. Maybe our amazing mods can post um, Valkyrie's link in there so we can get some more subs to our channel, too. Heck, yeah. Heck, yes. Zach, said, thanks for the $1.99. Zach, what does thanks, this button Zach. do? Zach, Appreciate you know you, what that button do. Come on now. Zach knows how to push the buttons. And I just finished off this bag. Nice. Oh, yeah. And... Oh, very cool. Hell yeah. It's starting to look like something now. Yes, it is. All right. So what do you want it to be? What do you guys want it to be? Just MLS God of Law or just God of Law? Or what, what's the issue? Oh, you got to keep the MLS. Just get rid of the apostrophes. Okay. That's the problem. No parentheses. I don't parentheses, like, not apostrophes. Yeah. I don't Ooh, like the parentheses. Yeah. All right. It has been fixed for you all. See, I listened to the chat. Well, I think we should just go back to MLS because then I can all my merch is still relevant. It's still I mean, MLS. I even have the sweatpants to match. Come on now. See, even I took myself uh -oh. off screen. Even my avatar is still MLS. Yeah, I do like that. That's good. So could you not make it the same MLS. name? I didn't want to. I wanted to take full advantage to do the Lego stream and uh, to yeah, do the Lego channel. I think it's and a great idea. Different. And he, his, his content was backed up and it's recoverable and it's all going to be on the new channels. And thank you, SF. And thank you for all the amazing support. We've had a, a lot of um, people 
supporting and, and it's very much appreciated. And um, we're not here to divide. We're here to bring people together. And I think the legal stream is a perfect example of that. We've had amazing guest bars and we have this amazing Torin on tonight. And I'm so excited to meet him. Bahala and David have been sending me all the videos and the links and get readies. And I'm, he's I know, but like when it's, when, when, when he, uh, Torin is live, I, I send a link out to Wendy. I'm like, he's live, go watch him. Yeah, I do. I do. I love it. I we show up. up. We show up in force. Yeah, we do. You know what, Torin, you'll find that too. People from our streams will show up for you and they will become dedicated to, to your channel. And it's really fun to watch. Thank you. And I appreciate that. Um, I will say that it's kind of weird because I've had like, you know, kind of a semi crippling social anxiety and it's taken me a very long time to realize that um, people like listening to me and let, they like uh, how my voice sounds and they like watching what I do. And while I still haven't internalized that, I have internalized the fact that it is a fact and I'm trying to go forward with that. So, but it's always awe inspiring when things like that happen. Well, a, Have you figured a, out why yet? Because I still don't know why people, anyone wants to listen to me. But. I, don't, I don't know either, but I'll keep doing it as long as I'm <laughs> watching it. I think right? that's a great idea. You at least got the advantage. You've got a, a, a beautiful art form that you're sharing with the world. I've got nothing. I've got goats. Which, you have goats everything. are good, but you, you know. Have everything. And the turtles and the cats. And you have It doesn't you. even show the goats that often. That's I, all I'm saying. I, don't, I posted a short today. Yeah, how many Indians uh, liked it? Uh, excuse me, that's offensive. You can't use that word. They prefer Native Americans. No, I meant Indians from <laughs> India. <laughs> Mostly. Oh, that's a lot. right. Bahala's screen went viral in India. His short. Oh, it was a. It was yeah. one of my first videos I ever posted. It got like eighty nine thousand views in in India. So I had a. <laughs> my demographics were way off for a long time. <laughs> Okay, we've got a lot of super chats here. Hold on. Ooh. Zach, Bahala sucks pizzles. <laughs> Thank you for the Nobody birthday. cares about your birthday, Zach. Nobody. And Zach for a four ninety nine super chat. David may be humble, but I'm ten times more humble than him. <laughs> Zach, <you're so> <laughs> That's, That's good. Thank you, Zach, for the super chat. And Ted or is that Bahala say that in the last Gavrinek? Skovernek, yes. Skovernek. Oddly, Canadians can say my last name. Americans can't. Oh, you got me. Skovernek. I said it right, sort of. Right. Damn, all the help law to Skovernek. You want me Govrenek? to say it? Yeah, you say it. No, oh, David can't. can't say it. He can't say names. Corin, can you say it? Skovernek. Skovernek. So much better. Skovernek. Okay. Skovrenek. Damn, all the help you law to gave. But... Oh yeah, right. I know yeah. Ted, right? It's okay. We're moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Jung, Jung wants to offer you advice on streaming, Torn. Uh -oh. Okay. So if you have any questions for Jung stream, about streaming. Stream K-pop. <laughs> yeah. About streaming YouTube, making videos, etc. He is here to answer all of your questions. I love it. Jung knows all the things. Jung's awesome. Jung is awesome. But guys, if you don't know Jung, she was uh, she runs my Discord. So if you guys have any issues with my Discord, you gotta take it up with her. It's all her fault. Everything. She's everything amazing. that you everything that you disagree with that we've said on this stream, Jung told us to say it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's cool about I think for Torn, like how you were saying that you you suffer from some social anxiety. I think doing the videos the way you do them. Like, I don't know, for me, if I had that problem, I think I would like doing them the way you do them. You know what I mean? Like, don't change, don't, don't change anything if it's, there's nothing that needs to be changed. I think it's, I like how you can't always interact with chat, but from what people are saying in the chat tonight, you still engage. And I think that it's perfect the way it is. He does good. Yeah. Yeah. I may not get it at the moment, but I will definitely get it. I like bumbling through life a lot better. It's more entertaining that way. Well, people can relate to that better than something that's always perfect because it's not real. There was a great quote, by the way. I've been not to like overshadow. I don't like necessarily talking about potential future guests while we have a guest on, but there's a guy, Rory Sutherland, who's British, and I've been tracking him down for a couple of months now to see if I would be more interested in coming on. But he had a great quote um, today. I shared it around with some people, Vahala and Wendy and stuff. But he said, um, 
that most people are just concerned with not like blowing up the whole thing. How did he say it? God, it was something along the lines of, of you make your decisions based on the worst possible outcome being the least catastrophic to your life. Yes. Yes. That was it. He's like, why, why have, you know, the whole thing, you know, implode when you, the other option is just maybe I'm not perfect, you know, you know, focus on not being, or God, he said it so much better than I'm trying to articulate it. Anyways, that was the idea was you don't have to be perfect. So long as this, the, the outcome is not catastrophic. There you go. Jeez. David half Irish says, what should we do with our memberships? Wait a bit. Well, the memberships, I don't know what's going to happen with them. Well, I think they just automatically get canceled. Yeah. Um, at the, yeah. At the end of the month, they'll just. That, that ha- I think that happened on Ricada's, but then when he, his channel came back, they, they reinstated. So, uh, yeah. So just really? hang out and tell people to sub and watch yeah. my videos, and then we'll get memberships on one of I the mean, new videos. There's a chance that it could not, they could, it could end up being fine anyway, right? Well, it, it, there's a chance it could come back too. And even when Gosney's uh, memberships got taken away yeah. and then reinstated like a week later, everyone got their memberships back. Yeah. Hmm. So. Marmar says, Torin 3, you're an interesting person. You make beautiful braids and you have funny stories. You are also intelligent. I enjoy listening to you. Thank you. Marmar is a regular on my channel. She does a wonderful needle felting art herself. Uh, she makes like scenes and animals and dioramas with it. And it's absolutely wonderful. You can uh, find a lot of her stuff um, on the uh, the Discord that used to be Rob's that is now independent and law tubing related in general. Nice. So, That's not Rob's Discord anymore. I didn't know that. Um, he it was never really his Discord. Uh, he was he somebody said had set it up, and he was. Uh, working with it, but I think if I understood for what he said uh, the other night, it just was too much for him, and he just kind of had to step back from it. He didn't have any problem with it; it just was. It, he needed to not be officially part of his stuff. Got it. That's uh, that's like my Discord. Technically, it isn't mine. It's Jung's. It's a yeah. fan Discord, if anything. I just participated. In it. Good night, Fubar. Good night, Fubar. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate you. Good seeing you, buddy. Rob got kicked out of his own Discord. That's it. Um, I ran yeah, a fan Junk's, Facebook Junk's group. Junk's tried to kick us out of our Discord, too. I've run a fan dis, uh, Facebook group for uh, for uh, a YouTuber and, and, and stuff for uh, a number of years ago. And then I created a private one for only fans. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't allow the creator. So we can just talk about stuff. Uh, so it happens. That's funny. <sighs> well, I've jumped ahead to move 74, so I am picking All up. All right. Speed. You're nice. good, man. You're good. That's really cool. Gwendolyn says most of the people in Torn's chat also craft and they do it while he's braiding. That's beautiful. Yep. Who's I... building a Legos with yeah. us? Yeah. Who is building with us tonight? We usually got a few of you out there that are building. Who's yes, building we with do. us? Who's building? Jill says only fans. That's not true. Who's so building? Torrent... And what are you building? Yeah. Torin, besides uh, streaming and uh, braiding, what else uh, are you uh, are you doing for fun? Um, let's see. I've been I've, I've been enjoying doing three D printing. Uh, I've yeah. been uh, other hobbies I've had. I don't do it as I don't really do it anymore. But I've done blacksmithing. Uh, I like to do some woodworking. One of the things I need to start doing more of that I really like doing is cloisonne enameling, which is essentially fusing uh, colored glass onto fine silver or gold. Uh, I mean, uh, Fabergé egg is a form of enameling, but that's way beyond my skill level. Um, I have done a little bit of uh, enameling with gold wire, but that was like a custom order. Um, and uh, uh, Do you, you have a big stuff. shop for all this stuff or you just sort of like set up and tear down? Kind of set up and tear down for a lot of stuff. Um, my roommate um, is the one who taught me cloisonne enameling, and I'm setting up uh, the kiln in the garage so that she can do some commissions that she's uh, been needing to do for a while now. Um, 
so, uh, and I'm my shop is ex garage is extremely packed, and I'm trying to get it set up to where I can be kind of modular, like move the table saw in and out, move the drill press in and out. Um, that that's one of the things I recently did is I made like a, a rolling base for my drill pet press, so I can uh, move it out, use it, and then put it back out of the way so I can actually get around. I've got a two-car garage, but it's pretty packed in there. I've got a CNC router. Uh, I've got I, – I sold off the power hammer. I have a MIG welding setup. I have a TIG welding setup. I've got a bench grinder. I've got a 20-horsepower compressor with a 200-gallon tank that does not work and I'm afraid to put back together. Uh, <laughs> For those that it, aren't sure why, that uh, has a potential to go boom. I was going to say, that that's a rational fear. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm pretty sure I can put the head back together and get it to work, but I'm afraid the inside of the tank has been open to air long enough that there might be enough rust. And, plus, it's like you know a 50, 60-year-old compressor to begin with. You can go – right now, you can go to uh, – Harbor Freight and get like a hundred and fifty pound compressor for like a hundred bucks, hundred and twenty bucks. Go get that yeah, one. I, at up up north at our at our cottage, we have a compressor that's made out of an like a 1940s airplane fuel tank and just like a pump sitting on a wooden horse. I don't know why. My dad made it years ago out of like spare parts that my grandfather had and for some reason we still use it even though you have to like manually you have to turn the switch on and then manually um you know at, you know pull the pull the pulley you know spin the pulley so that it starts and it takes forever to fill and i'm afraid the thing's gonna blow up one day it probably yeah, I, I would love to actually pay a service tech to come and you know uh, either fix it or evaluate it and, you know, let me know if it's safe or not. But I can't get anybody who's willing to come out and actually do anything just because it's such an old thing. Yeah, and they probably so, have no idea. Well, it's it's a Quincy compressor. So, I mean, I'm sure they've run across it. And they're well, if they're well-maintained, they, they're, they're good for quite a while. Um, it's just it, – it's frustrating. But I've sold the power hammer. I still have the the – the variable frequency drive to run the motors um and that's rated for like 100 uh 100 amps at 220 volts and it's a nice piece of equipment i haven't been able to use it in like you know 15 10 10 to 12 years you know when oh, you said sorry, that you got that. you were trying to get everything in your shop movable everything in my shop is on wheels except for the fireplace behind me and it's the best thing ever like the table that i'm on i could drop it down on the floor and it's nice and heavy and stable but i can oh, roll shit. it right out of the way um it's so nice to be able to do that what's wrong Valhalla? nothing this room's starting to get hot though oh, okay. so i'm gonna, I'm gonna need I'm to freezing. get a fan or something in here yeah yeah i got um, too hot i had to turn the heat off somebody out asked if torn um does glass blowing have you tried that i have done glass blowing once uh my niece married somebody who is a silversmith and glass blower and uh as part of their engagement thing when my wife and i were visiting in idaho we my uh, parents and my sis siblings and i were able to go to a glass blowing class that they did and uh, we still have the pieces from that and it was a wonderful experience i'd like to try it again but i don't have the equipment but i there are places near me and if i have the time and the money i will probably try and do something more in the future. Um, the other thing that was fun is my wife is considered doing uh, sugar blowing, which is like glass blowing with molten Ooh, sugar. Yeah. And she's got the That's kit for cool. that, but she hasn't actually done it, but she's now had some enough experience that when she has a chance to try it, she can theoretically do it. They do that with like, um, you know, super fancy cooking and whatnot. They'll, they'll yep. put little sugar or glass sugar pieces on it. Yep. But I love watching glass scale. blowing is amazing. If you start glass oh, yeah. blowing on your channel, I'll be on every stream watching. Uh, I would stop. We stopped. We were in Logan, Ohio, and on our way back, we happened to see a sign for glass blowing, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta stop!" And we stopped, and we just I watched these guys glass blowing for like an hour, hour and a half or so, until my wife was finally like, "All right, we, we can get back on the road now." Time to go now. <laughs> the uh, so like. Oh, the medieval event I go into August, go to in like late July and August. There's usually a vendor there that uh, 
has the glass blowing uh, set up in place and you get, I can watch it there and uh, that's fun too. That's what a really about pottery? Kind of you ever do some pottery? I have done pottery. Um, um, I haven't done it in quite a while, but I, I did do it enough that I could like reliably make things look like I wanted them to look. <laughs> You're just all kinds of like crafty. I want to get a pottery wheel so bad. I can't justify the cost of the kiln, though. That's the thing. Yeah, the kiln. You can't to rent. One. Can't you take your stuff to somewhere to get build, it? Build a kiln. There you go. Build it outside out of brick, like a like a pizza oven. One thing you can do is you can find uh, there's like small kilns that are not that expensive that can get hot enough. Um, and if you get like a, uh, a digital uh, pyrometer that uses like a type K uh, thermocouple, because that's what I use for my enameling. And you could at least make one small piece at a time until you can like justify getting the larger one. Also, I, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I'll had, figure it out one day. Otherwise, I'm just going to have a bunch of like raw uh, clay lying around and I'm going to make it into something. It's going to sit there and collect dust and then I'm going to eventually throw it out and then make something else. Because if I don't have a kiln or a way to like really do it, can I do it in the oven? Like how hot does it have to get? I think it needs to be really hot. Um, something like about 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, one thing I would not going to work. No. One thing I would say is that if there's a pottery supply place near you, um, when I was in Idaho, there was a pottery store that they had their own kilns and you could yeah. like rent time in them. Uh, oh, and that's cool. They would fire your pieces for you. Or space. And you got to drive it into town and la la la. <laughs> Wait, talking says, about. Yeah, okay. Torin, you should tell the story about showing your badge to the teen in the car next to you. And before you tell that story, Marmar, I'm so sorry. They posted that question like right when the stream started and I and I'm sorry. So no do tell. No worries on that. Okay, so um let's see, let me get this in place. Uh there we go. Do a quick uh status where I'm at. Very nice. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Very cool. All right. So uh, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, okay. So I'm so I'm still keeping doing stuff and not uh, delaying you, wonderful folks. Um, There's no the, such thing as a delay nah, on these streams, good, by the way. You're good. We're here. For the, the, um, the you get to. You're in control here. Okay. So I was working at the uh, previous job that I had, and I had gone. Uh, had to go somewhere uh, okay. for, a for a class, and I was on my way back to uh, work. And I was driving on kind of like a divided road where there were two lanes on each side and a couple of like crossover points where you could uh, turn. Uh, I'm going along. Uh, I'm doing the roads. The roads rated for 55, and I'm doing that. Um, and uh, whoops, misread that one. Sorry. Um, so there's a car waited at like the middle area trying to turn on the direction I'm going. There's a couple of cars ahead of me and I look in my rear view mirror. There's nobody behind me. So I figured, okay, I will uh, pass them and, uh, you know, no big deal. There's nobody behind me. So they pull out behind me and it's maybe about half a mile to the next light. So we pull up there. The car pulls up into the lane beside me, and they roll down their window. And it's like a couple of uh, like late teens, early twenties, like you know, old enough to drive, but probably not quite in college yet. And they start yelling at me about how I'm disrespecting them. And uh, I mean, I wasn't really listening, so I can't say exactly what it was. But I figured they didn't like the fact I didn't slow down to let them pull out in front of me. Um, you know, not a big deal. I figured the light will turn and I'll go and it'll be over with. Except uh, one of them like throws their um, soda cup and hits the side of my car. Oh, and no. So I'm sitting there. I'm wearing a uh, um, like a, a button down shirt. Uh, I look, you know, kind of semi formal, but not, you know, like super dressed up or super grungy. And I'm thinking, OK, these kids are working themselves up to try and, you know, be you know, either really assert their dominance or some heroes in their thing. own mind. Right. Billy badass. Yeah, so, 
So I'm sitting there. I'm not even looking them. I pull my badge out of my pocket, pull it up to the window like this. <laughs> oh, sorry. The light turns green. I put it down. I drive off. And they're sitting at the light for like five seconds. And then they pull forward. They pull behind me. They're going at a reasonable speed. And then they turn off at the next possible turn off. They can do. They're like, oh, shit, bro. Oh, the, music, the amusing thing is that constables are actually uh, specifically prohibited from being able to afford the vehicle code in Pennsylvania. So there was absolutely nothing I could do. And I wasn't trying to abuse my authority. I was. What was going through my mind is, well, if I show them a badge, if they do beat me up, because, uh, I mean, I was going to work where there was like I couldn't carry anything with me. I figured at least then they could tack on, you know, assault on a law enforcement officer. Something, right? There you go. Respect That's funny. Do you ever keep your uh, your badge, your your driver's license in your with your badge? So when a police officer pulls you over and you've got to pull out your license, your badge is just happily, you know. To I specifically do not do that. I will not show my badge if I get pulled over. Because, like I said, in this, you better this believe my my uh, disabled veteran card is in the exact same spot as my driver's license, and they get my, for some that reason exactly. My driver's license is always behind my bar card. I don't know how right. it happens. The, <laughs> it's hey, that, I'll get my a, bar card out of the way. It's that, and then a business card for an attorney, and my insurance card, all in the same little thing in my wallet. <laughs> Remember, though, that I'm in uh, part of the state where uh, the reaction I get from the police officers may be extremely variable. It might oh, actually yeah, make my situation right, yeah. a lot worse. So I figure uh, if I get pulled over for anything traffic related or whatnot, it's just not worth risking it. And so. Um, do you ever pull the, do you know who I am? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing any of that. That's not a good plan. I'm so how long have him. you been constable, by the way? Eight years. Eight years. I, I, Just a I, fluke on an election day. Now for eight years you've been constable. That's yep. Awesome. Actually, got... I'm con considering running for high constable the next time it comes around. Oh, um, we'll write you in. Years. It doesn't <laughs> really make... You don't live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really have any difference in authority in the statutes, but um, uh, it's a position that uh, apparently nobody's uh, been elected for in like 50 years. There was another constable who uh, was able to work with his election board to where he could get on the ballot. You have to be on the ballot for your own personal, because high constable is for an entire borough, and constables are elected on a ward basis. Um, so... Um, you have to be elected in your ward and elected in the borough as high constable at the same time for it to work. So I figured it might be worth a shot. But if it's it's a position that's available, I figure somebody ought to run for it. Right? Get in there. Look at that. Yeah, just a waste. I'm surprised. Done. I'm surprised I have like all the pieces just sort of able to find them. It takes some digging, but it's that's happening. a full set. That is a very cool set. I want to be a constable now. Dave, I think you would be a good constable. I'd vote for no. Dave Dave and Val for constables, too. Uh, no, then Val would have to interact with people. Yeah, I don't think that's happening, mm -hmm. Wendy. Uh, I just want to, I want to govern the elections. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> I, will, I will say uh, another constable story is, is that while the uh, constables are a party position, uh, when I'm uh, doing my poll duty, um, I figure I should be as nonpartisan as possible. Well, yeah, and I, I figure I, it's a testament to how well I did my job because um, when I was up for re-election, um, the uh, other party's poll watcher didn't realize what party I was until she looked at the uh, primary ballot and realized I was not on it that's for funny. their party. And I figure that's a you know. It lets me know I did the job right. Right. You're too upstanding of a uh, of a citizen, sir. I love it. No such thing as you being be too upstanding. Corrupted more fan. by Bahala. <laughs> why, why, why do I got to do the corrupting? Well, I have a question. Why isn't Bahala a mod on your channel? He's a mod on like every other person's channel. I don't think he's asked that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, people just offer it, really. <laughs> I was told I had to, but well, there for a little him. while, everybody had to. 
there for a little while. It was part of the YouTube Terms of Service. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah, and you signed up for a channel and you got yeah. Mahalo as a moderator. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. I think I was a mod first before Valhalla, though, on your channel, David. Were you? Yeah. Really? Well, maybe. Yeah. When, yeah, did, maybe. when you came in, when you, when you came in Valhalla into the into the fold, was Wendy already oh. here? Yeah. Um, I believe we didn't so. know each other yet, though. So uh -uh. I think that know. interview that she did was kind of right before, or right as we were kind of getting together, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. No, I've been around already for for a while. Yeah. I think no, no, Jamie... no. Wendy, uh, when Valhalla started like chit chatting a bit, yeah. was after your interview or right around the same time. Correct. So you were already. Yeah, he sent me a really nice DM. He's like, you know, you did a really good job, Mrs. Valhalla, and I liked Aww. your interview. It was really sweet. Aww. I was like, oh my god. He, she printed funny. it off and framed it. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, um, I've had a couple of questions come in. So, um, wait, somebody had one before Julia. Sorry, Julia. Ooh, Bahala. Ah. All right, so here's the breakdown, y'all. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, we need a base, that looks, apparently. That looks horrible. <laughs> You're really <laughs> clumsy right now. They're, they're not do you want to? Wanna... So here's the three different variations of rows. We have this okay. guy, which okay. is cool. We got four of those. We got four of this one, which is cool, cool right? Um, where's the other one? And four of this one. Nice. Are those oh, all yeah. individual Lego sets or Lego? Those look no, like this... shoulders from the Star Wars, uh, like figures. That's what they look like. Shoulders from the Star Wars figures. You know they have they have you know how the Lego has like the seven inch tall figures from different. Things. They have no. Legos or they have like robots and mm -hmm. stuff. Looks like the shoulder okay. pads from those. Okay. I was trying to figure out what they reused. And then it's got I like uh, the baby's some breath. Baby's breath. Yeah. Got four of those on there too. Nice. It's a fun little set. And I've done most of the flowers now. So um you know, I just gotta find a, you a, get a vase. A vase, if you will, yes. That's right. The boss. Oh, I know. Gwendolyn said, I like the story of Mrs. Torrent's ex meeting Torrent. Oh, yes. That's a good one. Do tell. Um, all right. So um, I had met the lady who was going to be um, Mrs. Torrent. Uh, and she had let me know when I met her that she was in the process of a divorce. Um, and she was still living in the same house with her uh, soon to be ex. Uh, who was had already moved his girlfriend into the house with him. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I wanted to uh, call and set up a time uh, to meet up with her. In, uh, this was probably like our third or fourth date. Um, and she'd given me the house number. And so I went ahead and called up. And her ex answers the phone. I said, hi, this is Torn. Uh, can I speak to, you know, the, the future Mrs. Torn? Though not, you know, I just used her name. And he said, this is her husband. And I said, yes, I know. May I speak to her? <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty good. <laughs> she said he was, like, pissed for a week over that. Oh, man, so you know that your lady is. What do you think your, your, your ex lady or future ex lady is going to do? Yeah. That's awesome. So, Love it. I, uh, when I first got divorced, I went to a school function and um, we I had just moved in, uh, moved out and in, into my new home. And uh, my ex brought this guy around and she was like showing a ring and stuff. And I shook his hand. I don't remember his name. Uh, obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was like, got a ring. she was like all like, you know, I was like, good luck. Good luck, guy. And uh, he was, I think he was gone within like a week. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah, yeah, he was like disappeared. Never heard from him again. You're all nicest sex she ever had. Okay, Julia543 says, um, would it to Torin, would it be enforcing the vehicle code if you were to do something about them throwing a drink at the car? Probably not. Um, but 
I don't think it probably would have met a sufficient level of a breach of the peace for just throwing the, the thing. It probably would have been closer to littering or something motor vehicle related enough. And again, I didn't have like anything other than my badge with me and my ID. Um, so I didn't, uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't really be able to effectuate an arrest. And again, so like you're I said, al- go ahead. Sorry. No, you're allowed to arrest if you see a felon uh, or a f- felony being committed? Yes. Okay. That seems like the last person you would want to arrest as a constable. Just right. Out. This dangerous felon. You're like, eh, maybe I'll just, you know, observe and report a little bit. Yep. Um, right. Sorry, just trying to make sure. I'm- That's okay. Mustang McCracken, yes, he is. Well, he's a criminal defense attorney and he does family law. David. Who, me? Yes. Yeah, I, I, uh, I do family law, criminal defense, and a lot of civil litigation, actually, re- recently. I've been shifting more away from family law and more into like commercial and business litigation, employment law and things like that, which I find more entertaining than family law. Family law is just like, it's exhausting, but I've been imagine. doing it for 13 years. I don't years. think I could do that. No, family law would be tough. I just sit here and look at these people and I talk to opposing counsel. And I'm like, you realize both of my clients are idiots, right? And they're going to spend thousands of dollars being idiots, arguing with each other. Let's see if we can get them to the, you know, to a good spot. And if opposing counsel comes back, it's like, well, your client's obviously insane. That's why I'm like, okay, well then we know, you know, that's sort of the course that we need, this case needs to take. Cause it's just going to be like hard going at it litigation. But I always try at the end of the day to, to make everybody come together to some extent, because especially if there's kids involved, uh, whether they're young kids or old kids, you guys are getting divorced, but you're still going to be in each other's lives. And the faster you guys can resolve your disputes, the, the easier it's going to be, especially the kids. Yes. So that's my whole approach to it. But yes, it's very exhausting because you're dealing with people at their absolute worst. It came Ooh, with this little heart. heart. Oh my gosh. I think it was supposed to be like a Valentine gift because it's got like a well, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't April. It's got like a like a to and from tag up there. You can't oh, see but it's got yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to give it to your your, your special lady. Well, he I think is she gave it to me. That. Yeah, she gave it to me to build. Now I'm gonna build it and give it to her. Or Torrin, to build it to her. What trial has I'm gonna take a bio break, I'll be back. I'm sorry, what uh what, what trial has the rest of the people now? Um, hmm. I think here, um, I mean, there've been trials that have been hard for me to listen to, but then again, I don't like listening to overly contentious stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I haven't really, uh, followed any of the, the hail stuff in general, just cause it's been painful for me to listen to. Um, so, um, Trying to think of any of them that stood out uh, more than the others. Um, I mean, a lot of them have been frustrating in different ways. I know Rittenhouse was frustrating uh, as far as the prosecutor, but I think in general, prosecutors are very frustrating to listen to because there's never anything that you can do that was the right thing to do, regardless if anybody else would look at it as the right thing. Um, that's the best way to say it. That's the exact right way to say it. That's exactly how they look at it. So, um, did you I mean, watch the Apple River case at all? The Apple River stabbing? That was the stabbing. I didn't actually hear the verdict on that, but I did hear a little about the background of the case. I'm assuming he was convicted. Yes. yes. yes he I was. think yeah. of the lesser charge, though, not the. Yeah, it was first degree. It was reckless, or reckless right? am- yeah. homicide. In- yeah, something like that. I don't know. It was a weird charge. Wisconsin has some weird cases. Yeah. But uh, so more importantly, though, when you're watching these trial streams, who are you watching and which channel are you watching? Um, in general, I, I prefer uh, Riketa's if he is watching it, but he doesn't do a lot of them. Um, I like... Uh, I like Rob. I, I really liked Rob's uh, recap of the taking care of Maya trial. 
Um, and I also liked um, uh, MLS. You love MLS, right? Trial coverage on MLS. That's his favorite. <laughs> he was just going to say that. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that, I mean, there is getting to be really a lot of uh, trial coverage and uh, sometimes I have a hard time keeping up with a lot of it. So I, I apologize for that. Um, well, I did too. And that's kind of why I was, I was like backing off of streaming after the Jennifer Crumley trial. Uh, you know, there were so many other trials coming up and it was taking up so much time. I was, I just had to be like, all right, I'm done. That's why I was like, quote, retired from YouTube. But uh, because it's so much to try to keep up on, you can't do it all. You can't watch it all. You can't stay on top of everything. You know, you stream about one case and people have questions about 20 other cases. Yeah. I don't know what I'm making right now, but it's some sort of weird bird thing. I don't know. Working on this. Um, are we able to view a Pennsylvania trial stream? Jung asks. Are you asking? I'm assuming she's I asking she's Torn. Asking Do you know if they stream the trials, Torn? Um, I don't. I don't know how many. Uh, if they if they do video or not, I know the. Uh, um, uh, I, I think of Dennis Miller, whatever the uh, the food case that uh, um, Amos Miller uh, that uh, um, Barnes was covering. Uh, I know that one um, was not done uh, publicly, um, but I uh, think I, of a I'm Pennsylvania not, case. Yeah, I can't think of one that was done either. And I'm just I got I'm looking here, and I've got something that. Uh, I think I okay. Ah, I had a piece in wrong. That's why it wasn't fitting. So you're a trial. But, yeah, you're I'm, forward to sorry to watching in the future. Um, none of them have really kind of like uh, stood out as I've got to watch it uh, uh, right away because. Uh, I, I mean, there's the the only fans. Oh, um, if it does come to a trial, I think I want to watch the one that uh, is in uh, Massachusetts with, uh, that Turtle Boy has been covering and getting in trouble over. Uh, oh, Aaron Reed that, is starting. It's starting in two weeks, I think. Right? So it's like yeah, the, that would definitely be one I want to catch. You should. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a recommendation. You should watch it on the Broken Baker's channel. Yeah. Okay. He's a Dane. He's a he's a Danish layman. He's a professional juror in Denmark. Okay. And his channel is called The Broken Bacon. He's been covering that for about a year now. He's been covering yeah. the case. And uh, I, I was covering the Turtle Boy a little bit, his whole situation. But uh, Baker's got Karen Reed down. He knows all the facts. He's done a recreation of the supposed hitting of John uh, with the car via Lego. He did a recreation <laughs> with Lego. Uh, so you should check him out, definitely. And I think I just finished this bag off, but I have more pieces. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They might go to the next one. Yeah, I've been setting them off to the side. So if I run Smart. short, that's where I'll check first. Love it. So I'm now he's, opening He's such an engineer. Space. Oh, my God. He's such an engineer. I know. I love it. <laughs> my wife says that uh, in her family, it's been very matriarchal. And in her family, the uh, the men are the uh, pampered, weak ones. Tend to uh, you know pass away earlier than their wives because they're not all that you know robust and whatnot, and they're not that intelligent. So the women get together, they plan things and whatnot. And the the guys go off and to the side. So she says, I don't register as that type of male because when I get something, I read the instructions first. I love that. <laughs> love it. Cheers. I need to get another beer. This is uh, this is gonna yeah, be a beer also draws. Baker also Oh yeah, he's got a, he's got yeah. a sketch. He's got a whiteboard that he draws out. Um, he also does like he, he does his like watercolors, not like a professional, but like little kid watercolors. Very cute. He's a good drawer. A good drawer. I don't know. Good drawer. 
It's a good draw. Drawler. Draw. You gotta put the L in there. You gotta draw. Drawler. Drawler. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you should definitely check out the Broken Baker if you want to watch the Karen Reed trial. He's gonna yeah. be covering it all. Yeah, I streamed the Karen Reed stuff with Baker. I don't know if you yeah. mentioned that or not. I jumped on. <laughs> no, I didn't. You um, didn't. You didn't. You should. No. Have. <laughs> I was. I was on there on Friday. Um, I was on his channel. We were covering the hearings. I was supposed to be, but I didn't wake up in time. Apparently, this so he sent me a link because you weren't there. That's exactly what happened. Justin, this is all instructions. What are those? What are those? If we need a legal expertise, and uh, uh, Bahala's not here, so I guess we'll go today. We'll, I guess we'll bring on the lawyer. God. Yeah, 20th Century Fox says the trial starts Tuesday, actually. Uh, okay. Tuesday. Yeah, I think so. Well, I've been I've been sort of listening to some of the pre-trial stuff. I don't know, like motions or. Um, yeah, it's been a couple be, weeks. I will be streaming Zachary Anderson on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, but after that, I'll be watching in ten. Yeah, I when I'm at work, I listen to YouTube streams uh, while I'm doing stuff because it helps me uh, focus on what I need to do uh, creativity-wise, which I'm assuming is like an attention deficit type thing. Um, so one of the... Uh, 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 streams that the types of streams I tended to listen to were um, uh, like Reddit readings for like you know in, entitled people. Am I the am I the asshole? Uh, <laughs> I love those. I want to do a stream that, like that I, I want to. I want to watch that. I haven't heard of that before. Just Reddit was home. doing that for a long time. Um, oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. yeah. Like a year ago, I texted Jamie and I'm like, we should do Am I the Butthole stream. They yeah. she had to change the name of them. If I remember right, YouTube like came down on her for using oh, okay. asshole in the well, title. Somebody already did it. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're past two we're, I think we're past two hours, so I can uh, say it freely. But um yeah, it's like am am I the butthole or uh, you can say asshole, man. It's it's yeah, it's, I don't I'm, know. I'm saying that's that's the way those channels uh, label it. Yeah, but the problem I've had is that I have a good enough memory, and uh, I'd say probably at least sixty percent of the content I'm listening to these days is um, repeats, and it gets frustrating after a while. Um, oh, so yeah. I've been, and I, I do listen to uh, the LawTube stuff, but I'm also thinking that I need to start listening to more audiobooks um catch up with the reading i've been wanting to do because unfortunately when i read a physical book i cannot stop reading it i will read it straight through i will be late for work i will not Thank sleep you. uh i will not do stuff i need to do so i've had to switch over to audiobooks to be able to uh uh have something that i can like stop or do other stuff with while i'm listening uh, See, you're talking about all these problems or these issues, but I'm hearing a lot of myself in you, and uh, I just don't see a problem with any of it. You know, yeah, when you get a good book, you don't put it down. If it if you have to be late for court or whatever, you know, fine, it is what it is. So be it. You know? The reading takes precedent. I, I I I watched every episode of Scrubs on repeat. You know, all the way through the whole show while I was I sitting at the show. bar. I don't I don't understand the issue. That's how I it loved works. that show. I love that show. Oh no! I would I remember sitting you and taking down. the bar exam and being asked a question, and immediately my mind went to an episode of Scrubs. Oh yeah, JD said this thing to Turk, and this is the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of course, it's a homestead exemption, I, you know, or whatever. I, I, you know, I have no idea what the question was, but see, that's just normal to me. In that case, Pam Graham, George uh, Kelly, weird. I don't know that one. Sean's covering that one, and I'm not sure exactly oh, okay. what it's about. But uh, oh, is that the guy that was uh, uh, found dead? Uh, that was like running? that's right. That's right. So he he lived on um, the Mexican border, and they found a, a migrant in his backyard, shot to to death. And uh, they were like, "Hey, you did this," and he was like, "I don't think I did that." And uh, oh. now they're now they're putting him on for murder. Wow! So I don't think I did that. Board. 
John wants uh, to know if you want to do Discord. Um, I do Discord, but not a whole lot of it because I just find I don't have a lot of time for it, unfortunately. Um, I'm on um, Ian's Discord. I'm on the one that used to be Rob's. And uh, um, let's see. I just found apparently I missed a couple of steps, and that's probably where my extra pieces were. That'll do it every time, buddy. Every time. Okay. Not all of them, but... I'm. I'm supposed to ask this. Did you eat my mango body butter? That's from a movie. What? Oh, I don't know. I thought somebody knew what it meant. Sorry. I think it's from a movie. Sorry, Julia. Maybe I don't know. Please save this for when you can. What, what movie is, that, is from? that from? It's from a movie. Know. Oh, no, it's not. It's Scrubs. It's the best episode of Scrubs ever. It's when they do a. Um, it's when they do a, a sort of a, a, an homage to the Wizard of Oz, and so it starts off with the with Toto, and uh, JD's sitting in the bathtub, and uh, he's got he's just moved in with Elliot, and he's got this, and she's got mango body butter, and he's like washing with it, and then he eats it, and then he's called into the hospital. That's when you meet Julian for the first time. Julian oh. is the manatee that lives under the hospital in the water because he falls in. Poor Julia. Yeah, I Thanks, Julia. I, I could talk through almost every episode of Scrubs. It's been a long time since I've, I've watched it. Yeah, me too. Me My too. TV superpower is I can identify any original Star Trek episode within 30 seconds of seeing it, no matter where it is in the episode they start. Oh, that's what? pretty impressive. What? Which, that which, which is really... An, which is really annoying because I'm not all that interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm not a big Star Wars fan. But Star, Tra Star, but Star Wars Trek, or Star, Star Trek? Trek? My bad. Star Trek. Trek. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just did move one 100, so I'm officially a third of the way through. Yay! Are you interested in the Brian Cope <laughs> Kohlberger case being from Idaho and all? But we have to say Cronenberger because that's how David says it. Cronenberger. Uh, I have been kind of paying attention a bit of it through An um, Andrea Burkhart's coverage. I haven't been catching a lot of it live, just kind of uh, following her tweets on it. Um, and it's, from what I can tell, it sounds like uh, the prosecution and state has very, very, very shaky evidence, but they're trying to um, kind of ignore all of that. And I'm, a, it's one of those things where he may be guilty, but it feels a, an awful lot like the prosecution is just going to uh, try and get a conviction regardless of how good their facts are or not. Yep, but, that sounds about right. Well, that seems to be par for the course lately, huh? Yeah. And like Gosney says, the prosecution is supposed to go for the truth, not for victory but mm. justice over conviction but that's unfortunately not what we see all too often yeah but yeah Andrea Burkhardt is great Marmar. yep she's awesome all righty so what do you so like you said, on tv Torin? I don't watch a lot of TV. My uh, wife and roommate both watch uh, more than I do. Um, uh, but let's see. I'm sorry. Uh, trying to see what I'm dealing with here. Um, but, are you, yeah, saying, the, are you identifying the same person, your wife and your roommate as the same person? or No, I think no. they're two separate people. They're two separate people. My, my wife is... Uh, um, do they know about each my other? life? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, the roommate, <laughs> the roommate in question, um, has been a friend of mine for like 30 plus years. Uh, I knew her in Idaho. Um, and, uh, my wife met her when I was helping the, the roommate move across country from Idaho to Virginia. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the roommate in question is now on 100% social security disability because she, over the course of her life, she's broken her neck. Uh, fortunately, no paralysis, but a lot of pain from that. She's also had like cancer a couple of times. Uh, and 
she got married to her last husband about like 10 years ago and about four four or five years ago yeah, it's been a bit more than that, but about five years back, uh, she had to get divorced because he seemed to be going crazy, and she just couldn't live with him anymore. And while she's on 100% disability, she really can't afford to like live in most places on that. And I talked to my wife about it, and we agreed that we would be able to have her um, uh, move in as our roommate. She was our roommate for a while before she got married uh, this last time, uh, and so. Um, She's also the one who taught me like silversmithing and enameling. Uh, and she's just a good friend of both my wife and I. And it, we nice. figured it was something we could do uh, to make it to where uh, her life was not miserable and she could afford to uh, live without having to like pay rent. And because she's got a lot of medical expenses. And sure. uh, it's just kind of a, a chance for us to like be decent to a friend of ours. We love that. So, oh, yeah. we um the the we have one of those my uh buddy that comes into chat every once in a while mr james the guy that started the whole happy birthday valhalla thing. oh yeah yeah <laughs> fucking dick he uh <laughs> <laughs> he lived with us for like summers right because he was a school teacher in chicago but he he we lived where he went to college and like his whole friend group was out there so he'd go to school all year long and then come live in our spare room in the in all summer long. And he was the one that got he got um ordained and actually married me and Mrs. Valhalla. Cute. Okay. The the other thing is it's kind of like paying it back because um the the medieval household that I'm a part of the where like the lady was that taught me uh the braiding stuff. Uh, when I moved out here to Pennsylvania for the blacksmithing apprenticeship, uh, a couple in that group uh, were putting me up uh, essentially rent free until I could get on my feet. And it was about like five or six months until I could uh, uh, get my get myself uh, going out here. And uh, uh, it's kind of like a chance to like repay that or pay it forward or however you would want to categorize that. That's sweet. So. Toyla Carissa. Salvador was here earlier. I don't know if you know this about him, but his bedtime is like 8 p.m. Oh, yeah. So we tried to make him stay up late one time. It was not successful. No. He was, oh, he was a hot no, mess. Yes, he was yes. a hot yes. mess. <laughs> Poor Sal. Yeah, he's been around. I've seen him a lot lately, actually. And I, he streams, saying, I think he was streaming today. I think he streams every day. Seems like it for sure. He streams with EU, and sometimes he streams by himself. I think we were gonna have a uh, we were gonna have him on maybe for one of the the barely interesting streams, uh, but we start those at 10 p.m. Eastern, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah I'm not I'm not making that one." But the thing is, is that it's only it's 8 p.m. Eastern for him. Oh, but it, that's like he's going to bed. Yeah. It's not 8 p.m. Eastern. It's just I mean, if he gets up at local. 3, I get it. You know, like if you get up at 3 a.m., I get going to bed at 8. I, I don't. That doesn't make any eight. sense to me. I mean, I go to room. I go to my room at 8 because I have a house full of people that are here, and so I need my alone time. <laughs> but I'm probably not asleep at 8. I mean, I know I'm not asleep at 8. <laughs> so do you have, uh, Torin, do you have your own personal space? Is this is this what you're at? This is your... A space away from the women? Um, actually, where I'm filming is the master bedroom in the house. Um, That's and, what I do right now. Uh, my wife has actually been very, very considerate. She had to work a late shift at uh, the high school she's a custodian at. And uh, I was talking to her about how I would, like, move the camera set up to the garage or the shop for this interview. And she said, no, no, do it where you're at because, you know, you might have to show braiding stuff. And that's where most of the braiding stuff is. And she said she'll uh, sack out on the couch tonight, Aww. which Thank I thought you. was e extremely considerate of her. Thank you, Mrs. Torin. We appreciate Mrs. it. Torin, you're the best. All the misses in around here are the best misses. You all married well, I called my wife for that name, by the way. The name of that, uh, uh, whatever it was. What'd she say? Cream pie thing. She said she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that's like, awesome. all right, well, I'll call, I'll text your friend because she's the one that told us about it. Right. That's not the right answer to that. 
I'm sleeping. All right, I'll text your friend. No worries. Yeah, that's not. I don't think that's a good husband move. Just well, saying. it's not a. It's not a long term husband. Yeah, move. I don't think. Think. yeah. <laughs> if you want to be husband number two and not the the last one, sure. I just lost your tag. Oh, I guess I should turn my ring light back on me, huh? Yeah, you're still streaming even though you're done building. Oh. This is MLS. We love her. All right, so I'm almost done. I've got a few more odds and ends. Well, it's a good thing this isn't a race, because if it was, I'd definitely have lost. Oh, there's no races. We have no races. Winky. That's such a cool That's set. Really I yeah. feel like I had that one when I was a kid. I feel like everyone should have had this one when they were a kid. It was so, I mean, I had it. I always remember this as a kid. Wait, they had really cool headset or headdress hats, right? Yeah. yeah, I might have had that set as a kid. I definitely had the the Indian sets. Yeah, that's such a cool piece. Cultural appropriation, she says. No, it's cultural <laughs> appreciation. This is cultural celebration. That's what it is. He's celebrating. Did you have a Jung wants to know if he had this hobby as a child or a hobby uh, as a child. Uh, did I have a hobby in childhood? Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed uh, a lot of reading. That was a lot of what I spent my time doing as a kid. I played D&D uh, &D a little bit. Um, but... Uh, I don't think I had a lot of stuff that you would categorize as actual hobbies. I did like trying to do computer gaming. Um, and since the statute of limitations is well, well past it, I also liked war dialing bulletin board systems in other states using MCI um, <laughs> long distance codes. Outstanding. <laughs> You know, they just extended the statute of limitations. <laughs> right. <laughs> the company in question has been out of business for like 25 years. Uh, so, so speaking of like criminal things and you being a constable and all, uh, have you noticed any sort of shenanigans with the, with the legal system? Or, or I guess watching YouTube and all that as well. I mean, have you noticed any substantial issues? Locally and, uh, in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Um, yeah. There have been, um, there've been some stuff that's like constable related where there's been like a crazy constable doing stuff they're not supposed to, but not sy uh, systemically that I could tell. Um, and the... Uh, um, there was there was something with the uh, um, uh, accounting wise where um, uh, the state police was supposed to use uh, money for uh, something and I can't remember what it was that they just wound up using for their own equipment budget that was uh, in the news but wasn't really um, came to any resolution that I was aware of. And I can hear Mrs. Torrin coming up the steps, so you might hear her voice soon. Hello, Hello, Mrs. Hello dear. Hi, I wasn't going to say anything. No problem. Uh, I've been extolling your virtues, and the, uh, uh, the people here have been... Liar! Uh, <laughs> amazing, Mrs. Torrin. Speaking of Mrs. Torrin, Gwendolyn says, ask Torrin what he got for his wife before they got married. Um, his love? Oh, um, I think that was actually after we got married, but it was within a year or two. I got her a divorce lawyer. Yeah, within a year. Yeah. Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? Wait, yeah, keep... she's, she's coming around here. Um, <laughs> Tell uh, us. Okay, so what happened was is that um, she had uh, she was in the, the divorce process. And is it something like ex, dowry uh, insurance? Is that what that well, is? She, she, told, she told her ex that he could have the house if he would just refinance it, his name. And it had been like a year or two, like, yeah, about yeah. a year and a half since the divorce was. After two years. After two years, he still had not refinanced the house. And so when we were trying to, you know, get 
uh, force a sale on that, most of the people we were talking to were saying, well, it should have been handled in the divorce, except for the fact that uh, they bought the house together 15 years before they got married. Um, and so I figured that the person who would be able to understand and deal with that would be a divorce lawyer. So I hired my wife a divorce lawyer. So that, uh, Love it. It could, and of course, um, he was the one who handled the sale and he um, sold the house for probably a good 50 to $75,000 less than it was worth because it sold in less than 24 hours. Wow. And they had three offers. He wasn't messing nice. around. Well, um, he was trying to, I think, screw her over and was screwing himself over because that was the type of personality he had. Didn't matter how bad he messed it, he, he made himself miserable if he made somebody else miserable in the same in the process. Yeah, so, shit. yeah. Jung says, David, Wendy, and Val come up with Torrance next election catchphrase. Election catchphrase. Vote for me because I'm all you got. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't really need plank. I don't really need an election catchphrase. My wife um, is an excellent cook and she um, brings me dinner uh, when I do the uh, election day stuff. And since it would be rude to just feed me, she feeds the entire um, election crew. She's bribing and... the election crew with lasagna. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's a smart woman. Smart woman. She knows what's what's good. Yeah, she does. <laughs> I'm missing a few pieces that I think are actually inside the house. I'm gonna go grab those and I'll be right back. But okay. on three. Good. That's cute. Oh, that's David. Pretty that's good, cute. Julia. <laughs> I like that's that one, good. Julia. Yeah. Vote for me. I'm torn three. Soaring with Torin. Soaring with Torin. Oh, yeah. I actually went ahead and got business cards for my channel made up because I was going to a convention in Virginia. And that was to, oh, I forgot to mention, I also did a braid for uh, science fiction and fantasy author Larry Correa. Um, and uh, figured, he recently um, wrote a nonfiction book uh, uh, called In Defense of the Second Amendment, where he goes over a lot of the gun control arguments and just eviscerates them. Um, so... All uh, gun laws are unconstitutional. Yep, pretty much. Every single one. But he, of them. but he go. He also goes over. Well, these are the arguments, and they don't work for X, Y, and Z reasons. Um, so, but yeah, he's uh, um, he's he's a good author in general. He's. I recently listened to his um, uh, the audiobook for his latest um, epic fantasy novel. Um, the series is Son of the Black Sword, or sorry, uh, Saga of the Forgotten Warrior. And the first book in that is Son of the Black Sword. Um, and uh, if you like epic fantasy, I highly recommend it. Hell yeah. Uh, What's it called? Um, the series is Saga of the Forgotten Warrior. It's a five book, well, potentially a six book series. Um, and it takes place in a world that is essentially like uh, India as in subcontinent culture, there used to be, um, it's, there are humans in the world. Uh, and at one point in time, there was like a rain of demons that landed and they were fought into the ocean. So the demons live and control the ocean. Uh, humans live on the land and the, the people that fought the demons in the ocean were supposed to have their descendants, uh, save them when the demons came out of the ocean again and they were the kings, but they were so tyrannical that the people overthrew them, got rid of the kings, and instead established a rule of law, where the law is the uh, controls everything. The um, uh, the judges are the the highest caste. It's a caste system. They have uh, enforcers of the law. Uh, they have protectors. They have uh, they have a they have a merchant caste. They have a warrior caste, and they have like an administrator caste. And uh, the story starts off where you're dealing with uh, a character named Ashok Vidal, who is kind of like a medieval Judge Dredd. He's got a uh, essentially a sentient sword that has the memories of everybody who's wielded it, and um, they're okay. required to accept dual challenges from anybody who challenges them. Um, and it starts off where he's fighting uh, one of the sea demons and uh, kills it. There's magic in this world, but 
the only source for magic is essentially the bodies of uh, dead demons and this the black metal that makes up like the these these swords that are they're called ancestor blades because they have the memories of the ancestors and um it it progresses in ways you do not expect um and there is a potential world ending crisis coming up and it's it's just a really well told story the characters are well developed uh, their motivations are believable um and it's i just highly recommend it if you like epic fantasy i'm gonna have to check it out we've got a uh there's a pretty cool bookstore um in the area that uh there it's it's a pretty cool place maybe i'll take you guys there sometime maybe i'll stream it it's a pretty oh, awesome he's store he's charlene fine art thank you for the five dollar super chat was having sad moment remembering mm -hmm. my kitty who passed and found your bright spot. MLS, so sorry to hear about your channel already subscribed. Thank you. And we're so sorry for your loss. Very much so. And uh, hopefully she's up in kitty heaven playing with all the, chasing yeah. all the bugs and playing with all the yarn balls. Yeah. Love it. And thank you for the super chat, Elise. Absolutely. Appreciate you. We're always happy to be the bright spot in somebody's evening. Hey, if I'm the bright spot in somebody's day or evening, I will take it every time. You are always a bright spot in my day when I get to see you. Oh, thanks, Wendy. That's true. Love you, babes. Mm. Mm. Oh, shit. Torin, so do you like uh, movies then, since TV's not really your thing? Do you have favorite movies? Um. I, I'm sorry, I meant to say with the, when we're talking about the TV, I do tend to watch like um, uh, stuff on like Netflix and uh, other streaming services. So there are some series I watch, but a lot of them I tend to get distracted. But I do like movies as well. Um, uh, there was a uh, uh, anime series. I oh, um, I did recently watch uh, the entire run of o the Overlord anime. Um, I'm not really a big into the Isekai uh, genre, but it was a really well-told uh, version of that, um, where it's not so much uh, the standard, but it, how uh, people in a world deal when an overpowered uh, NPC shows up uh, in their world. And uh, I really liked how that one turned out. Or I, let me phrase it. I enjoyed the well-crafted story. Do not watch it uh, or do not show it to kids. Uh, it's not so much um, uh, adult stuff as it is very dark themes, but uh, it's a really well told story of the of the genre. What's up, Nate? Um, hi, I'm sorry. What? Sorry, I was just saying hi to Nick. My bad. Oh, okay. Hey, Nick. Nice to see you on. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Nick, was on on the, Nick, Nick was on earlier. He was on with okay. me last night. He, he came on my stream last night. We That's so out. cool. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm missing two uh, shields. That's the only thing I can't find. But I did find the other Indian lady in uh, in my nice. house. Oh, really she, was, she was in the audience for the uh, Lizzie Borden Lizzie Borden trial. Yeah, I'm like I know I've seen her somewhere. Their but shields the were like kite shields, right? They were the big teardrop upside down teardrop yep. shapes. Yeah. yeah, I can't find them. I'm missing those two. Oh. Hey, but this isn't. It's not bad for. Like not knowing where anything was, just sort for, of like spontaneous. Like I have a book, let's build something. For a thirty-year-old set, you'd be able to find everything, but yeah. two pieces, you're doing up pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. You did deserve it, Nick. You did, Nick. You did. He was he was a beast last night. So we were I all asleep early last night. Who did you stream with? On my channel. No, I missed it. I was... No, he was. Um, we didn't he, start. He sent me a link. I was so exhausted <laughs> last night. Like my eyes are well, heavy. What time did you I just, start? Like twelve thirty. Yeah, I just got back from <laughs> Ghostbusters, where I was like trying to stay awake in the theater. I was like driving home, and it was like, oh my god, my bed. I oh, I'm so looking forward to my bed. I lay down and I hear doo -doo -doo -doo. it's Valhalla with a link. I'm like, I'm not coming on. <laughs> <laughs> so we were all sitting in Rakeda's chat last night, waiting for him to start. And like 30 minutes after he was supposed to start, he jumps on. He's like, hey, something came up. Can't stream tonight later, y'all. And I was like, well, F this. I'm going to start a stream. And I nice. threw my link in Rakeda's chat. And like a bunch of people came over here. Nice. Uh, Nick, Nick Starov jumped on. And then Wilhelm from Cellulite Podcast 
jumped on and we were, we were having a good time. He lived in the neighborhood where my wife lived when she first came to this country. So. Yeah. I love Will. I love that dude to death. He's amazing. He's good. Is that Malcolm Wilhelm? No. Oh, because no. I've seen that guy in chat. But no, I it's know. Cellulite Podcast is what his, his channel okay. is. You know, you know I don't know anything. Yeah. He's um I think he's one of I think he's buddies with Drex, like in real life. Like I think they've been friends for a long time. I Detroit, could be wrong. You, uh, have you ever been to Detroit? I have not been to Detroit. I have driven relatively close to it um yeah. twice uh when I was driving from Idaho to Pennsylvania. That's already too much for me. Detroit is awesome. Valhalla's gonna no, get up here. He's going to come up here in August when Nick comes, and we're going to go sailing. You know, in you said August? You sailed to Detroit? August. Nick's coming up to August. <laughs> there's a lake Nick's by Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Oh, I'm so ignorant. I don't there's, know. A, there's a lake there. There's, there's like five there's lakes that, that kind of surround <laughs> Michigan and, and New York. And, like the Great you know. Lakes? Those are the oh, ones. Yeah, like the the ones. Oh, you've heard of them. You've heard of them. I didn't know Detroit was there. I didn't know about Detroit. I always thought Detroit was like urban and like. Well, know. it is. That's why it's it is. Horrible. Well, actually, Detroit's not even on a Great Lake. It's on the fat Thank spot you. in the river called yeah. Lake St. Clair, but it's really just a fat spot in the river that connects Lake Huron to Lake Erie. All right. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of lakes. A lot of lakes. Yeah, yeah a lot Some of great lakes. lakes. There's more something. lakes than Minnesota. The Ew. land of a thousand lakes, whatever it's called. I feel like this is going to be like a, a springtime Easter decoration. I think forward. I got that one for one of the Definitely kids and put it in their Easter basket this year. I mean, the yeah. Easter bunny did. Mm -hmm. I got Lego um, ornaments. I ordered a Lego, and it came with Lego ornaments to hang on the tree. Did you get but the big look, art? No, no, they're three round ones. One oh, okay. green, yellow, and red, or something like that. But they're they're so cool looking. They're actually out all the time. They look kind of Star Warsy. <laughs> I feel like it's so they're in my Star Wars room as some sort of like Star Wars thing. Really they like go over to Will. Chicago. Was that your first experience with Will Half Irish? Will's a good dude. I like him. I'm, uh, where the hell did I meet him? I think the last thing I remember last night was receiving David's text about Ghostbusters. Or <laughs> I passed out hella early. Detroit awesome. is north of uh, Canada, by the way. Were you seeing that song? What is that foreigner song? Is South Detroit? That's Windsor, Ontario. That's Canada. Uh, Born and raised in South Detroit. Get it, Vahana. But remember, he took them to the He didn't care where he was going as long as he was leaving Detroit. Just a small town girl. Living in a lonely world. Is it Foreigner? Is that the band? Foreigner? No, it's Journey. How dare you? Journey. God bless it. Is there a difference, really? <gasps> yes. Oh, my God, David. Like, is there a difference between the Beatles and the Stones? Yeah, yes. that one I don't care about. I don't yeah, care about the Stones that. are awesome. The Beatles are not. Not a Beatles fan, y'all. Sorry. I mean, but you get 80s music involved, and then I got something to say about it. <laughs> we only do 80s Billy Idol. Let's <laughs> oh, Lauren, favorite like music. I know you don't like Western, and you don't like BTS or B. B no, BS he said he doesn't whatever. know it. He didn't BKS, say he didn't like BT, BS, BTS. BTS. BTK? BTK? Buying Torture BTK. Kill? <laughs> Maybe he All right, like so it. Torin, you can you, you have to pick. You can only listen to one type of music. You're on an island, all that sort of stuff. What do you go with? Um, trying to think Ooh. for a second here. Um, probably. Um, I guess I'd probably just go for uh, uh, generalized rock. Um, he was going to say the Beatles, but I shit on him. So now <laughs> no, actually, if I was going to go for a specific group, it might it might be the Moody Blues. Uh, the my dad, the Moody, Moody Blues. Blues. My my dad uh, loved them when I was growing up, so I listened to them a lot. My dad listened to Tom T. Hall. He was awesome. Do you know Tom T. Hall? Anyone? No. I've heard the name, Speaking but I couldn't. Snake, I like beer. There's a song. 
uh, all about loving beer. And like he died and went to heaven and it was rivers of beer. And <laughs> it's Valhalla's dream. I know, right? right? This is, this is his song. I'm about it. My dad listened to um, Placido Domingo and Selena. No. <laughs> okay, no. Lefty jumped no, out of work. To opera. To to we had to listen to opera music growing up. <laughs> opera music and classical music. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. No wonder. All no right, wonder so Tori, being an engineer, yeah, right. if I was to decree upon you the authority to enact one law policy thing, whatever, Ooh. that you particularly engineered, that's going to better society for the best. Uh, like with like the one thing that you can do. What what is it that you're engineering? What is it that you're doing? What is it that you're implementing? Just off the top of my head, uh, I would say remove uh, judicial and prosecutorial immunity. Ooh, I like that. I like, I like that. that a lot. Imagine a world where there's consequences for your actions. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. I like that answer. I do. That was that was a really good answer, actually. I, I like Torin. Foo Fighters, really? You don't like Foo Fighters? I like Nirvana. I like Dave Grohl on a drum set, not a guitar, not singing. Get him on a drum set. I'm good. Foo I well, love me, me. <laughs> his first singer kind of went the way of the dodo. So he didn't really have much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Lefty knows all the he knows the three tenors. Tor, Who what was your are first you? concert you went to? I'm sorry, what? What was your first concert that you went to? Music concert. Uh, Van Halen in Boise, Idaho in like nineteen eighty six, I think. Um, cool. Who was it? I'm sorry. Van, Van Halen. Halen. The real Van Halen, 1986 Van Halen. I grew up with the 90s Van Halen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> These are not fitting the way it shows on the. Uh, Where's Megan Fox? Do you to see that an engineer is even having problems with the Lego? <laughs> Poor Megan. <laughs> yes, he is. Well, Look at Valhalla's built two sets tonight. I felt two sets tonight. I'm having the problem with uh, this one here. They're not. There's like a little gap that it's showing, and I can't get that. The the parts, if they snap on, actually line up correctly, and then other parts don't fit after that. You should be able uh, to slide it, um, given that piece, the shape underneath. You should be able to snap it in and then slide it. I'm pretty sure. This it's it. it's a standard bottom here. And so it'll only go. Uh, oh. So it's like it needs to be over just a little bit more, but it won't actually do it. And if I move it over to the next spot, uh, it doesn't, the rest of it looks even further off than it's supposed to be. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, um, do it as best I can and just realize that it's going to look a bit weird. Uh, Probably the best. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I have, I have two builds as well. Oh, shit. I have the Wild West uh, scene with the so white man awesome. fighting themselves and leaving the Indians in peace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. So these are my two sets. That's pretty yeah. awesome set. Both from like ninety three, ninety four, something like that. So I was like thirteen, fourteen when I got these. But uh, let's see. All right. So you see how, um, let's see, where is it? Um, okay. This one uh, here, the uh, little thing fits up. There's no like gaps yeah. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is the. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's the best I can get it. And as you can see, there's a gap between the parts and they just won't fit to where they fit flush. Oh, okay. That's weird. So it's not a big thing and where it finally sits, I don't think it's going to cause a Our yeah, it sits on a faulty faulty Lego set. Yeah, it'll it'll fit. I mean, it's not going to the there's Make it's break an edge it's an edge piece. Nothing's going to be able to uh uh 
bump up against it where it won't fit once it's in place. So I'm not going to stress over it, but it's annoying my sense of uh, justice and rightness with design. <laughs> Pam says, take out your knife and shave it off. <laughs> Legos are pretty tough. They're pretty hard. I can't imagine a, a cutting through a Lego would be all that easy. You have to burn it. Right. Yeah, one of the things I found out when I was getting into 3D printing is that uh, you really can't 3D print Lego pieces. You can't get the tolerances good enough. So did you were you telling me this before, or have I had this conversation somewhere else? He mentioned it earlier, I think. Well, he mentioned it with his company, that his company that made the stamped plastic couldn't even get the tolerances that lego requires okay that's what he mentioned earlier i can remember that i still don't know the name of the artwork that he does <laughs> <laughs> kumi himo kumi himo that's right me and names i just don't get the names yeah you're pretty bad with names it's even it's it's oh no that's uh i was gonna yeah it's scrolling at the bottom yeah, kumi himo. yeah. it's been there for four hours and 14 minutes almost yeah, almost the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this bag is almost done. Nice. What step are you on? Uh, 117. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry it's taken so long. I apologize. You're good. But, but we are on track for roughly like an 11, 11 and a half hour stream. And I don't yeah, think I yeah. was prepared for that at all. We, we could we could do a two parter. <laughs> we we should do, bring we'll it back to finish. <laughs> I like that idea. I think that would be beautiful. I'm the longest okay stream we've ever had was six hours with uh, um, Joe from Good. And Logic. we all bar yeah. we barely made it. Poor Joe. I'm okay with either oh. option. I'm actually really in good shape right now. I. I uh, went to bed late last night. I stayed up through the end of Valhalla's stream, and then Thanks, I uh, nice. um, I went ahead and um, uh, slept in late, and I took my second uh, modafinil dose right before um, uh, right before the start of this stream. All right? Yeah, um, it's it's supposed to fit like this. Uh, sorry. Uh, and to get it to fit on, it has to go like this because this is supposed to be flush. With oh, that. right. Um, though I suppose I could take this last one off and just move it over. That would that would potentially work. Uh, it's not ideal, but it would uh, at least fit the aesthetic. There we go. It doesn't Ooh, match yeah. the thing, but the top looks right. It looks right. good enough, right? That's what we need. Good enough. Good enough yeah. for government work. Good enough. I got to get ready for Dollywood. Good enough. Good enough for government work. Is that how you say that? That's how All I right, say I've it. Got, I've got a request to pull up this, uh, the Werner's mural from Flint. I got to download this again. Oh, here, I'll just pull it up this way. Present screen. Go. All right, that's Flint, Michigan. There, the Verner's mural. Wait, where's all the needles? Yeah, it's not Jamie's Flint. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Four years in wood. Yep. So it must have been the Civil War if it came from 1866. So the dentist like put these chemicals in a wooden barrel and then went off to the Civil War and came back four years later, and he had Verner's. And so yikes why are they yeah. leprechauns they're, uh, they're like a little i don't know i don't those know. are definitely Racist. leprechauns bro yeah i don't know you Do guys you ever seen a burner bottle you, you guys no. ever you don't know what burners is at all i don't think i've ever heard of it um that is so good i, I have some oh. is it an alcohol burners no, no it's a seltzer i mean it's ginger ale ginger ale oh you talked about that earlier yeah it's probably like it's probably called Schweppes or something in another state. You know how like Hellman's is best foods in California. You all no, have it's not. It's Burners. Is Burners. Is Burners. Oh, it is. All right. Michigan is beautiful. Wanda says. Okay, we'll take your word for it. Michigan is beautiful. It's just got a lot it's, of issues. I've never been there. 
so I can't say. Is he? Um, I'll yeah. go visit. You know, I love I to travel. I'll is. go anywhere once. Well, not anywhere. I found my problem. Yay. I, I was off like a half. I was off a half step. Okay. Here's the Verner's logo. That's yeah, definitely yeah. a leprechaun, bro. I don't know what he is. He's a leprechaun. Yeah. It looks like a Scottish leprechaun. <laughs> like, doesn't even look Irish. It looks Scottish. Oh, that's fitting way better. Yep. Oh, yeah. The problem was, the problem yeah. was is these, these three along here, I originally put flush, and they were supposed to be the half step off. Mm. So now everything okay. lines up the way it's supposed to. You guys least, tell me. <laughs> at least tell Charlene me. Fine Art for four ninety nine nice. says, I painted several murals in a middle school in Lansing, Michigan. I do not know if they're still there, but I hope so. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's super cool. I hope they're cool. still there, too. Sorry, Does this here. version of the Werner's um, mascot look like he just unalived someone? Oh, <laughs> that's frightening. <laughs> And who has green eyes? Like one percent of the population has green eyes. That guy's green eyes are pretty cool, though. He's got green They're eyes amazing. and like blood all over rare. his face. And do you know mostly only men have beard. green eyes? Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, I did not. My eyes are the most beautiful brown you have ever seen. <laughs> Just letting you know. It's because you're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get my so, so my no one on the panel has ever tasted Verner's. No, we're no. not from Michigan. All right, I'm bringing Verner's down oh, the dollar. Torin yeah. says he has. Torin has. Yep. Uh, yep. Where uh, I the thing I do uh, near Pittsburgh, they uh, they have Verner's at the local uh, grocery stores. Oh, all right. I never even heard of it. Like Schweitzer's or something like that. Oh. Made right chips and Jiffy Mix are also from Michigan. I never heard of those either. What are these never things? Heard of Jiffy, you mix? Of? Jiffy Mix, the trail mix with like the Czech cereal and pretzels and no, it's ready made um, like cakes and breads and muffins and stuff. Never heard. I've heard of Jiffy. Oh, food. oh, biscuit mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I have like the cornbread muffins in the pantry. Yep, that's Jiffy. Yeah. Oh, we I know. In the little box. The ones yeah. in the little. Yep. Yes. I used yeah, to be really their poor I used to. I definitely know those. They were like 59 cents a box. Oh, yeah. They're super cheap. And oh, yeah. My older kids <laughs> know that brand. High quality. Made from Michigan. I've been to their factory. Yeah, the cornbread. My fingers is. touched that flower. Actually, you right. know what? So this area of Tennessee, um, there's a, a brand of flower called Lily Flower that mm -hmm. is like uh, one of the best in the world for baking, I guess, because it's like a very soft flower. We need to send some back with Baker if we can make that happen. I don't know if you can get it through customs or not, but we need to. Mm. No? Don't talk about it on stream. Well, there you go. That's true. That's my true. sister has green eyes, and we're half Mexican and half Caucasian. My mom has blue eyes, the most beautiful Wait, blue half eyes. what? Your half mom has Caucasian. blue eyes? My mom's white. My mom's British, actually. I have, I'm half white and half Mexican. That's not Caucasian. That's British. That's Anglican. Anglican. What? I mean, of dramatic descent. She's half white. I mean, she's Caucasians white. come from the Caucasus region and Egypt. Just and ask Turkey. Kamala Harris. Well, she she's got she's, blonde hair and blue eyes. Well, she did when she was young. She still actually has blonde hair because she colors it, and um, blue blue eyes. So <laughs> I got my sister has green eyes, like beautiful big green eyes, and I got I have. Hazel, they're like yellow. They have a yellow. So Torrent, what is the most if if I'm gonna to go to Pennsylvania and I and I want to like taste the most Pennsylvania thing, what am I gonna taste? What am I gonna eat or drink? Um, the most actual Pennsylvania as opposed to like big city Pennsylvania is probably um uh, scrapple and something else for breakfast. Scrapple. What is scrapple? S scrapple is unique. I've never had it. I've only heard about it. Scrapple is essentially everything that's left over in a pig that would normally be made into like some sort of sausage or hot dog, 
but it's combined mm -hmm. with uh, cornmeal and pepper. That sounds like, like something I pepper. would like. Don't they put fruit in it sometimes? Um, no, they kind of like fry it up with pa as a patty type thing. Okay, there you go. There you go. It sounds like um, stuff. I call it stuff. When I just have a bunch of leftover things in the fridge, I put it in a one big pan and I cook it up and we call it stuff. And that's what's for dinner. That's good. That's good. Scrapple um, is amazing, Wanda says. I've never had it. It sounds kind of scary. The other gray meat. I kind of want to try it. The other gray meat. That's funny. Yeah. Did you lose one? Yep. Uh, four by. Uh, Happens like every time. Dropped on the floor. Oh. Everyone yeah. loses a piece. I have a hardwood floor, but I think it might have uh, slipped under the um, cabinet. And of course, you can tell I'm a constable because I've got leg towel. irons. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the bed. He did say he was in the master bedroom. He did, yeah. Okay. That boy. That right. boy. Get, it, get, it, get it, get it, get <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to run with it since it's still the bedroom. I um, need beer and a bio break. I'll be back momentarily. Right. And also my... Uh... Oh, snap. Oh, it's a Batman your, uh, utility belt, y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great No fire. Now David monitor. really Thank wants you, a constable. I do want to be a constable. David, someone in chat earlier said, David, the defense attorney and constable -ing do not go together. <laughs> I'm going to cut off my camera for just a little bit while I search real quick here. I'll leave the, I'll leave the audio on. Oh, we can hear you rustling around. Yep. Because <laughs> there's a limited range of where it could have gone. So I just need to crawl around on the floor. It's so logical. Like it's Scrapple is so Eastern PA. I'm going to have to try it now. Yeah. I haven't. I'm going to put you to pig in a few years. I'll have to do that. First. You know what I tried for the first time a few weekends ago was lamb. Rack of lamb. I've never tried lamb before. How'd you like it? I loved it. That's good, isn't it? I really liked it. I was shocked. Yeah. Found it. All right. There you go. It was I once board. had a piece missing that didn't actually exist in the set. Thankfully, I had a piece. In the, oh, um, I, that was on camera, right? Like, did that happen on stream? That was when Valhalla and I were going uh, dual. Uh, yeah, we were building I, yeah, the same that's set. right. Yeah, I mm -hmm. yeah, I was in Florida that night. Mm -hmm. I had that to go run in and grab a piece out of the bin. That's right. I remember that. How, How do you feel about it? duck? Yeah. You eat I've duck, Thorin? Tried it. Do I read? Uh, I, do I eat it? duck or read it? Yeah. Have you eat. ever had it, eaten it? My wife calls it the bacon of the bird world. So, yes, I have had duck. Oh, what is that? This is a uh, beater sword for uh, the braiding stand. I did a little oh, bit okay. of uh, CNC engraving on it. Nice. That's really pretty. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay. Have you spoken with uh, potentially criminal Sean? Um, a little bit in chat when he was on another uh, streamer's thing. Uh, I think I usually would to... get along quite a bit. Yep, and he's actually close enough that when I go to that thing uh, in Western PA, I could probably drop by and say, you know, meet him for a drink or something like that. Because well, he has a sword too. Uh, he has a wooden sword from um, this Japanese training thing that he was doing. Okay. I also have actual uh, swords, too. I'm sure he does, too. He just doesn't show those on YouTube. Yep. Understandable. All right. And there we go. All right. So that move is now done. Or, and you're getting distracted. Keep building. <laughs> I'm building. I'm sorry. All right. It easily happens. That's the challenge of this stream is um, building a Lego while you... Uh, Answer questions. Yep. Because it's not well, the I'm, easiest thing to do. Nope. And I am on move 121. 121 so. of 300. Oh, you're getting there. Yep. David, I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. So if we do this as a two parter, when were you thinking of doing the second half? Oh, I have no idea. We'd have to get Valhalla and Wendy back up here. 
because we got to okay. coordinate with all of them. Yeah, it's. I don't know what we have coming up. I couldn't do uh, next weekend because I have a prior commitment. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking that uh, I need where I'm where I'm going to store this and where I would do it relative to how long I'd need to store it. Because obviously I'm not going to work on it uh, off stream because that you know defeat the uh, defeats the purpose. Yeah. Uh, have you played Joker before? No, I have not. I don't tend to play a lot of card games. I suck at them for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so realizing I suck at them, I don't uh, uh, don't tend to play them a lot. Unfortunately. I don't know if there's just something with my brain that doesn't deal well with the uh, probabilities, uh, but whenever I've played them, I always lose horribly. Even the computer versions, I do horribly. So it's not specifically not dealing with people well. It's just... Well, it's not necessarily about winning. It's about having fun and playing the game. Um, I also don't have fun playing it, so... <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> Uh, so Bahala now, says Joker is awesome, and Stray says you're doing great, Torn. Thank you. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this. The conversation's great. The uh, mental challenge is nice. Uh, I, I do like I do like challenging my brain and uh, working on that neuroplasticity, uh, keep things going. Because when you if you start stagnating, uh, things start going downhill. So. Uh, I, I actually do things like I play um, uh, like the Microsoft Sudoku games, uh, their, their daily challenges, because uh, it, it makes my brain work in a way that I don't normally do. I saw a guy, uh, uh, I saw a stream the other day. I don't know if it's a stream or just a YouTuber. He, um, he plays Sudoku live on stream, and he had the world's hardest Sudoku. And it started with the only thing that was in there was a two. Ouch. And, and he was like, oh, my God. Well, we're going to try to figure it out. And so I fast forwarded. He was six hours in. And he was like, well, he's still figuring it out. He only had maybe three quarters of it done. I hate Sudoku, by the way. It frustrates me to know him. Um, but I so I fast forward six hours in, and he's still playing the thing. And then. I ended up turning it off. I don't remember where he ended up with it or how long it took. But uh, there's some interesting things out there you can find on, on YouTube. Yep. But I don't but, know how you would do it with only one number. The, the thing is, is that um, if you only have one number, uh, the way I would, unless there's some, uh, my understanding of how it works is you can create uh, Sudoku fields, I mean, boards. Uh, and if you only have one, I don't see any reason you couldn't do it any way you wanted to do it as long as it was self-consistent. So that was why it, that wasn't making much sense to me, unfortunately. But uh, um, Well, I'm, see, I don't play the game. Mm -hmm. But it was supposed to be like the world's toughest Sudoku. And, but isn't it like it has to be, you have to get digits is it zero through nine or one through nine in all rows yeah one through nine in all rows uh um, and then in the cubes as well yeah in the three by three cubes yeah so so we started off with the two and one and one thing maybe the mm, yeah again i don't know what the what the actual issue was but yeah. um it was supposed to be the hardest one six hours in uh he was still doing it Yep, the uh, there's a kind of a version of that for um, uh, jigsaw puzzles I've heard of called the Purple Horror. It's a three thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, and it's one unvarying shade of purple. <laughs> no, it would be horrible. Yep. Uh, and when you're done, you just got a straight purple thing. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, I can see for the challenge. I'm sorry, what? It'd be anticlimactic. You can't. I mean, what are you gonna do with it? Yeah. Um. Still looking for a couple of pieces here for this particular move, and there's a lot of little ones, so it's kind of hard to pick them out. Uh, but I'm getting close. 
for the ones listed for here. I hope I didn't like drop one. I ah, there it is that I didn't see. All right, so two of those, and I need five of these. Um, I don't think there's any other stories that I should uh, bring up that I haven't talked about. Oh, um, one that probably you guys would like that uh, uh, I haven't done yet that involves my wife as well. Um, my wife had, my wife was the one who actually proposed to me, and oh, uh, I think I figured that. Uh, oh, good, we got people back. Um, and I thought that uh, uh, since she had proposed, that I should probably introduce her to my folks. But I didn't want to tell them that uh, she had actually proposed yet. And I, so I was, you know, introducing her as my girlfriend. So um, I dial up my folks, and my mom answers the phone. And I say, Mom, I'd like you to meet Sam. Or my wife, what's your last name? Nice. <laughs> and uh, the, the, one of the roommates I was living with at the time just about fell on the floor laughing. That's awesome. I'd, I'd known her through the medieval stuff, and I knew her first name, but we hadn't really ever mentioned her last name. Oh, that's and, funny. And uh, <laughs> uh, as somebody else had said, uh, it didn't really matter what her first name was because I knew what her last name was going to be. I mean, her knew, knew what her last name was because yeah. I, yeah. So nice. So you how did you propose? Try to, you should probably try to know the first name though. I'll I'll say that much. I, <laughs> I did know her I did know her first name well in advance. That's a plus. That's a plus yeah. for a marriage. So do you when take I was this person civil war, to be your wife? Yeah, I think so. I don't know who she is, but I, I do. When I would do civil war reenacting, again, a lot of us have different period names and stuff. I mm -hmm. I went on a date with this one um girl, woman, whatever. We were young. We were like 21. How and, long have uh, you been LARPing? You've been doing this your whole life? I started when I was 16. <laughs> I haven't done it since I was oh, like 24. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done it since 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 I was like 24 or so. But anyways. Uh, Why do you think I said I didn't Dave know her real name. I didn't know her real name. <sighs> Like we went on a couple of dates. I never learned her real name. Oh, by the way, I never told you my reenacting name. Nope. I, was, no, I, I didn't, didn't forget it. I said, think of a pie company. Yep. Jasper Frisbee. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Frisbee never heard Pie of that. Company? That's no. where the whole Frisbees come from. You know my my buck's name is Jasper, right? My big yeah, goat. I know. Yeah, every this, time you this, say it, this I think goat of right name. here. This yeah, one? I know. Every time you say it, I think Jasper Frisbee. <laughs> yeah, from Kentucky. From uh, I can't remember where in Kentucky, but Jasper Frisbee. Those are probably already in Michigan. Hers potato chips, living on bologna. Sheets food, Yingling. Yingling. No, Sheets yep. is not anywhere in Michigan. We had to take a special trip to Sheets to grab that crap food that you guys Jasper love so much. Sounds like a character in, uh, oh, damn it. What's the vampire love story? Twilight. Thank you. Twilight. It sounds like Jasper's Jasper and Twilight. Frisbee yeah. From Twilight. <laughs> oh, I got tricked into reading those real books. Life role playing games. Jasper Wait, what? Frisbee. I could, oh. Ellie said she used to do real life role playing games with armor and weapons. I could see that. That's LARPing, Ellie. I don't even That's know good. her in real life, but I could see that. The that um, some shit. I love. I that play role playing it. games um, in real life too, but it's it's called lawyering. <laughs> What's Dungeons and Dragons then? It's tabletop. That's in your mind. It's yeah, collective you're not, imagination. You're not dressed up and trying to. Stop oh, they don't dress sword. up. Well, sometimes you can, and that makes the game much more interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's. More I always fun. wanted. Then you then you get banned from Netflix if you dress up for your D and D. There's an episode of Community where they do D and D and they banned it because Chang, the the Chinese yeah. uh, Spanish, teacher, Spanish teacher, dresses up as a dark owl and they're like, "Oh, that's blackface!" So you got to ban. <laughs> that was another good show. I like that show. I never that watched that show. one. That's a great show, Valhalla. You should watch that from it's, start to finish. It's I don't watch a lot of shows, y'all. I don't watch that oh, much. I'm not, 
Instead of YouTube, forget YouTube for a bit. <laughs> Says the retired streamer. Yeah. Yeah. With that's not monetized anymore. That's got it. <laughs> I'm not taking any of your YouTube advice ever, bro. Wednesday at 10:45 p.m. is going to be my last stream. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> On that channel. Uh, By the way, go sub everyone and give me some watch hours so I can get monetized again for my last stream on Wednesday at 10 <laughs> <laughs> One of the few women playing the game. My character was made Royal Dark Druid. Oh my god, yes. Okay, I have a lot of nerd friends. I believe you. If you've if you've LARPed, you definitely have a lot of nerd friends. And I'm here for it. I follow a, a few ladies on Facebook that like to um, do the role playing stuff in costumes. That's Fun. not on YouTube. That's on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to that court category on the hub. I know what you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of sexy time, I got Steve Bosney's. My book finally showed. I shouldn't say finally. It wasn't like like he didn't send it, but it finally got delivered. I got I got the first copy of his uh, hardback, the smutty one. The, <laughs> I fought the... Desires. Um, Brewster, yeah. the one-eyed wonder dog, for my Brucey, Brucey, the one-eyed wonder dog. Yeah, Brucey. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, I bought it for my uh, cousin's kid who lives in uh, Chicago right. area uh, for Christmas. I never sent it. Then I finally packaged it up, and I, like, I put a label on it with the address, and then it sat in my car for like two weeks. And I'm like, you know what? I'm taking this damn thing to the post office. Went to the post office, wrong address. They can't find the address. Mm -hmm. So now it's been sitting on my front, um, by like my front door for another two weeks while I figure. Might as so well just save it for address. when you get grandkids. Rear Aussie, are you leaving? Is that what that means? Good night, buddy. Thanks for your well, good night, Rear Aussie. It's like three Thanks in the for afternoon. Out for with you, us. Right? Four. Appreciate yeah. it. Where did that, this one, right? Yes. Did well, Rob talk about get... Lawyers and Dragons? Rob did not talk about Lawyers and Dragons, but I see that they play it. Um, um, I don't know if they're still doing it. They haven't done it in a while, I don't think. No, I think I yeah. think Hogue Law was hosting that, okay. and then when he yeah. had his stroke, I think they stopped doing it. No, they still, they've still they've done it since. But well, I think so. they took a break anyway, or yeah, right, I could be wrong. I th oh, it, it was Hogue's channel, but I think it uh, was it Prototopics. It was the actual DM. I am I I'm not sure to be honest. It I always popped up it like tell you. Sunday mornings, I thought, right? Or Sundays? I don't I was not awake Sunday mornings. I have no idea. You weren't awake this Saturday morning. mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I texted you at like seven AM and you didn't respond until noon. Well, you in your text said, I understand that you guys won't wake up until noon, but here's this information that I want to say. Yeah, I texted you and Wendy, and I said, yeah, I know you guys, neither one of you wake up until noon Eastern. Well, in her defense, that's like 7 a.m. in California. Something like that. In my defense, I don't like mornings, and I drank a lot last night, so I, I was not waking up. I did FNL. Got boozed out of FNL and was like, okay, I got to go, y'all. And then like three hours later, two hours later, got uh, conned, conned, not a good word, convinced, convinced to uh, start a stream at like 1 a.m. <laughs> Who convinced you? Uh, Levy, mostly. It was mostly no. Levy. He said, and I quote, you should start a stream. And that was enough for me. That that, that, yeah. that worked. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden I was like, oh, Valhalla's live. And I'm getting a link. I'm not, I'm not going on. My I, I my my head literally had just hit the pillow. I plugged in my phone, I set it down, <laughs> and I laid down and I hear the text. I'm like, what the, who's texting me? And of course it's you. Here's a link. You want on? Oh, I was sending links out like crazy. <laughs> I was there. I don't even think I responded to you. I was just like, no, I'm probably just, not. I, I set I, it down. And you I shouldn't have. <laughs> you shouldn't have responded to me. <laughs> so, Torin, I will say that I there is a an affinity for Asian. Um, uh, I don't know lore. I guess with you, right? You're you're surrounded by this mystique of old Japanese braids and and. 
sword fighting novels that I'm going to go buy with awesome magic swords. Where did this all start, man? Where did the, where did the, I like samurai come from or models or probably started with, uh, like, uh, uh, discovering, uh, anime when I was like a teenager. Um, also probably watching, the uh, uh, TV series, uh, I think it was called The Ninja or whatever. It had like Lee Van Cleef in it, uh, teaching you know a new kid how a young kid how to be a ninja, uh, stuff like that. Like um, uh, action adventure movies with uh, uh, samurai and stuff like that. It's, it's mainly where I ran across it growing up as a teenager, and that's kind of where it went from there. Did you ever watch American Ninja? I believe I did, the, but it didn't like stand out in my mind. The okay. movie? I do yeah, remember the movie American movie. Ninja. Ooh, it was like it? one of those 80s uh, action adventure stuff. Wendy's Pretty got sexy. the Death Penalty Desires book. Again, I Wendy's still don't... Read a, Wendy's going to read a chapter slowly and sultry for us. I totally will. Look, Not a whole chapter. It, mine's number one out of 25. Yeah! And it's signed by Steve. And check this out. He so sent out was, 25 books that all said one of 25, by the way. <laughs> That's so mean. Check this out, though. Wait. <clears throat> so Steve had, um, I don't remember what stream he was on or if it was his own stream. Might have been his own stream. And he was talking about his book or something, and I made a suggestion in the chat, and he's like, oh, Wendy H., I think I know you from the Lego stream. And, of course, in my head, I'm going, of course you do. Duh. Of course you do. Anyway, we were on it for hours together. I know, right? And then he goes, wait, what are you saying? So I wrote what I meant to say because he didn't understand it. And I said something <clears> about a woman doesn't fall in love with a guy randomly. Like, he has to have a, a family behind him. Like, a good woman wants a man that has a good family. That's, like, a big deal. So he said, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So he said he added it into his book at the last minute. And so he did it. He actually wrote my name in his dedication to his book, in his book. Nice. And I'm actually the first one. He Look, so here, a big thank you to the early supporters is right here. And then he says, uh, Wendy H., who gave me some tips and inspired a chapter. He's amazing, ain't he? Nice. I cried. How cool is that? And I haven't read it yet. I took it to the spa the other day, but I was too. They don't. They don't let you take your phone in the spa anymore because you know people take photos or whatever. And so um, I'm like, well, what oh, kind of spa are you going to? Right. I go to a very nice spa that gives me massages and facials, and they have a pool, and they have a sauna, and they have hot tubs, <laughs> and they have steams. All you know what? Stuff. Giving facials is one of the things I look for when I go to the spa. That's definitely. <laughs> you can't tell. Have you ever read any of Godsey's books? I have not. Uh, I've, you know, I've seen him promote them, uh, so I'm aware of them, but I have not gotten any of them yet. In America, toy. Some of them are. Oh, look at look at Valhalla. <laughs> Valhalla. Which one have you read? I've read most of this one, all of this one. I have that one. This one's a great book, by the yeah, way. I if you guys, if if I was going to recommend any, well, I've only read this one all the way yeah. cover to cover, but this is a absolutely great book. Y'all awesome. need to y'all need to read Prepare. Um, I, I think every young man in the in the world could use uh, nice the reading of that book. And this one, I I have not even attempted to read. To be, if I'm being completely flat out yeah. honest. Speaking of uh, writing uh, and people who want to write books, I I know Steve's a machine in that regard, but um, so just he's in general, human. Yeah, just in general, um, there is a podcast that I like to listen to that's um, done by the author I mentioned, Larry Korea, and a fellow author that he's co-written a book with called Steve Diamond. And it's called uh, the Writer Dojo, and they go into a lot of the professional writer, uh, how how to do things, how to contact publishing places, whether you want to do uh, independent or traditional publishing, uh, a lot of different things. That it's just 
in general, I think it's really useful for anybody who would consider, you know, writing uh, either professionally or semi-professionally. So it's one of his uh, versions of his manuscript before it was published. One of his drafts. Nice. Yeah. Dave. So I'm, uh, Torrin, who was this guy? Um, the uh, podcast is called The Writer Dojo, and the two authors that uh, host it are um, Larry Correa and Steve Diamond. Steve Diamond. He's a horror writer. Uh, his first book was called Residue, and it's about um, uh, a guy who uh, finds out that he can uh, uh, read the um, – the psychic residue of a murder and see what kind of what happened. And, uh, uh, he gets involved with, uh, some weird things that happen. Uh, there's going to be three books in the series. The second one, uh, is out. And the third one I think is in the process of being finished. So do you have a, uh, that's the second author that you've mentioned tonight that, that is unfinished with their series that you're reading. The authors in question are ones that will actually finish their work. Larry Korea has written like 28 <laughs> novels in like 14 years. He tends to write two novels a year. So he's he's got a pretty good track record for Can that. Can we get that man in touch with George R.R. R. Martin, please? George R.R. R. Martin. God. George R.R. R. Martin hates Larry Korea's guts because Larry <laughs> Korea was the one who called out the uh, – the Hugo issue uh, with the Sad Puppies campaign, where they pointed out that the Hugo uh, Award has a very, very, very small uh, voting base. And most of it is people that are involved in the publishing industry. And what they, for like the last decade, what they've been doing is essentially all voting their friends in for it. And he, he said essentially, wow, I mean, you could, uh, you know, publicize this, get a bunch of people to, uh, you know, read the stuff, nominate stuff like that. And um, it was such an over, uh, overreaction. He had a smear campaign uh, put out against him to the point where people were calling Larry, friends of Larry Korea's wife were calling her and asking her if she needed help to get out. Uh, I mean, it was like, it was really nasty. And Whoa. uh Larry and George had a discussion back and forth where finally George R. R. Martin said, well, even though this, you know, looks like it was like a, an international award for like the best in science fiction, this is actually just uh, Worldcon's personal award. And if you're not a long-term Worldcon uh, member, get out of it. And they changed the rules. And like this last year, they had Worldcon in China and uh, some of the, uh, the, um, con uh, team that that uh, was in charge of like handling the nominations basically excluded a bunch of books that were nominated just because they thought that china would have a problem with it mm. and the chinese government actually didn't ask them to do that but uh they didn't have to though they didn't have to the the, the corruption is strong enough in china that everybody understood the assignment and uh, yeah but they catered to it accordingly to make money yeah but uh it's it's like uh, these are the people who said that, you know, our award is pure and we're not going to uh, accept anybody else's view on it. And uh, when basically it wound up being in China because China just bought a whole bunch of memberships and then nominated that as a location for a Worldcon. Uh, it's They're sneaky. But yeah, I mean, when stuff like this came out, Larry was just like laughing hysterically because it's like, this is what I told you guys a decade ago was going to happen. And you said, "Oh no, no, we're 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 good. We're going to change the rules, so you guys can't get involved ever again." And nope, it happened pretty much the way Larry said it was going to happen. So that's how super lawyer works. If you ever see an attorney that says that he's a super lawyer, understand that it's a popularity it. contest. You pay for it, and you get your friends to all vote for you, and then you become you know super lawyer. It's worth nothing. It's meaningless. But yep. um. I think uh, disregard, disregard. I'm trying to disregard. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> oh, that was Wendy. That wasn't me. <laughs> go for it. Go for it, Dave. No, 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 no. I'm good. I was trying to find uh, that chat from earlier. I tried to star everything that 
I've already unstarred a lot of stuff, but I don't yeah. know which one you're talking about. Y'all, well, uh, when you were talking earlier about uh, being successful in China, that brought up to something else to mind, but it wasn't quite appropriate yet. Um, a lot of the stuff related to Larry's uh, Sad Puppies campaign uh, was uh, documented on a uh, fan site called uh, File 770, which has won like 20 Hugo Awards because it's basically the only one that would ever get nominated because he was in the in crowd. And he was talking about how his site was so much more popular than uh, Larry's fan site, which was Monster Hunter Nation. And he showed the, I, th I forget, it, it's not a... Uh, it's not Alexa, but it's some sort of um, web traffic analysis thing showing how valuable your site is and how popular it is in the search engines. And the thing that the host of that or the, the head of that fan site uh, actually did to show that, he actually posted a screenshot that showed that 94% of his traffic came from China for an English language uh, fan website. So essentially, he was, he was paying buying. for his rent. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a sign of shame. Well, yep. it should be. It should be. Do you think um, streaming farms should be um, should be fine? You know, like, you think they should be considered fraud or streaming farms? Yeah, they have like farms where people you, you turn on a bunch of phones and you stream a bunch of stuff where you. Um, yeah, essentially, yeah, you stream a bunch of stuff. What, what would Again, be the point? Just like as a revenue. Let me source? pull up the story. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Let me pull it up. Okay. Um, we were um, we were going to talk about it on laid back law. We never got to it, but I still thought it was an interesting story. So. I still keep getting comments in uh, on my videos that uh, have a word in it. I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it pops up. Uh, when you search for it, you find out that it's uh, some sort of company that's trying to uh, uh, get you viewers and engagement. And mm. uh, so when I see them, I pretty much just uh, hide the comment. I don't delete it because uh, uh, I, I don't want them to think that uh, I'm, you know, I'm fighting them. So they're going to like try and do it even more. But it's like, I just, I don't want to get that associated with my channel no i don't think they uh it, it, we all get all okay, right so so the allegation is here i can kind of show you the story so the allegation is that um musicians are using it to um to get them higher in the like the hit in the um in the hits or whatever i don't know here I guess it would boost your algorithm, right? If you yeah, got, boost your algorithm. So, so if you've got one hundred and fifty bots all streaming your stuff and hitting like and commenting or whatever, I guess it would it would move yeah. you up in the algorithm and get more yeah outreach. So the question is: Is is this fraud? Should this be tolerated? Oh, sorry. I, I thought I was sharing my screen. I forget now that I'm not. I don't share my screen automatically. Give me a second. Let me go back. There we go. So what she's alleging is reality to push their tracks to the top of the charts and earn more money. Streaming farms use bots to artificially play music on platforms like Spotify or Apple Music to drastically inflate the numbers of streams the song gets. In March, a man in Denmark was so so that's um, I don't want to play too much of it, but that's the story. Um, so apparently musicians are using it, but okay. You know what? Be I I don't know, man. I think the music industry has been one of those like deviously controlled industries where if if an individual like an indie musician has the ability to plug in a bunch of phones and get their their music to the top of the charts or or like tom mcdonald for example like if he's able to to use these streaming things and get to the top of the charts and fight against the uh the complex of the music industry i'm okay with it i guess Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Music's music. That was my right? Music's music. Either it's good or it's bad. Either people enjoy it or it will be forgotten. One of the two options. There's no third option. There's no like, hey, I'm gonna buy my my record into a 
uh, platinum selling CD that also people will enjoy, right? Yeah, right. So, so is someone like Tom McDonald, who is independent, one hundred percent independent. He's not part of the music industry. He produces his own stuff. If he feels like he needs to hire these farms, not saying he does, but if he and I does, have no idea if he does. By the way, I'm not yeah, accusing him. But of I'm just this, using a insert random small artist name here. Yes. If this artist does this in order to get sort of somewhat of a level playing field with the influence that the music industry has. Is that good? Is that bad? I think it's fine for him. to. Do I think it's okay. This the, again, I've said it before baseball players. I don't care if they take steroids, juice them to the gills, let them dudes hit half mile home runs. I'm okay with it. As long as they're all doing it. Well, it, it, we're as long all as they, able to do it. Sure, right. If they're all able to do it, you're a consenting adult. I don't care what you put in your body. I don't care what performance enhancing drug you use. I sure don't care what how many phones you plug in to get your your well, name but what out about, there. But what about for records? You know, like record setting. Like, how would you? That would be like comparing apples and oranges. You can't to- plug in a phone and make people buy your record. No, but I mean for the athletes, the juicing athletes. <clears throat> oh, who cares? If they're all juiced to the gills, let them all be juiced to the gills. But I mean, but it, Babe Ruth and you Mickey you Mantle. Can't go back in history and give all those other guys the juice so the, the historical record. Okay. What's his name? Who beat it in the 90s? Barry Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. I was, I was a Cubs. Did you hear fan. about the A's? Aren't going to have a? They're not going to have a city for like three years. The Oakland A's. They really? left. Oakland. Yeah, they left Oakland. Well, who isn't leaving team. Oakland? Oh my god! <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they left. Um. Anyway, they're going to be in Sacramento all next year. I heard, or all this coming season, and then there, nobody knows where they're going to be for the next two years until they can find a home. To Come to Detroit. We'll have a good team finally. Oof. Actually, the Tigers didn't do so bad. The Lions haven't been doing so bad. The Red Wings. I, are I don't I think they want to move to Vegas, but they're. But I don't think Vegas is. I don't think that's going to happen now. Maybe. Everybody's Vegas moving to Vegas. Them. Everybody's moving to Vegas, though. The uh, the yeah. Raiders went to Vegas. The yeah. Golden Knights are the new hockey all star team, right? They're they're Vegas is is moving, shaking, doing the damn thing, boogieing. Farrell they might be going to Vegas. I heard they might be, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did get a contract, but I don't think they Go got. On, have you been to Vegas? I have been to Vegas a few times. Um, I've flown, you know, flown to there. I've driven through it. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time in Vegas. Uh, I did. I uh, bought a sword from uh, sword maker uh, Jim Persoulis, uh who. Uh, uh, lives near Vegas and had a weird experience while I was waiting for the time to meet up to pick up the sword and uh, had guy like I had actually I think two different people approach me trying to uh, get me to uh, finance their gambling and that was kind of disturbing (laughs) (laughs) you sure they weren't ladies of a certain I was gonna say guys oh I bet you though They weren't going to gamble it. They're smart. They're going to take your money and run. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I I know a fella who the last time he was in Vegas tried to pay for a hooker. Um, didn't have cash. So they went together to the store so he could buy her a television. <laughs> But the local security flagged it for something was up and wouldn't let him purchase the TV. Oh. And then so he dropped her off and went home or back to the oh. hotel. His wife was like, why were you trying to buy a TV at Walmart in Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Mary, the, the, like the checkout clerk. It was like, hang on a second, sir. And security came over. Won't let him purchase it because they probably like, we've seen that woman before. Yeah, knew you her. weren't her husband. How like, does Walmart have the ability to deny you sale of a TV because they suspect you of using it for prostitution purposes? I don't know, but they did. So they sent them out, and then 
or she was and a then, known booster. Maybe she was a known booster. That and they could just be. Didn't want, yeah. My but, guess yeah. is that she she'd done it before, and they didn't want to like sell a TV and then have to return it for cash or something. Oh, that's like that. probably it. She probably buys shit, gets it returned later for the cash. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. That but they sick. were like, nope. Yeah. But I've never been to Vegas. I have no desire to go, but I do want to see the eye now. I now like I want to go. I have no desire to go to Vegas. I whatsoever. haven't been there for like 10 years, but last time I was I there, just, it was super fun, super glamorous. I loved it. Super wild. Glamorous. It, it, if I you're was a party, go. Girl or party boy, it's fun. Wow. Oh, yeah, nice. Looking good. Looking good. Starting to look if like we, something. If we were yep. to do a two-parter series, when would we do the second part? Torin was asking that when you two were gone. I was okay. listening. I, I heard. I yeah, heard. I heard too. Um. You're busy this next Saturday. Yeah. What's the date? Let me look at my calendar because I'm so fold up with out social your paper events. Calendar. Yeah. Um, the 27th, we were talking about something, but I don't know what. We were talking about uh, Lego Law, but I haven't heard back from him yet. So. Okay. No, not Lego Law. Legalized. You see, your new name's gonna fuck me up, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew who you met. Okay. It looks like I'm available on the 27th. So well, we'd I, have to I, store it for two weeks, Torrent. Okay. I mean, I can do that. I just wanted to figure where would be a good spot for me to do that. And okay, sorry, I was trying to figure out where I was in this process and what it was. No worries. I was looking for a part, and it's like, wait a minute, I've already put that part on. Jude, are you still in chat? I haven't seen him for a while. Aw. It's That's like cute. a voodoo doll or something. I don't know. What the fuck? That's like some uh, South American scary shit. He's got like a Christmas sweater on or something. No, it's like, like a braided... Oh, it's an ornament. Yeah. It looks like something straight out of like the Aztec myth books. Yeah, I think it is Aztec. I don't know. Wendy, says don't, <laughs> Wendy said it doesn't look like my ancestors. No, it does not. Sure it does not. Helen Gall, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Bahala, did you see that? I did. Thank you so much, Helen. You're amazing. Y'all, if you are a new member to uh, my channel, Bahala Waits, you get awesome, fun emojis. Check these bad boys out, y'all. They're pretty dark. Mm, I don't get emojis. There. I don't have memberships. Not yet. I, don't even I get miss super my cursed. emojis. I know. You talk about what happened to your channel. So can I be mean about it? Yeah, I can be mean about it. Okay. All right. So hold on. I got to. I got to go pee. I got to go pee. <laughs> this asshole named Jeremy Hales, who has a channel called What the Hales, um, came on. Came on a Lego law, life and libation. Didn't bring Legos with him to build. Uh, but anyways, I posted a video using part of his um, stream, but I clipped it. I muted him, and I edited it, and I put text over top, really transforming the question because what I saw was a man using a anti-harassment order to harass the person that he was supposedly scared of. Well, he didn't like that and he copyright struck it. So then I posted another video of the same incident, but entirely from not his recording. And he didn't like that and he struck it. And then about two weeks later, um, I got a hold of a audio recording from the sheriff, Levy County Sheriff, when he was talking to Jeremy, which is similar to Jeremy's recording of his own conversation with Levy County, except Jeremy made his, the sheriff made his. Also, my video had an additional one, uh, one minute and 10 seconds that Jeremy's didn't have. Uh, and it ended earlier than Jeremy's did. But anyways, I posted that out there and he claimed that it came from his stream or his video, which it couldn't have. Because it contains an extra one minute and 10 seconds that's nowhere on his channel. But he still copyright struck it. Now, YouTube has a three strikes and you're out policy. 
I tried to contest all three of them. YouTube said, well, we don't know. You claim it. He claims it. Um, you guys will just have to sort it out amongst yourself. But we're still keeping your three uh, strikes. And uh, my channel's getting pulled on the 15th. So there you go. Just hit move 154, so I'm over halfway done. Nice. Let's take a look at it. Oh, there you go. What do you got it before I did? Very cool. Nice. Very cool. That is very cool. I liked it a lot. I do too. That's, that's that is right. the that's Imperial, not the Imperial Palace. It's a different palace. It's not the Imperial Palace. It just says it's a uh, medieval Japanese castle. All right. So there was some uh, like little gate things in there. Uh, Cute. Little bars. Love it. Very cool. That's going to be a spectacular finished piece. Well, I'm going to keep going as long as we're on the screen, so I'm opening bag eight. All right, sounds good. This is that What the Hills do. Yes, it was What the Hills do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, basically. No, not was, the guy on the panel. Torin, Torin is not the What the Hills hey, do. Not, our pan, not this current panel, no. Um, I have been catching like Jeff's uh, coverage of that somewhat, but the uh, uh, the Lynette person uh, is extremely painful for me to listen to mentally. Oh, she I have is. Known, I, I have known people like her when I was younger, and it's very annoying for me. So, well, the other uh, thing though is that Jeremy's no saint on this story either, and that's what I was trying to point out. Yeah. And, I, uh, Elephant, uh, yes. Um, to be fair, Dave is a lawyer and lawyers are a-holes. Yes, but it's not illegal to be an asshole. Correct. So. <laughs> and I have I've heard some of the stuff from the um uh Ohio hearing and um uh where it's been like uh what's his John and Jeremy arguing back and forth, and it sounds like both of them are not handling things Stable. well. So unstable people do unstable things and create havoc for the rest of us. But as long as people are making money off of them, they're going to continue to wreak havoc. Yeah. And I don't have to ask him to use the, his, that's not how fair yeah. use works. When he goes on his live stream and tries to educate people on the law and he's just plain wrong. That's another <laughs> issue. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, when I talk about legal stuff, I try and put a very clear proviso that I'm not a lawyer. I don't have a law degree. I am merely talking about uh, stuff from my lay perspective, which may be entirely wrong. If you have anything that you actually need a legal answer on, talk to a lawyer because a lot of stuff is very fact specific. And yeah. even if a general principle is done relating to sound, your specific situation may make it completely null. Because uh, I've speaking of Pennsylvania and law stuff, um, there is uh, part of the statutes about carrying concealed that if you have, it says if any person with a license from any other state, whether there's rep reciprocity with PA or not, uh, transports a firearm in a vehicle. Uh, they're exempt from the um, the normal requirements because Pennsylvania is weird. Uh, you Wait, can what open, do you mean by that? You can open carry in Pennsylvania, but only on foot. You cannot transport a firearm in a vehicle unless you are going to and from a gun store, to and from a range, or to and from a business you actually own. Other than that, you're not allowed oh. to carry it in a car. You're not allowed to carry it on a bike. You're not allowed to carry it. Well, carry it, it is different than, yeah, okay. So you could put it in the case and say the trunk, right? No, no. You cannot really? have a firearm in a vehicle. Um, well, let me let me phrase that. Sorry. Um, they do talk about, like, uh, if you have the firearm and the ammunition separate uh, and stored, yes, you can do it there. But um, uh, if you like, if you have a, it, it's it's mostly a rifle. If it's a pistol, um, I'm trying to remember exactly, but you can't transport a pistol uh, to and from any place 
um, in a vehicle unless it's those exemptions. Um, like if you buy one in a store, you can take it home. You can take it to a range. You can take it to a gun store to be worked on. Uh, and like I said, to and from a business okay. you own. But you and cannot we're not tra- talking about uh, uh, concealed weapons permits that are retro, retro uh, no. reciprocity. Right. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's Pennsylvania has what they call a license to carry firearms, which is essentially a concealed uh, weapons permit. Um, it allows you to carry concealed and to transport in a vehicle. Um, if you uh, don't have one, and if you have one at your home and you're carrying it on foot, if you can't walk to and from there, uh, you are in violation. Uh, Pennsylvania is very weird about that. Uh, I mean, and the way the law is written, if you're on horseback, uh, you can't do it. If you're, I don't think it's actually been litigated, but you know, piggyback is also out. But uh, I mean, they've had things where like bicycles, and if you are going, you're going someplace and you stop and get gas, people have been cited for violations for that. But the they say that if you have a license to carry concealed from another state, any person is exempt from that limitation where they can't do that. However, there was a case that went to a superior court, so it's precedence bearing, um, where uh, the court determined that any person specifically excluded Pennsylvania residents. So if you're a Pennsylvania resident, you don't have a license to carry in Pennsylvania, but you have like say a Utah concealed carry permit, they have specifically excluded that from allowing for vehicle transport. Not for carrying concealed, but for vehicle transport. Hmm. If you are a Pennsylvania resident. So if you look at the statute, it looks like you're covered, but the way the case law is, no, you're not. And if you're not a lawyer, just looking at that or commenting on that. Uh, and again, this is just as a lay person, but it's something that uh, when it came up, uh, a firearms lawyer that I have used uh, that I like his philosophy of uh, do no harm for his clients. Um, Not philosophy. Comment- <laughs> so, but anyway, that's, it's something that he had commented on. So I uh, feel reasonably confident in being able to like, at least talk about it a little bit, but Again, if you're going to, in a situation where you need to do something, talk to a lawyer first, not me. It's just an example of how um, looking at the, the statute without knowing the case law can really screw you over. Hi, Umbra. Yeah. Hi, Umbra. All right. So Torin said he was going to keep building until we ended the stream, but it's going on five hours. It's so. over five hours. Oh, yeah, well, it's over five hours. It's over it's five hours and 16 minutes, which I am okay with. But if we're going to do a part two, we should probably cut it in half at some point, right? Okay, well, yeah. I am about at the halfway point according to the move. So I thought you were past 150. I'm at 154 out of 299. Than, yeah, I'm, I'm about half. the halfway. Yeah, a little it's bit. It's a little over half. halfway, and we're a little over five hours. So we'll call it good. We'll call it good. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody in chat for hanging out. Thanks, Thank to everybody you, everyone. for excited to go over and give me a sub and give me a few watch hours so I can please, get monetized. Please. please, just keep it on while you're sleeping. You can turn the volume all the way down. There you go. Do you have playlists set up yet? Yeah. If- yeah, I do. And yes. I've got more, actually. So I posted Megan's. I posted Rob's. If you guys missed Megan Fox or Rob's, I've got uh, episode you one and two. Go I've got some clips up. Um, you guys can go check those out and enjoy. Fall asleep listening to... Our Lego streams, because why not? What else are you going to fall asleep to? Well, let's be honest. These are a little entertaining. A little bit. So I've been told. So I've been told. <laughs> we got Warren, a lot of- thank you very much uh, for joining us. And we'll yes, see you sir. in two weeks right back here. Wendy, yep. uh, as always, thanks for emceeing for us. You're amazing, Always my babe. pleasure. I'm happy You're to be here. You're amazing. You're all amazing. It's Torrent, only 7 p.m. where she's at, you. so she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1118. Oh, 1118. No. It's, two, it's 2 a.m. here. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't get my nap today either. We'll see Torrin again soon, though. Very That's good. right. All right. Take care, all. I appreciate you, you, chat. Good night, everybody. Sweet dreams. Right. Good stream.